All right, well, chat. I uh, spent the last ten minutes looking at pictures of trophy decks on seventeen lands for inspiration, and uh, I guess now we're gonna try and draft one. Oh, hey, iPhone fan. Thanks. Thanks for uh, being one of the first people to ever visit my stream and keeping it up even today. Oh, JT, what a dagger. Did you already, did you already draft for the event too? Oh, everyone's in. Yay! We got a good rare. I don't have to think about what I'm doing until next pack. Although, a part of me wonders if if you're actually supposed to take Excavation Explosion over Simeon Simulacrum. I'm kind of curious what the uh, performances, performance stats look like. Lycrum seems just incredible, but is it really better? Oh wow, Simulant Simulacrum is nuts actually. 62%, yeah. Crazy. Iconoclast is two colors, but I was looking at Excavation Explosion just because that card's insane, but Simulacrum's great, plus I don't have to fight for red. Yeah, 62 is real good. I wouldn't be surprised if Simulacrum was like in that neighborhood. Or not, uh, if uh, Explosion was in that neighborhood. Yeah, Explosion's two points below, roughly. Arcane Proxy. That card doesn't seem very good. That's okay. It doesn't seem like a crazy bomb or anything. Okay, so what do we got here? We got a. Uh... Uh, Giant Cinder Maw puts me right back into fighting for red and goes pretty well with Simeon Simulacrum as just a big boy. Yeah, blue is not very good, which is another concern. There's Cinder Maw, Disfigure, Anointer. Yeah, there's also just Energy Refractor, which leaves me open, but it feels like a shame to take Energy Refractor instead of, like, I don't know, Giant Cinder Maw seems like kind of a premium card. And so is Gurgling and Oyster, although Gurgling and Oyster in black green is, is worse than Gurgling and Oyster in some other colors. I still like an Oyster. I think an Oyster is the best card in the pack. I like it slightly more than Cinder Maw. I like it more than Disfigure. And I do at least know how to play green black in this format. Yeah, I think it's enough power that I am happy taking over Energy Refractor. I probably overvalue Energy Refractor slightly in decks that aren't actively sacking it or whatever. Okay, I now see Astronaut's Harvester, which I like a good amount. There's also Emergency Weld, which I actually think is kind of close to Harvester in my personal estimation, but Harvester's numbers are surely better. 59 for that. And yeah, two drops are just great. Just take the two drop. Two drops that I can bring back and sack to Power Stone Fracture or whatever. Easy. Yeah, Hulking Metamorph is blue. I don't think I'm that interested in Hulking Metamorph. Mass Production's good in a very specific deck. We're not necessarily that deck. I also like that Harvester and Simulacrum both put us in kind of a self mill direction a little bit. Okay, so now another interesting choice. Keep in mind that we don't have to be playing green at all. Simulacrum and Simulacrum's better with green, but you don't have to do green. That in mind, I see Boulder Branch Golem, I see Power Stone Fracture, I see Thraxa Demon. 
And I think, especially given that I've got two unearth cards already, I like, uh, I was going to say I like Fraction, Fracture, but I could see Golem as well. Fracture just keeps me open to playing other black decks. And Golem, you kind of do have to play green, because if you're playing a deck that gets to seven mana reliably, you're probably playing green anyway. Okay, I think I'm going to go Fracture here, but it's... Definitely there are multiple choices you could go with. Ooh. Huh. That's a green-black rare. It doesn't seem incredible. Great with the big ramp cards, but if you're playing the big ramp cards, like, you don't want to be reliant on drawing this thing to get them out. Yeah, Ritualist has pretty bad numbers. I'm not surprised by that. It's just expensive. This is not a format where you get to do expensive things like that a lot. So I think it's between Reconstructed Thopter and Moment of Defiance. Moment of Defiance is a great card. Numbers are amazing, but I think it's just Thopter here. For whatever reason, Moment of Defiance tends to go really late. Late Thopter. Okay, so now we've got a Boulder Branch Golem, and now I think I'm down to take Boulder Branch Golem over Killzone Acrobat. Just, uh... Have not been that impressed by Killzone Acrobat unless you're trying to steal your phone stuff and sack it, which... Obviously we could be doing that, but it doesn't look like we're seeing red cards, really. I expect red to be pretty contested. Disciples of Gix is kind of funny. Like, I've, I've seen now people claiming that this is good in draft. I'm still incredibly suspicious of... Four fours for six, and I like Boulder, Boulder Branch Golem more than Shoot Down. At least when we were playing Black and have access to removal spells. Perennial Behemoth, you know? Have we finally found the deck for Perennial Behemoth, or am I supposed to take Scrapwork Mutt? I'm undoubtedly supposed to just take Scrapwork Mutt. This card is so fun. Like, we are the deck that could use it if any deck wants it, it's green black. I'm gonna look at the numbers, even though I know I'm gonna take Scrapwork, scrapwork Mutt in the end. Yeah, yeah, the numbers are sure that it's garbage. Late Scrapwork Mutt, that's nice. And, okay, so we got Blanchwood Prowler. I think I like Blanchwood Prowler over Off-Color Combat Courier. Combat Courier obviously goes pretty well with Power Stone Fracture and just a lot of the stuff we're doing, but we have a lot of Unearth already. I'd rather take the card that can put Unearth stuff in the graveyard. Do we need to find a refractor? I guess just for scrapwork mutt. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. We can find a refractor, a star, and elsewhere flask or a Jasper Sentinel. Okay. Anyway, we are largely we've got a good mix of black green stuff. We don't necessarily necessarily lock to those two colors. I've seen a lot of people playing mine workers in their decks. Just because people love their curves, I guess. I am incredibly suspicious of mine worker. I want to just take Airlift Chaplain. Yeah, Chaplain's really good in the uh, Unearthed decks, and I just don't think we're going to need to play a Mine Worker. Energy Refractor Wield? What a table. God. I mean, I'll take Energy Refractor very happily. I'm almost starting to get the nervous vibrations, chat. Those of you who've watched me play in a bunch of tournaments, you know that I tend to, in any event, that's. Uh, even remotely high stakes get a little bit blah, 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 get a little twitchy. All right, I think it's kind of on giant growth here over trench stalker. I think we are not drawing a ton of cards. We've got the gurgly anointer, so we have some incentive to pick up card draw. Hmm. Oh, it's close. Yeah, I don't know. I think that. I think it's not that hard to pick up Trench Stalkers. I think we can probably get a Trench Stalker if we want one. I don't think it's hard to pick up Combat Tracks either, but hopefully it wasn't a very uh, consequential pick. Okay. Interesting to see Blitz Automaton and Rock Hunter still here, along with Weakstone Subjugation. was even in this pack. I'm extremely happy to grab a Combat Courier. Yeah, we are incredibly open, which is great. We can do just about anything with this.
Maybe that was supposed to be Tokesh's dig site. We have very low color commitment in this pool so far. I just, I don't know. I'm kind of, I feel like Tokesh's dig site is a bit sus. You know, I'll take Disciples of Gex. Maybe this is the one deck out of a hundred or whatever that I'd be willing to play it in. Probably not. Whirling Strike. Huh. What a weird thing. Siege Veteran. Okay, well... I'm glad we stayed open enough that I get to take Siege Veteran now. I'm definitely going to take Siege Veteran now. Very splashable if we have to splash something. What an incredible pack, too. Like, would have been very happy to see this pack in Sealed. God. But yeah, I'll take this. Probably not going to wheel Recruitment Officer, but maybe we will the Satanial. Now we've got Thopter Architect. Seems pretty meh. Warlord's Elite's decent, but I think I just take Harvester again. Like, it's Harvester versus some other stuff that just doesn't seem as good as Harvester. I think Harvester is just incredibly premium. As cards go. Like, a little annoying when it trades for 1-1 one -one tokens, but I just don't think I like Thopter Architect or Warlord's Elite more than this. So, oh, very solid looking aggro deck. Probably still leaning toward green, black, splashing white, but we really don't have to make those kinds of choices now. Now that I have Siege Veteran, we're going to be looking a little bit harder for, you know, emergency weld, uh, other stuff that can bring it back. Okay, um... No choices here. We got Evolving Wilds, Argothian, Sprite, and Disfigure. Sword of the Meek is a card I'd be actually kind of interested in wheeling, just because if we can, like, mill it or discard it with Scrapwork Mutt, we have maybe a bunch of good ways to bring it back. And that's just kind of, like, good free value. But for now, I think I'm more interested in, in one of the other cards, because I think we probably can wheel Sword. I mean, this product's really bad, so maybe we don't. Yeah, maybe it's Wilds, just to, like, keep the mana fine. Like, a lot of good cards in this pack, but I don't think we're going to lack for playables. I think this is a perfect time to grab a Wilds and just shore up what we're doing. And now we pick up um, Steel Seeker. Looks good. What else is in the pack? There's Moment of Defiance and Recommission. But uh, this looks like a great Steel Seeker deck. We just have so much on Earth. Alright, so with Steel Seeker, we're now like pretty firmly ensconced in green. Still looking like Abzan with a white splash. Okay, Iron Claw Crusher, Goring Warplow, Power Stone Fracture, Scrapper Grazier. Yeah, one of those many packs you see in this format where you can do whatever we want. We're definitely not looking like a ramp deck right now. We're really looking much more aggressive. Crusher can still work fine. It's still a perfectly fine card to cast at 4 mana, but... We're probably not getting to the 7 mana version that often. Is Crusher amazing? Is Crusher, like, clearly better than stuff like Power Stone Fracture here? Eh, it's not incredible. I think I'm just on second Fracture. Like, Power Stone Fracture is basically free because we have so much on Earth. I feel like it's hard to have too much removal. Okay, so Scrapwork, Mutt, Sitinal, Stalwart. I know everyone's going to tell me to take Mutt. And I do know it's correct to take Mutt here. The fact that Stalwart's still here in the pack probably means I just wheel the one we opened in the first pack. We don't need, like, a bunch of Satanial Stalwarts. Especially that we have Evolving Wilds, we can kind of fix our colors a bit. Although we're not going to play a Mountain, ideally. But I will play him. The Mutt. There's a Stalwart. Now I'll take Stalwart. Yeah, I would still really love some emergency welds or something. Fateful handoff. Nope. 
I don't remember what that one was. It's not one we want. There's Burrowing Razor Maw. Burrowing Razor Maw actually seems incredible for our deck. Not that we're guaranteed to play or anything. The stats aren't incredible, but... That ability. So much value. Alright, I think I'm on... I think I'm on Energy Refractor here over Prowler Stalwart. Although it's close, maybe it should be Stalwart. Yeah, close call. Should have seen either either choice there. You like Prowler there, interesting. Okay, Caress, this is giant growth, I think. We're looking very aggressive. So, hmm. Yeah, I come to think we have the Gurgleon in Maybe that was supposed to be Refractor. I think it's giant growth over Caress. Yeah, someone cast Goblin Charbelter against me yesterday, which is the first time I've seen anybody cast that card in the format, and um, they activated it twice, and both time land was on top of their deck. They did not win. Okay, this looks like... I really thought that Astral Cornucopia might be good in this deck, just because it's like ramp you can ramp with Power Stones, but the card is not good. So we're going to take Tanos. And honestly, it could be an amazing Scrapsmith deck. We're very unlikely to actually play it, because we're probably not going to be playing red, but you know. Now, what I'd really love for this deck would be some Gaia's Gifts. Ooh, Junkyard Genius. We have to splash for it, but it looks pretty good. Although... Hmm. It's a little weird. Like, are we actually splashing red? Is it worth playing Junkyard Genius here just to... Yeah, Rager looks good. I think I'm on... This seems like a great Rager deck, actually. Although Transmogrant Altar? Hmm. Altar feels close, because we have so many ways to use it, but we could kind of use the card advantage. I think I'm okay with Rager. Altar slow, but our deck is fast. I don't think it's terrible to have a you know slower card in your fast deck. Okay, I'm seeing a Prison Sentence, a Scrapper Cohort, and another Steel Seeker. Leaning second steel seeker here, I think. Although cohort's really good, of course, with what we're doing. Hmm. Yeah, steel seeker just never flood. And this just looks like overwhelming remorse. Super, super happy to pick up at least one more piece of real removal for the deck. Urza's Command? That's so late. Wow. Um, but this looks like just Emergency Weld for us, I think. And Recruitment Officer is such a bomb in this deck. We have so many hits. I'm like kind of torn. Necromant Fixing is good, but not great. I don't think we can reasonably be splashing Recruitment Officer, but maybe we can. I don't think I want second wilds. I want emergency weld or recruitment officer. The question is just which one. I think well just because it lets me have much more access to siege veteran. And siege veteran's just like incredible. Alright, and this is looking like Mishra's Bobble, I guess. Flaji Vanguard, I don't think is something we want to be double splashing. Oh, Aeronaut's Wings? Is this deck just one of wings? I never play cards like Wings, but I see people play Wings a lot in trophy-ish decks. It's not like unplayable by any means. What do we think? Wings or Bobble? I think I want Wings. I just don't think we need Bobble. I don't think Weld was tabling out of that pack we took it from. This is best of three. Which I haven't really been thinking about up until now. But it is best of three. We have one wing, so I don't need to take the second wings. Um, probably just Refractor. Or is it Rager here? Caress. Actually, Caress for best of three seems good. I don't think we're on a Splash Disenchant, but maybe. Be a lot of these, honestly. 
All right, we ended up on Caress. Hopefully that pick won't end up mattering that much. Turns Power Blade's very expensive for what we're trying to do. Um, the Infiltrator, we're probably not going to play. Survivor of Corlys, just to... Well, we're not that much mill. Survivor of Corlys to mill it would be funny, but we're not really milling that much stuff. Okay, Perimeter Patrol is just a 3-drop. We could also take Loran's Escape, but again, we'd be splashing it. Like, I'm really trying to make white a very light splash, probably just playing Siege Veteran and no other white cards. There's Perimeter Patrol or Supply Drop in either of those cards. Is one I'm enamored of? Probably just take the Patrol. Wow, Junkyard Genius tabled. Hmm, we could have. Where are the mana for it? I mean, maybe we take Alter now. Yeah, it's a weird. It's been a weird table. People are doing all sorts of things. I think I take Alter. Yeah, a lot of weird stuff is happening. Yeah, now I really. I, man, I wish I'd taken a second energy refractor at some point because now I'm going to take Combat Courier. I think Overy kicks his caress. Infiltrator, Paul Bear, we actually we're getting to the point where like our Gixi Infiltrator decks kind of Gixi Infiltrator are quietly looking pretty good in our deck. Yep, wanna have to fight the Drafter coming out of this table. Are right, we got Clay Revenant? I think it's Clay Revenant here just to have one of them in the pool over the giant growth. It's definitely a card I could see sideboarding in sometimes. Album Blast Run. Alright, turns out Black Red Sack was open? Or at least, I don't know. Some was taking all the excavation explosions, but they weren't in black, I guess. Yeah, they really weren't in black. Okay. I guess this deck seems fine. It's got a low curve and the average card quality is, is high, but... You know, there's not like an insane amount of power here. But we are just going to like draw four extra cards every game with our aggro deck, which seems good. It's not a great long-term plan. It's an okay long-term plan. Yeah, I would... I always forget. I assume it's not just Day 2 Drafters. I just don't think Junkyard Genius is ever going to wield in a table full of Day 2 Drafters. Alright, one real question is, can we play Gurgly Anointer? How many ways do we have to draw... I guess we are supposed to play Gurgly Anointer. We got, yeah, we got two Combat Couriers, two Scrapwork Mutts. We'll look at this card once we know we're definitely playing, because I don't know how much the card draw is going to make it, but we're very likely to be doing it. We're looking at 16 lands with this. I think we're supposed to play just both the Stalwarts. I have so much off-color on Earth that I want to have access to multicolored mana all the time. If we're playing 16 lands, we get to make five more additions to this deck. Rager Anointer. So what do we got that's possible? Boulder Branch Golem, which is very likely to be there. Probably one Pallbearer. We have the Stalwarts, and we have a lot of Steel Seekers, so we are going to be hitting lands pretty well. I'm not completely aghast at the idea of playing both Paul Bears. Growths, yep, yeah, are definitely playable considerations. There's Tomical Honor Guard, but I'm probably not super interested in that. There's Burrowing Razor Maw. 
There's Clear Revenant, which is, I think, more of a sideboard card. There's Transmogrant Altar. There's Gix's Caress. And I'm super down to have backseating here, because I am not an expert at this draft format by any means, and I'm not even sure that my, like, main deck choices here are correct. Uh, I don't think that Clear Revenant tapping for mana with Sentinel Stalwart is a great reason to play it. We're going to have plenty of things we can tap with Stalwart in this deck. Our deck's just full of cardboard that stays in the battlefield. Yeah, I think Altar is just more of a sideboard card. Remember, this is best of three. And if we're not playing Altar, then Gexia Infiltrator is not even a consideration, I think. Takes even by the by the time you get two sacks to make Gixian Infiltrator a real creature, your opponent can probably still trade with it at that point. Yeah. Five five in sideboard seems fine. Boulder Branch Golem in the main seems great. Um we're gonna go down to So we gotta make three more cuts here. Burning Razor Maw, I mean this this forgets something like when it dies, draw half a card. Probably not good enough. We probably just want the giant growths to punch through our opponent's stuff. I am down to play giant growths here. We're currently on 17 creatures, which is plenty of creatures. And at least maybe making one cut from this deck. Is it Gex's caress? I mean, we have a really Yeah, we're not. We're not, like, incredible at using the Power Stones. Like, what does this deck look like when it's actually winning? This deck looks like when it's actually winning just... Jamming a bunch of small dudes. Huh. Jamming a bunch of small dudes, using Giant Growth to punch through blockers, and I guess winning with Siege Veteran? And just Simulacrum giving us some size, and maybe sometimes casting a Boulder Branch Golem. I am worried that we're a little small. I've drafted a few decks that look like this in this format, with just like infinite like value two ones or whatever. And then sometimes your opponent plays like a couple four fours and you lose. Which I guess is partly what giant growth is for. I think maybe it's wings coming into the deck over Gix's caress. The wings being interesting. Yeah, wings main makes me feel a bit better about that particular concern. I guess this could even be 15 lands, but with Steelseeker, I don't know, Steelseeker makes you want a higher land count because it gets much more value that way. I don't think we ever trim refractor with all of our off-color costs plus double power stone fracture. Hmm. Good cut of giant growth, that's plausible. And there is definitely a part of me that wants one Gnarl Root Pallbearer. We're just going to be like hitting so many land drops with Steelseeker, and yes, we're going to be discarding some of those to Mutt. We've also just got double Stalwart, like we've got a lot of mana sources. Something with size feels good. All right, so anyway, I've heard one one call for cutting a giant growth, possibly. Here, let's move the... What are the cuttable cards? There's, like, one giant growth. I can cut, possibly. There's... Ernot's wings, possibly. Like, is Boulder Branch Golem actually better than Narwhal Pallbearer in our deck, specifically? Like... Hill Giant gain 3 life is not a very good outcome. 
And as an expensive creature, Noru Pallbearer is, like, considerably better. Hmm. Any knowers in the chat? Uh, well, we don't we don't really have Power Stones, Merrick. In general, yes, the Golem is nice for being able to be powered up by Power Stones, but I literally think our deck can't make a Power Stone. But the Pallbearer... Yeah, it's really nice with stuff like, I don't know, Reconstructed Thopter comes to the yard and then cast it. Yep, really, really zero Power Stones. We got some Sentinel Stalwarts. But no Power Stone Ramp besides uh, Gix's Caress if you were to play that. Yeah, I think I think knowing that we're a Power Stone free deck, I'm actually going to cut that. Like, I really want to cut kind of one of the Dinky Dorks. But I don't know which of the Dinky Dorks gets cut, just because all the Dinky Dorks are so strong. Like, maybe it's just a combat courier? Is that, that seems insane. I think it's actually supposed to be a combat courier getting... <sighs> hmm. This is theoretically a deck that could be a 15 lander, but that just always seems incredibly dicey to me. And we have two scrapwork mutts. A little bit, but like, you know, whether Pallbearer gives plus three, plus three, or plus four, plus four doesn't seem super important to me. Also, be down. If we had anything else that was like large besides Pallbearer, I'd be down to try it, but like, Honos' Tinkering does not seem like the right kind of large. Like, I could see Ultra over Pallbearer as like another way to do some work later in the game. Uh, Mutt's pretty much the best common. It's like a little bit worse than people say it is, but it's still very good. Never be blanched with me. That's not an oops. You definitely ask questions about cards when you're not sure about the cards. That's a good thing to do. How many non-unearth creatures do I have? Not a ton. We got five, six, seven, seven. Like any other, like I'm, was not super kidding about Burning Razor Moss slash Transmogrant's Altar. Like we, we have just, Altar is just like a source of endless free three threes. I mean, our 5-5 five five is, you know, imagine this red plus 2, plus 2, or plus 3, plus 3. I really don't think you're unearthing all your stuff before you cast your 6-mana 5-5. Five five. Like, maybe very late in the game if you draw it. But very late in the game, if you make it that far, you're happy having a 5-5 five five trample. It doesn't really matter what else it does. But Altar is interesting in its own way, just because this could, this could look like in our deck. With Couriers, Harvesters, Mutts... This could just look like make endless 3-3s. Three but probably not quite. Okay, I'm done with this. I think I'm playing a giant growth. I'm just going to play this out and see how it feels. Yeah, I don't know. I've tried the Revenant plan and it just felt insanely slow. Like, I could definitely see... Well, I'll always be considering that as a sideboard plan. I don't know. My experience with Mutt has not been great so far. I do think that Alter could be very good. The other thing about Alter is, of course, it lets me turn my, like, random 1-1 Satanial guys into 3-3s. But let's try this build. 
and uh, if you know if we learn something about the deck, we can adjust accordingly. Best of three. Yeah, I mean, I do like that I get to keep hands like this. Combat career is also going to help me draw out of any malaise here. Okay. We're looking decently aggressive here. So not a very good Aeronauts Wings matchup, probably. A big fan of energy refractor. I think I'm on no attacks there. I think that with me having Siege Veteran, I'm probably the control deck here. Don't really want to be. Okay, Ocean Tactician is pretty scary. Good thing we have approval for it. Um, am I on Harvester now? Am I on Stalwart now? I'm just on Stalwart now. Just try and get my uh, mana online. I mean, it is nice that we can like function on two lands pretty well. And this is fine. A chunk. Okay. All right, lands are great. We get to now cast uh, Harvester into Fracture here. Back down to Earth. Yep, this deck is hopefully not going to have too many draws where we don't get to play Magic. That is the benefit of playing a million colorless cards and a bunch of scrapwork mucks and combat couriers, is you just. You at least get to keep drawing cards and casting them. The only concern is, like, are your cards actually going to be good enough? Okay, opponent ascertains that our mana might be a source of weakness, but it's too late, opponent. It's too late. Okay. I guess it's anointer here. I think it's anointer. After attacks for a little bit more up front. That could have been the play. Nice thing about Anointer is if it dies, we get to bring back Satanial Stalwart already. Talker we can hit with Remorse. I think we just go Scrapwork Mutt here. Actually, I think we just Siege Veteran here, right? No, I can't Siege Veteran yet. Don't have the mana for it. Yeah, maybe I do just Remorse the Stalker. Like, how many cards is my opponent going to play that are better than Stalker? Famous last words, I guess. Hmm. I can discard a creature, it's true. With Mutt. Like, I can, I can also discard Wings, which doesn't seem like it's going to be terribly necessary this game. I think I just don't want my opponent gaining four life. Yeah, you mean for remorse, that's true. Uh, yeah, all right, hopefully they don't have anything too crazy coming out after this.
And yeah, I really would much rather be discarding lands to Mutt as long as I have other stuff to play. Like you can use Mutt to hit lands if you really want to, but... Okay, I think I'm down for Mutt discard Thopter here. Would really be good to hit some lands soon. Okay. Oops. Um, gets my anointer out of range of whatever that other that one spell is. Wings over holding up courier, I think. A little bit worried about a wrath. My opponent is kind of suspiciously sitting there not doing anything, but like the one wrath is like Gix's command, which we can handle. Harbin's fine. It's not scare me too badly. And alright, now we get to go. Probably just cast each veteran. I guess scatter ray is a possibility, but it doesn't look like they had scatter ray, we would have seen it by now. Maybe it's just mutt to start with. By jamming you mean just casting siege veterans? I can dig it. Hey, it worked. All right, let's pump the uh, we pump anointer, swing with harvester anointer. Yeah, a little bit. You know, trying to be wary of. Yeah, I don't think it was a mud attack that turn. I mean, my turn clearly isn't very aggressive with how they're playing, so it's... Okay. That's fine. Oh, opponent just does not want to attack. All right. Turns out opponent's more scared than I am, and wow, this Unearth Graveyard looks absolutely insane in a spot like this. Hey, Trail of Magic, always good to be streaming. Welcome, welcome. All right, just get to hit them for millions. Could equip wings to courier here. And I guess I do just equip wings. No, I think, I think at this point we're I'm down to hold on to courier just in case my opponent does come up with wrath of some kind. Taking creatures out of the yard. I don't know what they're doing in their deck. I don't know what they could possibly have. I guess a bunch of conditional expensive cards. Okay, this block. Doesn't make any sense in any world I can think of, but yeah, I don't understand that block at all. Like, it wouldn't be surprised to Gix. Okay, mass production. All right, all right, that that solves a chunk of the mystery. They are dead though, because we get to grow a nine turn and then put wings on mutt, so this is over. We also have Thopter coming back, so it doesn't even matter. I don't know. We have many ways to kill them. All right, hooray for efficient cards. And I guess Aaron Not Swings was good after all, but we didn't discard it. Okay, so opponents, blue, white soldiers with a black splash for disfigure at least, maybe? They've got mass production Yoshin Tactician stuff. And they do have Harbin, so there's a chance they just jam a three power flyer on turn two. And Legions to Ashes, that's true, that was another splash card. Alright. On the draw, um... Paul Bear still seems okay, but... Maybe Altar is better, I think. Feels like they probably have a lot of ways to deal with, like, one big creature coming down. I'd rather have... A little more grind. There's also giant growth as like just a cheap way to gain some board presence. Maybe Boulder Branch Golem is actually fine too. Yeah, I could definitely see Boulder Branch Golem being better than Paul Bear in this matchup. Oh yeah, Legions are oh Legions are great reason. Not all that's a good point. So maybe not. Maybe not after all. I don't think I'd... it's weird they had like a bunch of cards in their hand at the end of the game, which makes me wonder if they have like some kind of expensive bomb they weren't casting, but hopefully we just kill them before they can get to their expensive bomb. And against the against the mass production deck, 
I don't hate having a single wings still in my deck. It's worth noting that we may want to be putting Siege Veteran counters on itself when we cast it sometimes to get around Disfigure if that opportunity comes up. Yeah, I think we just run it back basically. Really, this is a best of three deck where I feel like the consistency is really valuable. Sure, Steel Seeker is great. Planet Mulliganing is great. Normally, I'm happiest when both players don't mulligan, but Arena Open Day 2, I'll just be happy whenever anything good happens to me. As long as it's not my opponent making some grievous mistake that will haunt them for the rest of their life. Some slight consideration for Harvester just to start hitting them, but probably they cast something this turn that trades with Harvester anyway. Also, if they have Prison Sentence, for example. Okay, so our opponent... I think our opponent must not be from the Arena Open Day 2 pool. I don't know. This, this seems... I guess... Well, that's unfair of me to say. They might just have a terrible... Terrible hand, and they're just desperately trying to scry to get something going. I could understand that. I've been there, we've all been there. I myself cast Prison Sentence on a 1-1 yesterday. I am just going to mill that combat career. It feels great to just be able to actually get rid of stuff. Dig in for our Stalwarts and our Power Stone, whatever. All right, opponent, that's not the way to get through me, I'm afraid. And we already we already get to start discarding lands with Mutt. Uh, guess I mill Prowler. Doesn't excite me that much. It makes Remorse cheaper. Actually, Prowler. Prowler is a darn good card. All right, Mez, you don't like keeping Prowler even with all of our million unearth creatures? Sure. Anointer, hey, that's a better card. We just cast Siege Veteran here. We could start with Anointer just to be cautious. I haven't shown so much willingness to just kill anything at any point. You like wings this turn? I see the argument for wings. I mean, it activates Seal Seeker. I think I want board presence though. All right, we're not going to attack with Stalwart because I am cognizant of opponent maybe having the 1-2 Flash Flyer. Okay, mass production doesn't surprise me. They had something in their hand the whole time. It turned out to be that. I will jam. Siege Vet. I don't know. I guess we're about to find out. Sick. Raw material, baby. Raw material. All right, we'll pump the uh, mutt here, I think, to start with. Hmm. I guess we could start pumping the anointer just so if it ever dies, we can. Uh... Yeah, I like pumping anointer so if it ever dies, we can, you know, if we get it big enough, we can get back Siege Veteran with it. Yeah, opponent's, opponent's plays have been a bit confusing. I mean, maybe they'll just go mass production, mass production into the Lord, and then we'll kill the Lord with overrolling remorse and it'll be fine. I mean, the 1-2 Flash Flyer is like a real thing that could be, you know, a plan they have long term.
Yeah. I think I actually like drawing the dog here, because we have a land we can discard already. And it also activates Steel Seeker anyway. Oh yeah, this combo's great. Take a good luck, JT. This is the power of the mutt. Power of the dog? Right? That's a movie, right? Right? Movie reference? Right, chat? Right? Right, equipped a Siege Veteran. Part of me is a little bit nervous about actually attacking with Siege Veteran because they might have the uh, removal spell, but I guess we actually just equip a Mutt. Never mind. If I'm nervous about that, then this is how I should respond to being nervous about that. Hunter on the other Mutt, I think, just so we have more blockers for the tokens. I don't know. Just trying to spread counters around mostly so that any one removal spell doesn't get me. So opponent could still Wrath. I'm still trying to be aware of that. I mean, versus Silex, I think. Does Urza Silex exile everything? Okay, right. Harbin plus mass production is a terrifying combo. But fortunately, one that we have plenty of answers to. Seems like our opponent's deck just didn't function super well either game here. Okay, could we kill them here? Not quite. We don't have enough flyers. But we're getting closer. Start with Opter into Fracture. Actually, let's Fracture first, just in case they have, like, I don't know, the one mana protection spell as their last card. Feel fine about sacking Refractor. It's like a little bit of a risk. I guess I could start with Remorse because there's nothing on my board I actually want to sack that much. Okay. Not super surprised that that wasn't a uh, issue. God Star and Steel Seeker is so nice. Uh, we'll just keep that one right on top. Cool. Plump the uh, Thopter. B3 Flyers. We could have just killed their soldier this turn as well and stopped them from drawing a card, but I don't know. There are many cards they draw that I care about. Kind of lazy to pump the Thopter, actually, considering that I knew they were going to attack with a soldier. It's like a mild punt that I will still mark myself for. It's important to mark yourself. And that's it. Okay. The pwn stick just didn't do very much. Um... Our deck seemed fine. Felt like we were pretty darn consistent there. I didn't see any real strong reason to change anything. What did I... I don't know. I don't really know how it works. I don't want to say for sure when it's possible that it just could literally not have been that. Alright. Am I down with this? Do I still want Palbearer over Golem? Actually, I think we'll go Golem, main deck. Just like a, a few little advantages to it. It activates Steel Seeker. Yeah, it could also just be strong, day one pool. And also their deck, you know, it's it's possible that they had to keep a hand of like five, four lands, Prison Sentence, Mass Production. They just desperately needed to hit spells, so they had to Prison Sentence the first card they saw. Hey, Simeon Simulacrum. Wow. Card's really good. Glad I have this one on my deck. Yeah, generally want to shy away from badmouthing opponent players too much because I've certainly done plenty of things in my magic career that would make someone on the other side think, wow, that guy's a moron. Who is this clown? And I would like to think that I'm, you know, whatever tier I'm in as a player, I am at least in the tier above clown. Although, come to think of it, when Crokies did his, like, rating of pro magic players, he did put me in the same tier as him, chat, so I'll leave it to you to decide where that puts me vis a -vis potential clown tier. All right, are we anointing? 
Chris monkeying around today. There's just a lot of tempo. Monkey. And god, this thing is a real threat when it unearths too. Alright. Uh guess we block the one that's always a 3-2. We definitely don't want to be holding lands just yet. Honestly, I could just earth the simulacrum and hit them again. Kind of into it. Get that tempo going. Work. Get the overrolling remorse back up. We draw a land, we can just anoint a refractor. Alright, cohort. Slows my roll a little bit, I guess. Good damage. I draw land, I can also remorse to break up a double block. Alright, we don't want to be swinging with couriers here, I think. Doesn't seem super appealing to trade those for the opponent's board, actually. Given what's in my hand, maybe I don't mind trading couriers for my opponent's board. Like, we can just play early on enter. If they kill early on enter, we just get a courier back. And it's like, Army 3 3 is actually going to be better than this in the foreseeable future. Alright, works for me. We also get to put them to 5 because they make their blocking choices before realizing we have a flyer coming down. Ayla's Command! All right, Phalanx Vanguard being really big is a thing. Huh. I th Am I supposed to block this? If they have Whirling Strike, I go to one. I think that's a no. Okay, didn't get Whirling Struck. Really didn't want to lose an Ointer there, but I was tempted. It was kind of a close call. All right, having Overrolling Remorse is great. But we're supposed to grow the anointer this turn. We lose access to remorse, but I can cast mud as well, so I'm just gonna have a lot of blockers. Yep, JT, you also make a pretty reasonable point there. Okay, anointer gets a little counter, and now we just jam mutt well. Branch Golem going to be real good. Bit. Went sitting there with something up. Don't know what it is. So things I'm thinking about. Cards to like keep in mind in a situation like this against the Aggro deck are like Unleash Shell. Aeronaut Cavalry is fine. We've got Remorse for that. Soldier. Just one shot random hero. We get to lose one match, so it's not single elimination. Okay, so we could grow anointer, I think. Let's see, what do I do here? I could cast Boulder Branch Golem, but I kinda wanna save that until I have one more mana. This is probably just remorse the cavalry and hold. Could bring back Courier and sack it to pump the Anointer again, but I think I just get rid of my opponent's Flyer. I mean, if I hit them with Anointer, we put them... Okay, so if I Remorse the Cavalry, hit them with Anointer... We put them to three and they're dead next turn to Courier if they don't have another Flyer. They can get through with, like, one creature. They can bring back Cohort and attack. I get to... And they have two damage. I would be dead to like land excavation explosion or maybe it's just boulder branch this turn. It's like getting my life total back to a safe place. Then you know if they can kill anointer somehow, we get back courier, we can remorse their cavalry, and I've got the ground pretty well held down. What do we think, chat? This is a tough spot. 
or what to make of it. Set of timeouts. I don't know if there's any like obvious obvious move here. You'd risk it to kill them. Risk it for the biscuit. All right. So we're dead to whirling strike. Dead to a few things, but I think I like it against these white red decks. It's just not super easy to. Hmm. Yeah, escape's a reasonable read too. They didn't have whirling strike a few turns ago. All right, this is coming back. Yeah, Whirling Strike we're dead too, but I think we'd be dead to Whirling Strike plus this basically whatever happened, unless we had held up a Remorse on our turn. Now do I risk... Okay, so we're dead to Whirling Strike anyway. So is this the block, or do I just block both of them in case there's something besides Whirling Strike? It could be, it could be Land Excavation Explosion. Although land excavation explosion, they would just attack with all their creatures. The question is, why aren't they attacking with all their creatures? Either I'm dead for sure to Whirling Strike, or they think they have a follow-up that stops Anointer. What am I not thinking of? We just make this block. It's military discipline. Not Mishra's Domination. I can do this. See if they strike me. Okay. I think they have nothing. Cool. They could also have life gain, I guess. They could have the three damage to your creature gain two life spell. But uh, I'll make him show it to us. Okay. The Thopter's cool. The Thopter helps a lot as far as damage goes. Actually, it doesn't help that much as far as damage goes. Bring back Mutt, get our card drawn. We'll discard the Thopter here, I think. We can cast Boulder Branch Golem if we have to. Whoops. Oh, you can't actually do Boulder Branch Golem. So I guess we just discard Golem, actually. Okay. Huh. All right, that was stressful. Opponent's very aggressive. Do we have a cyber plan against aggressive decks? Are we pre-boarded for aggro? I guess giant growth is a thing we could think about doing. Aeronaut's wing seems less important. Just very bad defensively, and we're on the draw here. So I think this is it. I could imagine perimeter patrol being fine too. But yeah, this seems like about where we're at. Certainly the unearth stuff is a lot less exciting on defense, but... We're consistent. Alright, found Monkey again. Ah, alright. Opponent getting frisky. Friss? Hey. Start with Harvester here over Mutt. Makes it so that they can't as easily just, you know, cast a random spell and get in for damage. And we probably want to save Mutt if we can anyway. They just attack with it naked here. I don't think I trade. I think Harvester attacking back with with Simeon Simulacrum for tempo is what I want to be doing. Kayla's Command, one of those cards we have to think about this game. Usual, usual one. 
Okay, Scrap Smith getting back Scrap Per Cohort. That's pretty good. Alrighty. Uh, so, do we put the Combat in Combat Courier, or do we just pump Harvester and start hitting them for five? Uh, Harvester just trades with Cohort even if I pump it, which also Combat Courier does, though, so it's not really a... Uh, it's kind of awkward no matter what we do. But this at least gets more damage in this turn. And of course we have Siege Veterans who may be able to grow other stuff bigger later. See if they have the fourth land. If they don't have the fourth land, maybe Harvester just gets in for another huge chunk. Or we could have giant growth. Giant growth could be good. Okay. That one trades. Mm. Is this just mutt discard mutt? Could just be mutt discard mutt and pass and hold stuff up. I'd be okay to trade Simeon Simulacrum for any of their guys here, I guess. Let's start with attacks. I mean, simulacrum. Cool. And yeah, I think with this many, just this much mudding going around, and with Siege Veteran being a card I wanted to run into, I'm down to go mutt, discard mutt. Someone did miss a land drop. Your hand is full of action for sure. Now I kind of wish I had wings back, but that's hard to predict ahead of time. Okay. This is a slightly weird attack. It makes me think they might have a trick of some kind, but if they play a trick this turn, they can't cast Scrap or Cohort, so I'm down to just make the trade. Okay. Pretty sure we sack Courier. Well, Courier can trade with a with a, with a Cohort. Should I be sacking it? Hmm. I think the answer is yes. Hmm. Yeah, I think we need to get better stuff going. Like, the 1-1 one -one does trade for a bunch of stuff on their board, but opponent's got a bunch of stuff in their hand, and... We could have an incredible draw like Sentinel Stalwart plus Energy Refractor. Do I start with... I can go Refractor, hold up Remorse. I think we start Refractor here because if I draw a land, I can go Stalwart, hold up Remorse, and we get Siege Vetter next turn either way. Perfect. That was a great turn. That was a really good turn. No more attack with Monkey. We are ready to break up Kayla's command if it comes to that. Ah, and I am shaking like a leaf. Giant Cinder Mod deal. Alright, I don't see any real reason to remorse yet. Let's just... My turn. And Siege Veterino. And who to pump here? Probably Simulacrum to start with. And I think we just keep holding up Remorse over doing Thopter stuff for now. Feels like the main way I lose this game is my opponent blows me out with some kind of insane combat trick. And with Siege Veteran, we're winning the long game. And they could have the protection spell. in mind. 
Let's also remember that we can't gain life with this in play, so if my opponent just like does a bunch of, you know, does some random stuff this turn, I think I have a reasonable incentive to just kill the dog uh, at the end of their turn, so I can then cast Boulder Branch Golem, gain a bunch of life, especially if I draw land. Six life is you know, easily worth like a card in this matchup, I think. Sam Black, hey! Does that imply that your arena open is over? I hope it went well for you. All right, the dog's coming in. I am extremely down to try trading for the dog. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. All right, you got something, opponent? What a weird trade. Maybe my opponent has life gain that they want to deploy? Anyway, our Morse is down to one mana, which is a great number. Love that number. I think we just go with anoint her and start pumping that one. Looks like my opponent is consistently failing to kill Siege Veteran, which is incredible news for me. I don't really want to cast Thopter. I mean, our opponent could have some kind of crazy bombs, so I want to be thinking a little bit about being proactive, but I'm just not seeing the... Actually, I think at this point I'm down to cast Thopter. I want to get them clocked a little bit. I'm at 16. They've been missing land drops. I just feel like there's not... Like, worst thing, they have, like, Mishras into Mishras. All right, that's Mishras. Let's see if they have Mishras into Mishras. Even Mishras into Mishras doesn't kill me, though. Aeronaut Cavalry's fine. Okay. And we're in fantastic position. All right, opponent keeps making these bizarre attacks, which I am incredibly down for. They're just trying to bulk up their board even more. There's Boulder Branch Golem. Okay. I guess we'll just do that. Yeah, I don't know. I, maybe they're just trying to trim down my board for some kind of mass pump spell, but I just don't really see it. Let's see. So obvious play here is just Boulder Branch Golem gain six life. Other option would be Simulacrum, maybe Pump Anointer. I'm just on Boulder Branch gain six. Just Pump Anointer and keep it held back. Mutt plus Remorse. Interesting. Yeah, we could be could be doing that as well. I guess. Yeah, Mutt actually gets a, an attack in, which is nice. Yeah, but wouldn't I just Simulacrum plus Remorse? Like, do I really need to Mutt now? I mean, and the Mutt draws me a card, I guess. All right, you know, I'm down for that. I'm down for that. Um, Currently, I have won my first match, and I'm up 1-0 in this match. Cavalry's gone. Bring back Thopter as well here, right? Like, what's the harm? Two free damage now. Pump the... I think I just pump Veteran itself at this point. I don't think we need to... Let's see, if I pump Anointer, we put our opponent to six this turn. Rather than seven. I guess that might make the difference with Giant Growth next turn. Sure, it could make the difference with Giant Growth. Jam all. Right, actually that's a pretty good idea. I could I could see Jam all. I'm still playing like scared for no particular reason here. <laughs> yeah, Giant Growth on Boulder Branch Golem is a... Uh, I mean, it's just healing solve, right? We're just converting one boon to another. Yeah, I, I you, you made the joke first, JT, and I just realized that. Also, God, Siege Veteran is... Whew. Whew. Yeah, the thing I'm thinking about is also like Sibling Rivalry, but we're not anywhere close to being dead to Sibling Rivalry. Yeah, 5-3 going in seemed, seemed very good with Giant Growth. Uh, Path Losing Simulator? Probably not, unless your pack is very bad. Boulder Ranch is probably like the, I don't know, fifth 
15th best common or something like that. It's really far from far from nuts. All right, think about a giant growth and block swift spear here. Just in case that, I mean, Whirling Strike puts me to not dead. I don't know. Yeah, just chump and don't giant growth is another option. We're kind of out of flyers, but they can't kill anointer unless they have like planes something. All right, for me. Okay, I think they're just dead to gurgling anointer. Wow. So far, our opponents have been incredibly bad at. Oh, they're at eight. Okay. Yeah, we have we have lethal with giant growth now. They haven't done anything else, so I think we're gonna go for that. Lethal also with simian simulacrum. Lots of, lots of ways to make a. Let's do a thing here. But we also had lethal with siege veteran. Not important. They very dead, yes. All right, hooray for this deck. Performing well, our opponent's decks have not seemed super functional. I mean, I guess our opponent's white-red deck was fine, just didn't, didn't do anything that exciting, and I had rares. Rares are very good. But yeah, loving our card quality, loving the consistency. Happy of just... I don't know if hard to play is the right term. A lot of decisions, I guess, but eh, maybe it's hard to play. We're allowed one loss. God, this deck. This deck is so much fun. I love it. Get all the little cheap spells. All right, opponent sitting there with. So that always just means bushwhack, right? Opponent sits there with green on turn one, but nothing to do with its bushwhack. Can't be giant growth because there were no creatures to target, so I'm pretty sure it's bushwhack. Ooh, found a piece of candy. All right, so combat courier into scrapwork mutt. Honestly, I think I'm probably supposed to save scrapwork mutt until after we cast Gurgly Anointer. Damn, that's sick. Wait, what? Uh, de deal. Yeah, okay. Um, what? In. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't really. I'm. I'm beginning to. Put more stock in the theory we're playing random people from the draft from the best of three draft pool as opposed to I mean it is two for one i guess is this where they bushwhack the stalwart now maybe they're just like doesn't matter what order i kill them in because i'm just gonna kill both of them okay epic confrontation is not bushwhack barriers back Now, are we bushwhacking or what? Uh, Fatty Chopper, what's the other option? So normally I'm not like a play-by-stops guy, but it really did seem like they had a stop there. I mean, is there like a one-drop creature they would have played that I wouldn't be thinking about? Yeah, they didn't know the... Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Alright, so I... Good jam, veteran. I kind of want to just jam Steel Seeker, though. Get more mana into play seems good.
My god, every time you reveal land off of the Steel Seeker, it just seems insane. Goblin Firebomb? Right, that's a possibility, I guess. Does that card have Flash? That card has Flash, right? I think we just, with Steel Seeker in play, I think we're just playing out our lands. We have plenty of stuff to do. Okay, yeah, it could be Goblin Firebomb, they're trying to hold on to it. That's that's actually a perfectly, perfectly reasonable explanation. We'll think about that as well. Yeah, I guess I guess one thing I was not thinking about when I was worried about this deck having the like raw power thing was just like it is an aggressive format and people just play so many like little little effects and little creatures. Also, our mana's been so good these games, you've been like just very consistently able to hit the refractor or stalwart. Okay, opponent sitting there, Remorse is amazing. Both having a little bit of control over stuff. Now do I cast Siege Veteran? I think we lead on Harvester. Leading on Harvester because if my opponent, you know, if my opponent wants to kill Steel Seeker in response to this or something, I'd be very happy with that. <laughs> Steel Seeker in Gruul Asmo in Modern. That is that is very funny. I'm surprised there's not like a better version of that effect somewhere, but I guess I buy it. Alright, I guess like Brotherhood's End is a card that exists. Whatever that's worth. We hold back on the land for now. What format is this, JFB? It's best of three draft on Arena Open Day 2. Pumping Courier or Steel Seeker? Mm, courier, I guess. Just throwing counters in the replaceable stuff. Is there a Flash creature in red and green? I don't think so. Alright, and we will hold back on the land for now. We've played a lot of our best cards, so if our opponent does clean up the board somehow, it could get tough. Rootwire Amalgam. Alright, great. Huh. I guess not super great, because... Okay. Oh, and they had the bushwhack all along. Yay! Alright, chat, we figured it out. Mystery solved, and now we're free to go ahead and kill them. Found the Remorse target, indeed. Wow, we are so, so good at hitting Steel Seeker triggers. Just insane. It's just insane. My god. Alright, now do I remorse it or fracture it? I think I fracture it because it doesn't have any kind of unearth ability and because remorse is an instant and because remorse can be one mana later. I think all of those things together point toward... On the other hand, is there anything I want to sack? I'd be, like, pretty okay just sacking energy refractor, frankly. already cast our Siege Veteran. Hmm. Not. No. Ah. Good Sack Stalwart, which is never really attacking, and we keep Energy Refractor for off-color costs. But we've got Boulder Branch Golem. Yeah, maybe we do just remorse the thing. You, you chat. You, I think, I think you might be correct, chat. The exile part doesn't matter that much. The question is just, do I have anything I want to sack to Power Stone Fracture? And I think I'd rather not do that here. We have we have so much on Earth that Power Stone Fracture is going to be basically free later. Yeah, getting to Fracture and cast Harvester the same turn is good. But what would you what would you sack there, Losu? I can definitely I can definitely see your play. Your play makes sense to me, but like, what are you sacking to Fracture? We're definitely not Fracturing or Remorsing that turn.
Yeah, I'm a little nervous about Stalwart getting killed and losing access to, like, combat curry out of the graveyard and mud out of the graveyard. But yeah, saving instant removal is also very good. Lots of, lots of reasonable things to point out. At this point, I'm down to sack Stalwart because we drew another land. Play around Worm Coil. You know, that's legit. That's legit. I could see that. But I think for now, we're not going to play around Worm Coil. We just go ahead and Power Stone Fracture. There's stuff. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna fracture the two. We're never gonna be you know, doing that stuff to the two two. But yeah, worm coil is a legit thing to think about. Worm coil, or I guess some other big life linker. Although I think there really are big life linkers in these colors. Besides worm coil. Uh. The idea, I guess, is that I, I, def I desperately want to have access to multicolored mana, just in case, this game, and uh, Refractor sticks around if my opponent has something like a Brotherhood's End. Like, the card I'm really playing around right now is Brotherhood's End. Weird block. Alright. Jesus Christ, Steelseeker, calm down. Calm down. All right, so unless it's exactly Worm Coil, we should be pretty good to go. It was not Worm Coil. Uh, that's True Trail, but then we keep Steel Seeker. So I assume they would just go for creatures over artifacts. Okay. Um, is this a Gix's Caress matchup? We saw, I think that might have been four cards. I think it's definitely a Wings matchup, but is it a Caress matchup? Hmm. What do we think, chat? Are we, are we bringing the discard to hit their big stuff? Or do we just try and skate around it? Hmm, alright, what are we cutting then if we put in Caress? We're over 2010, so far it's been a good day. Could be Courier. Man, I love this little guy though. I don't think it's Stalwart. You wouldn't unless until they make us. I mean, the question is, did they make us already? They've got five fives. Five fives are very good against us. I mean, we have removal. We have giant growth. We have astro aeronaut swings. We have ways to get around five fives. If I could see caress over like rager, maybe rager's just kind of slow, especially on the draw. I mean, it is good at drawing me to removal. Thopter? No, I like Thopter. Hmm. Well. Maybe for now we just stick with what we got and we can see if they make us caress them. I mean, the deck's been amazing so far. Pretty happy keeping it in its current form. But definitely my lack of experience with Best of Three is showing I am not good at sideboarding. Don't know how to do it. Research desk. Interesting. Okay. Uh, definitely want to hit Simulacrum on three, so we're definitely going to just use Evolving Wilds this turn. Given how many fight spells they have, I feel like there's a good chance they can't kill Steel Seeker, which would be great. We just get to make a 3 4 Steel Seeker on turn three. I feel incredible about this game. Yep, also get another trigger. 
this way. One always has desk up. Wow, okay. Heal Seeker, put them in emergency mode. What did they hit? Whoa, my god, chat. <laughs> Bullet dodged. Also, what a horrible research desk. Really, really good reason not to play a million six drops in your deck. Well, if we do go to game three, I'm bringing Gix's Caress. You. I mean, I, I definitely feel for them. Definitely feel for them with that one. Yeah, I don't know what they were looking for. I guess they probably have an excavation explosion. Also, I think we're just like five for five on Steel Seeker triggers in this match. Like, when you are lucky, this guard really makes you feel it. Oof. No, opponent. That doesn't seem that exciting. Honestly, given we've seen her deck, I'm pretty tempted just to make a 5-6 Steel Seeker this turn. I guess that's that's a little greedy. We could just get like three triggers instead. On the other hand, Mestastic is telling me to do it. Three triggers is greedy. <laughs> Mistastic, your sense of uh, your sense of dignity is offended. We start with Refractor here because that way, if there's a non-land, I want to keep. I don't actually think I keep this. I think we just mill this and unearth it. Right. That's the great thing about Steel Seeker. We just keep milling stuff. Oh wow! Hello. Hello. One will mill as well because we have Refractor. Who needs spells? Keep that one. I don't know. I think we're going to be pushing 20 at them. This game is fantastic. I mean, if they have a big removal spell in Seal Seeker, I guess I'm a little sad here, but... Alright, they hit green. What if they gain one life? Oh no, Mistastic has exposed the weaknesses in my planning. All right, that's a lot of tower workers, but fortunately the power stone fracture means that we have a 10-10. If they play a 10-10, we can stop it, which is part of why I was un getting rid of the weaker creatures there. Yeah, I like I like making a making a biggish guy here, so I should be holding up green for giant growth. Doing this, something yawn courier, uh, mill mutt. Run Milmut here. Also, giant growth to kill a tower worker, but that does not seem worth it. Wow, the fact that you can just like mill all the creatures in the deck because they have an Earth anyway is yeah, it's a very insane Steel Seeker deck. If our opponent does have a second tyrant, we can beat the second tyrant. Recluse. That's a little bit annoying. I guess it just trades with one of the three power guys. It's kind of fine. I don't think we really want to fracture. Okay, now that I have a second fracture, maybe we do want to fracture it. Okay, I think we are going to fracture it. We're just going to kill them. So we could bring back Harvester. I kind of want to attack with Harvester. Fracture them, we lose Energy Refractor, which means we lose Mutt. This is great, though. Growler. Mill that, I guess. I don't think I want to set Combat Courier. Combat Courier is a whole card.
Yeah, we're also going to lose Scrap Work Mutt when we kill this Recluse. They're also dead to Giant Growth. They block anything besides Harvester. See what they block. I guess they can double block. Do they attack with Courier here? I don't think so. Yeah, it kind of feels like I'm playing like, like a modern deck or something. I don't know. We're just all of our spells are so cheap, and we're just doing so many things relative to our opponents. All right. All right. Like that. Yeah, this has been six games we played, and only one of them was close. 21 just in case. Exactly. Exactly. Mistastic scared me. Alright, we qualified for the second draft, and now we get to buy ourselves... Try and buy ourselves a game win in the second draft. That did indeed feel very powerful. Oh, it's Marshall. Okay, chat. I feel like this person is in the arena open day two. And, alright. Perfect time to take our first mulligan. Keep six. Alright. Steel Seeker and Prey, chat. We're gonna get all the lands we need. All the lands we need. Yep. Marshall, definitely the mini boss. Alright, don't have Epic Confrontation, Marshall. Marshall builds Static Net. Glad to see that one gone. And. Hmm. Do I jam Blanchwood here of my own? Hey, Deathsea! Massive raid. Hello, everybody. All right, do I try and get a trigger off of Steel Seeker here? I think we do try and get the tri the, ra the triggers off of Steel Seeker. We'll start with Blanchwood Prowler. Something Wilds is fine. Wow, all right, huge crowd in here. All right, folks, we've already qualified for draft number two. Now we're just trying to beat Marshall to get ourselves a, a game of security. I guess we block. Like, I'm down. I have an Astronaut's Harvester in hand, so I'm perfectly happy to get rid of Marshall's 1-1. Mask of the Jade Crafter is a pretty good magic card. Oh, hey, Tammy. Hmm, all right. So we got an opponent who's playing, like, real cards. Hmm. Hmm. All right, what do I want to do this turn? Growing the Anointer seems good. I would like to get a good clock going on Marshall. Yes. Th I think this is just Steel Seeker into Mutt over Harvester. Starting Evolving Wilds is a slight risk. Okay. Do I keep Energy Refractor? Okay, the colored mana is not nothing, but we actually do have to... We mill it? Tough. I think we mill it. I mean, it just, it just costs mana. I guess with double Steel Seeker I should keep it. With double Steel Seeker, I should keep it. With how it's been going, yep, Steel Seeker is never gonna, never gonna stop being awesome. All right, if Marshall just sacks this mask, we are under some real pressure. I would not be surprised if Marshall had something better to do this turn than sack mask. Doctor Architect, that one's fine. Keep in mind that this makes an artifact trigger happen when it enters. Second Steel Seeker. Refractor. Refractor for actually Refractor for Anointer makes perfect sense. So yes, definitely wanted to keep that. Yup. Yup. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Oh, that's insane. Can mill that one quite safely now. Can mill that one quite safely now. All right, we're drawing closer to our removal spells in our Siege Veteran. Hog. Yep, 
Yep, stacked the stalwarts 13th and 14th in our deck just so we could mill them when the time came. Yeah, Leo, I mean, it does feel like we're playing a legacy deck. We need to become Aaron Gurdjieff. I said it and I meant it. That's the Tin, goal. thanks for the follow. First follow of the day. All right, Mask is happening. So we got to be wary of Gaia's Gift. We need to become Aaron Gurdjieff. We have a lot of chumps okay. and stuff, but got to be wary of Gaia's Gift. All right, I think we kick things off with Combat Courier. We have Scrapwork Mutt for Unearth. We can also sack a Courier to draw a card and pump the Anointer. I think I want to get to a removal spell here if possible. But I can just kill this 6-6 six -six this turn. Mill Thopter. Mill Harvester or Keep Harvester? I think it's Mill Harvester. I think I just really want removal spells in Siege Veteran. And we're like trying to just generate some kind of massive attack to kill Marshall. We bring back Mutt this turn. Discard. Oh, we should have kept. Should not have discarded the. Yeah, that's really bad, actually. Okay, we'll keep Simeon Simulacrum. That card's good enough to keep, I think. Or is it? I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. Draw it anyway. Our counter. Land. Okay, so we're at 12. Gaia's Gift doesn't kill me. Go for a double block on the Bayloth. I think we just got to keep attacking because Marshall's deck's going to have a lot of late game power in it. It's also good to mill, that's true, but I think... Alright, I could just cast Harvester this turn as well. We're not dead to Gaia's Gift. Hmm. Yeah, actually, maybe I should... Sure. All right, this is unearthed. I guess we had a free attack, but whatever. Huh. Guy's Gift is the card that scares me. I'm... I get to look at three more cards. I think I probably just try and dig to my instant speed removal spell here. I think I let Marshall hit me for one turn. I guess if Marshall can generate three artifacts, I'm dead. But if Marshall generates three artifacts, I'm dead anyway. Yeah, let's go for Harvester and get some more card selection. Aeronaut's Wings. I mean, that's like an exciting card in general, but I think I'm supposed to mill it still. I think at this juncture, it's a little bit not enough. That I'm going to keep. All right. We'll see. It could be dead here to a bunch of different things. Mask the Jade Crafter generates two artifacts by itself. Oh, all right. Marshall kills me. Well done, Marshall. Maybe I was supposed to hold an Ointer there. All right, we're going to make Marshall do it, but Marshall does have it. Congratulations. All right, chat. We face the slightly bigger deck that's playing real cards. This is our real challenge. A little awkward how long we moved on removal there, but Marshall's deck is also just actually good. All right, I like Gix's Caress in this matchup, for sure. And as far as cuts go, I think we cut... As usual, this is a really hard choice. Um, hmm. Yeah, chat, still still down for any any cuts that you could suggest. Maybe Stalwart, if we just want our cards to do as much as possible. I could see my way to cutting a Stalwart. I don't think it's Wings. Let's keep in mind, by the way, that we cannot Gix's caress a Bayloth. We cannot we caress a Bayloth. Lean to it. Thanks for the That's follow. The Rogue Dizzle as well. Thank you very much. All right, someone's arguing for cutting wings over Stalwart. I don't know. I think I think we're gonna need wings to like actually kill Marshall. I'm cutting Stalwart. Just trying to play more cards that do things. Yeah, Thopter Architect, huh? Have not been killed by that one before. Ew. All right, chat. I th we have two Scrapwork Mutts. We have two Scrapwork Mutts. Does that mean I'm allowed to keep this hand? Or do I just have to mulligan on the play? 
God, I think I have to mulligan the play. We have Steel Seekers and stuff. Has a removal spell. <laughs> All right, well, justly punished. Got to keep this now. That's all right. I'm fine to go 3-1 with this deck and, you know, for the bad draw to happen now of all times. Just put Evolving Wilds on the bottom. Doesn't really matter because you end up having, like, a, a land effectively thin to the bottom of your deck no matter what you do. So there is that's exactly what Florida Mun said. Oh hey Florida Mun, I was looking at some of your draft decks last night trying to learn to draft. All right, well, yeah, a combat courier always appears when he is needed. It's going great. I mean, we qualified, which is all I can hope for. This deck is not amazing, so I'm just happy to be here, and I'm happy to give Marshall a win too. Who's this crawler? What is? This? Five mana? Veteran's Power Blade. That's a card. Alright, um... Marshall's got so much equipment. I think I just take Static Net? Although a lot of my permanents are really bad, so maybe I'm just supposed to take, like, Sigil of Valor? Gotta be Static Net, right? Yeah, Marshall's Marshall's getting me. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's just equipment tribal for Marshall. Also, we are in some real trouble here, huh? Real trouble. That's fine. Down, down to lose this one and then just jump into my next draft. Cool. There you are. A little late. A little late. But now I'm glad I used Static Net at least. Yep, Dreadfire, we went 3060 in the first three three games until we ran into Marshall. Has a good deck, and we've and this is the first game of our eight where the draw has just been totally non-functional. Yeah, it's Deathsea's fault. Blame Deathsea. Also, everybody who's joining from Deathsea's stream, you should know I don't actually know how to draft this format, so you're probably gonna see some things in the next draft that uh astonish you in not a good way. <laughs> 16 lands later. Oh. All right, all right, we're uh, we're getting there. Do I attack? I mean, yes, I, I need to. Tr I have Sigil of Valor. So I can't block anyway. They basically have damage on net if they want it. I mean, we're dead. We're gonna lose this one. And auto tapper? I don't. We'd have. We have nothing to cast. There's no auto tapper here. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a really good system. You get to play four matches. If you may, if you win three of them, you're in the second draft. But you can buy yourself. It's basically double elimination, and it's across the two drafts. So we've bought ourselves. We we could have had we won this one, bought ourselves an elimination game in the next draft. All right. Anyway, we're we're gonna lose this one. I don't see how we. All right, Boulder Branch Golem. I think Marshall has too much equipment for this to be a thing. But I guess we can like hold out and stuff. Uh we just pass. Pretty resigned to being dead, but Yeah, we definitely need Boulder Branch Golem if we have a chance here. If we can maybe trade with Sprite, there's actually a shot. Oh, I see. That that's what the auto tapper is people are talking about. Sure. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, well, whatever. Not actually, you know, better or worse than what we've been seeing. Deal. Alright. So 
create jump. Okay, if we can find removal for the cavalry, I guess we've got wings. Rolling up green for giant growth, yes indeed. Okay. Sigil almost kills me, but not quite. Although Sigil into their next turn's attack probably kills me. I guess Wings plus Giant Growth lets us block and take out the cavalry. Yeah, nope, we're holding up Giant Growth and making it very obvious that that's what we're doing, so it's like a slight oopsie. Yeah, I don't think the thing about the deck that a deck like this that we're playing is we just don't have that many cards that do anything. Oh, we're also just dead to this. Are we? We go to one. Yeah, giant growth to gain three. I don't think there's any way that's ever correct. Right, if I can kill the cavalry. Well, maybe it was correct, because now I'm dead no matter what I think, but I think we were not gonna be able to get out of this against the psychosis crawler, especially. Siege veteran. Uh no, Marshall just attacks us and kills us. I'm not going to make him go through that. I guess I should make him go through it. Got to show it to him, sure. All right, got it. Okay, just gotta send a quick text message, and then we're into the second draft. I mean, this deck was great. Our, we just got incredible cards late very consistently. I have a feeling this is gonna be another one of those days where I, uh... Wait. Oh, draft two is at 12 p.m. Pacific time? Oh, it doesn't just start immediately? Oh. Okay, chat, uh... Cool. I guess I'll see you all in a few hours. Uh, all right, I guess I can make my phone call after all. What is this? I feel so... I mean, I guess it makes sense to give people time to play. Uh, the difference between three and four wins is whether you get to lose one for free in the next draft. Pantheramonium, thanks for the follow. Yeah, you see, if we had gotten to four wins, we'd be playing a double elimination draft at noon. All right, well, um, damn. Well, I hate to lose 300 viewers, but I do have a phone call. So, uh, yeah, I think I'll just see y'all back here for the second draft and not do... Darn, no, let's just casually draft. It's 300 people. We'll just, we'll just keep it going until noon. It's rare to get a day like this, and I can, can reschedule this. All right, we're gonna stick. We're gonna stick with it. Let me just first know I'm gonna move our meeting. All right, meeting, meeting. All right, all right, back to drafting. I'm gonna do it casually drafting, learning, practicing. So I'm in the middle of a draft, so I guess we'll just pick up the deck I had. I can't believe this deck is four and oh, it's like kind of an ugly pile. Um, So this thing I'm playing now is like, I, I decided to experiment and first picked Yoshin Dissident, and then I was past three more Yoshin Dissidents, of which I took two. So we're playing like a weirdo, Combat trick centric green black deck with three ocean dissidents here for some reason, and the deck seems like it should not work at all, but it has been working very well. So I'm gonna kind of stick with it. 
mostly Rune Changer's Pike has been very good. Uh, it, it's definitely different than anything else I expect to draft in the format. The Ocean Distance is a tough one to play. I see why the green-white win rate is so atrocious on 17 lands. It seems like Ocean Distance really just requires you to have... I mean, it's sort of you're, you're pressured to take the same cards everyone's already taking, the Chromatic Stars and the Refractors and stuff. And the reward for something like Yoshin Dissident just feels a lot lower than the reward for Junkyard Genius or um, or the blue-red one. Versus Battle Thopter is so funny, by the way, this art just, <laughs> just, just took a Thopter, he just put his head on it. What's making the eyes glow? He put like special jewels in there to make the eyes glow. What a nerd. Yeah, that card, that combo seems messed up. We unfortunately don't have that combo. We do have this hand, which is a bunch of playable cards. I'm in. Let me change my stream title. Uh... Okay, I see you, Wand Thief. I'm with it. Alright, we get a free turn to Jam Evolving Wilds. Fine. Swing first in case they have the trick. We'll thin our deck and then we'll cast the Refractor. Thin before you draw. Didn't work. Swift foot boots. Hmm. Hey, Jason. Thanks for the raid. Welcome, everyone. We uh, did qualify successfully with a 3-1 and one in our first draft, and now we're just kind of chilling and drafting until the second one comes up because they are making us wait. Arso Engineer not being a soldier is just so awkward. Okay, what do I want to do here exactly? We are Giga Flooded. I think I swing Cohort, and if they block with Engineer, we'll just step Gaia's Gift, the Cohort. Does some damage, makes us big enough to attack through Cavalry. Uh, it's, they've done it at least once before, maybe twice, Merrick. Not a super new idea, or my opponent just gives me the cavalry, which I'm perfectly happy with. But it's a great system, much better than playing, I mean, I think what happened is they started out doing the usual, like, you play seven games, and nobody enjoyed playing seven matches, best of three, with the same draft deck. Oh, wow, I love the time on the disenchant. Oh, they have Swiftfoot Boots. Oh, interesting. Okay. They're willing to trade off Harvester for a token in order to get the Boots value, but... I mean, it's not bad. It makes sense. Successfully ganked my Emergency Weld. Alright, should I be blocking Power Stone Engineer just so I can actually use Emergency Weld? I think so? I think that seems pretty reasonable. I'd... Hmm. Eh, if I just, like, have Argothian Sprite... With a ton of mana, I just should win regardless, right? I think this is safe. Got three more damage with the Harvester. Dissident. Alright. It's better than nothing. Much better than nothing at some point. Alright. Definitely, every time I see Harvester in play, I'm reminded of why it has such a ridiculous win rate. What a card.
Ooh, all right, that's... That's a card. Definitely trading with it now. I want to keep my life to it a little bit, a little bit up. That is a really good insurance policy. It's also Dees. I think we just take the three, don't really want to trade the token for it. Spike has been successfully dealt with. This force is a block, right? Yep. All right, somehow five in it with this. All right, this is a question I've asked my chat a couple times, and I haven't gotten a lot of great answers, so I'm curious now that we have this bigger crowd here. Anybody have any, like, super secret draft tech going into my, uh, into my next match? Or does anybody want to give me Detsy's super secret draft tech? I have been trying to learn the format, but I'm not at a ton of time to watch streams, and so I, uh, I don't know if there's, like, a gold vein pick of this format, the card that Detsy just loves that everyone else is going to love later. Fantastic, you said that last time. Get some new material. We're just going to disfigure this for tempo. Ooh, Medic. See, that's the spice I'm looking for. I wouldn't even have thought of, of that one. But it seems maybe pretty good. I yeah, definitely need to use Mask here. Can't just have a turn go by where we don't do anything, and it would be nice to have a moment to Defiance target as well. Draw into some gas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, can I get a white source? Nope. All right. Oh. Love to see a block there. That's pretty helpful. Ah, there's my white source. I shouldn't have played that swamp. That was a punt. Knew it, giving that I knew I was drawing, like plausibly drawing a card that turn. Yeah. Normally I'd be like really afraid of heart, but I feel like, I don't know, people's, in this kind of format, you're really scared of the bombs until you realize that, hey, there maybe aren't that many like super crazy bombs actually. I could save opportunist to put a counter down on the dissident, but I think I'm supposed to just play it. Get access to sprite for next year and get access to double blocks without having to risk sprite. All right, well, remember what I said about, uh... All right, so I got one turn to draw Skyfisher Spider, I think. Okay. Uh, hmm, still isn't very good, because I don't have mana for it. Yeah, Chad, I know, I know. 
I know. Oh wait, I can... Damn it, I'm one mana away from bringing back Mask and being able to use Mask on Spider too. Hmm. 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 I I'm have some green away as well. God. Chatter, are you okay if we just give up? We're not even necessarily dead, but I just don't feel like playing this out, and I'd rather get another draft in with y'all sooner. As opposed to trying to beat the golem once my opponent brings it back. Just go ahead and add a little bit to that. You know, in my uh in my day one winning deck yesterday, I went 7-0 with a deck with Phyrexian Portal in it. I didn't even have to cast the portal. I never cast the portal that hole in any of the matches. That's how good Portal is. Ugh. That's okay. This deck shouldn't go seven zero. That would be that would be not right. Hmm, this is admiring the art for Power Stone Fracture. I think that might be a Cabal Paladin attacking the uh, the robot. Although, come to think of no, never mind. Brothers War far predates the Cabal. <sighs> Such a bad nerd. Burn one Blast Stone. Yay, now we get to sit here with triggers up for the rest of the game. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sushio. It would be justice if I just went five and three. Five and three is fine for this deck. I'm about ready to do that. Yay! All right, fine. I'm not adding pressure to the board. Hey, all right. Now yeah, we're cooking with gas. There's some, ar some argument to saving emergency weld for later to get back a better card. But I think I want to just get a clock, a better clock going than Thraxidemon. I mean, the Blast Stone's not a bad card. They will eventually be able to trade it for something. We just be pretty careful to remember that it's there. It's not a card I'm used to playing around. Okay. Hmm. Uh Guess we have to do this and hope that Gaia's gift stuff works. Well, that's good. That's excellent.
We need oh, to become Aaron nope. Hurdler tonight, Chad. Nope, That's the nope, goal. nope. Fantastic. Thanks for the follow. All right, should I just murder the paratrooper? Murdering paratroopers is awkward because it lets them just kill my Thraxidemon. I could cohort. I could try to leave up Thraxidemon. I think we just cohort. Or hold up disfigure. Patrol gets big. I think that merits attacking with it. Not bad though. Maybe we do attack with it. Yeah, there's no reason I can't just be attacking. I'm still like thinking with the like mindset of. Right now, do I disfigure the warlord's elite? Yeah. Keep a big creature around here. I guess I got blown out by the one white trick there, but it didn't feel like they had that. He said with no justification whatsoever. Mostly it's really good to be spending at least one to be spending our one black source each turn because we got three black cards in our hand that we gotta cast. Great. Yeah. No reason to cast this pre-combat. No reason to cast this pre-combat. <coughs> sure. All right. Moment of Defiance doesn't save anything, so we'll just let this happen. And Gwyn is obviously a little bit scary to leave up, but it's fine to be doing that. Now I think we... Okay, I guess I guess they do have Blast Zone for two to take out both my creatures here. Let's actually just hold up Thraxodemon in case they Blast Zone. I can just sack the Dissident to Thraxodemon. Of course, the opponent's building up a lot of mana, and they probably are pretty reluctant to get rid of this ambush paratrooper. But I see them be just like hesitant to use blast zone at all. Their refractor probably doesn't affect them. Okay, we're just gonna do it. Not even at source at instant speed just now. Sure. Did have two counters. Did have two counters. Sentence is nice. Get back the distant here. We have Scrapper Cohort in the graveyards. This is going to represent a lot of counters. Good pre combat so I can pump patrol. Okay. A bit of a clock myself. A better clock, though. The Defiance also really good in a race. Pun keeps casting expensive spells, but they keep not pumping Gwynna, which is really awkward for them. Right, a land would have been nice, but I don't hate.
use clear cutter. Actually, wrapper cohort. Oh, we can do everything. We can do everything. We can dissident end cohort. I guess I'm supposed to do that. Go to eight. Seems pretty safe. Counters round, so we want to put two of them on patrol. I think we'll just stack a token as well. Setting up for potentially a very large life swing with Moment of Defiance. Plus, we can beat Portal to Phyrexia. Nice. Okay, that's fine. A little rough, but fine. Prison sentence, we can handle them. Uh, Path Losing Simulator. I... I don't think so. Uh... I don't think permanently. You can, you can steal it temporarily, you can copy it and get a copy of your own. But the only, like, all the, you know, weirder cards are artifacts, and there's not, like, a Vidalcan Shackles or something, or... Whatever else there might be. All right, one more game. Hopefully we win this one. We can have a short caffeine and talk to my wife break and come right back in. Yay! Tammy, Tammy supports it. All right, chat. Um, is Survivor of Corliss playable? Is that a thing, anybody? I should have played the non-forest first. Is this card playable? Any, any, any knowers? It does not seem very playable. I guess maybe if you have like 7,000 soldier lords, but I dubious. Filler in the soldier deck. Hmm. So all we really need to do, chat, is add a command for me to rub Tammy's back, and then and then we have everything taken care of. Um, I would trade with Mishra. Yeah, I'm definitely trading with Mishra. We need some emergency weld. Sure, that sounds good. Blunt some offense. Ooh, Yoshin Dissident. All right, start with that then. Ah. Yeah. They can kill it, of course, but um, 
the prison sentence doesn't work, and if they have a red removal spell, we can just emergency weld it back. Recast it. Okay, am I supposed to build up the Dissident here, or do I build up the 1-1? One 1-1 one? One one just is here to trade for Scrapboard Cohort, so I think we build up the Dissident. And do I just cast Mask? Do I wait, cast Sprite? There's a part of me that wants to wait and just hold Gaia's Gift. I feel like my opponent's inevitably going to try for some kind of combat trick. Then it's like incredibly obvious that I have it. Just mask. I mean, the token there's worth it, but it makes it harder for them to attack with one ones. Because you still do have the leeway to like let the cohort hit me once and make some weird blocks. Wow, they went after the mask and not the soldier this turn. That is interesting. Don't mind that at all. correct hmm that card's pretty good ah, and here I am with five green cards it's a little awkward Now we're technically lets me cast two spells next turn, but I also probably have to just block with it this turn. I don't know. Feels feels pretty dead. Yeah, six six green mana symbols here available to use, and one forest. But I I mean I'm trying to splash the ocean dissidents. My deck is not that good at splashing. Uh, mask is green to unearth, so can't do that unfortunately. Yep. Afraid of. Really, really, really use a moment of defiance. I guess would require me to do something with the Cinder Maw. Right, I think we had a trade with Engineer here. I think a scenario where I can win this going to. Okay. Maybe we just eat two tokens then. Looking great for our hero. Refractor, that's kind of like a card. Hmm, that's a card for sure. Okay. Taking damage off of it's really, really awkward, but I th think we're down to go to two to cast Stalwart here. For risk going to two. You know, we're dead to ex Excavation Explosion either way. But the fact that they're doing this at least implies they probably don't have that card in hand. How many copies do we think they have in their deck? Double top. Okay, once again, love static net here. Really good one to see. Uh, 
Emergency Weld, okay, that gets back Mask of the Jade Crafter. Start to distribute a lot of counters. In. Okay, so I think we just, uh... Try and kill them with Big Sprite. Big Sprite can't be chump blocked by that token there. We render ourselves a bit vulnerable to Cinder Maw. Course of doing this, but we've got giant growth. Not putting as much thought into these counters as I could be, but that would be a lot of sitting around and staring. Oh, double topped. Okay, I can beat that. I can beat that for sure. All right, so we need to block the Cinderella of the five five. Whatever thing is my 5-5 five five is the thing that survives. We gotta do this. This, this, doesn't really matter how we block here. Are they dead on the backswing? Not quite not. We got shoot down for the automaton. And I think we do I just mask for two? Mask for two, Sprite is a 6-6, six, six. we hit them, shoot down the automaton, hold back one blocker. All right, now the question is, do I hold back, I don't know, Tammy, just a lifestyle choice. All right, so options are, I mean, we always are going to be shooting down and cracking Mask for two. The question is, do I attack with two creatures or one creature? Attack with two creatures, opponent goes to seven and they're dead to me drawing a land to pump sprite if they don't have a non-artifact blocker. But I lose to a haste creature or a removal spell. Including a removal spell that only removes an artifact. Hold back two creatures, we put our opponent to nine this turn. Which means they are still dead if they... if I draw a land and they draw like a land. I think I'm willing to just try and make the best play, assuming they have a land, which is to try and kill them faster. Plus, I know chat likes it when we when we kill our opponents faster. Plus, it's going to be really funny if I make a hubristic play and then lose because of it. And you always got to, you know, as a tiebreaker, I think you can consider what's the funniest play angle. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what commons we lose to. There's Blitz Automaton. There's any removal spell. The white creatures in general don't kill me. We're dead to, like, the flying equipment either way. Alright, high content play. Oh, I guess we had Mask coming back next turn. Surely they'll draw another land now, though, right? Actually, their, their ratio has not been great, so they kind of deserve a spell. Indeed, but Blitz Automaton is the main haster to think about, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, do we mask so I can beat... Does that let me beat the damage plus life gain card? Not quite. But I'm going to do this anyway this turn, so you might as well do it pre-combat. So make Sprite exactly lethal. I think we sit with Sprite. Yeah, because if they have the life gain spell, they can survive anyway. We might as well have as many blockers as possible. Cool. Yeah, did a Whirling Strike. Yeah, there's a world where I make a 3-3 token instead with the Yoshin Distance so I don't die to Whirling Strike. That was probably the right play, actually. Anyway, that's a 7 win. So, we're going to take that... Quick, quick break, but we'll be back in just a couple minutes, chat. Don't go in, go go somewhere else. Don't just sit here and stare at the blank screen for a couple minutes. That would be weird. But, you know, keep, keep this tab open so you can come back because we're going to be drafting again. 
This might be the Mythic Draft. Let's see. Ugh. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal.
Nice. Only lost what? Thirteen percent of the chat. That's not bad at all. Also, uh, my wife reminded me that I have not been using the green screen she bought me, so we're gonna go ahead and put that one up. Gotta placate the wife, chat. Happy wife, happy life. Uh. Here we go. I hope you liked looking at our windows. So I, I guess I hope you weren't liking looking at our windows because you can't do it anymore. Also, Pimar, thanks for the follow. And now let's get some more draft practice. This will be my, I think this is probably like my 11th draft of the format by now. I've been practicing well, chat. I am totally ready for this. Well, now you don't get the window anymore. Instead, you get you get this rock. I hope you enjoy this rock and this little patch of grass. And this little glowy thing. MW, what are the best colors in this format? Uh, most people would tell you black-red. Um, by default, if you could have a good deck in any color combination, I think you'd pick black-red, but it's... You know, many things are playable. Blue's a little worse. Temporal Anchor is a very cool card, but A, it's blue. B, there's a Maze Mind Tome, which is just amazing at all times. So You're always about the Maze Mind Tomes. Also, you're probably supposed to take Excavation Explosion over Temporal Anchor. Card's win rate is not very good. Now, chat, would you be on exc would you be would you take first pick one, pack one, if there wasn't a Maze Mind Tome in the pack? Would you take Excavation Explosion or would you take Zephyr Sentinel? Or would you take Scrapwork Mutt? Like, which of these three would you start with in a vacuum? I think I think Tome is better than Excavation if you consider that it's colorless. Path losing, uh... I mean, there are a lot of things to compare it to. Um, it's, it's maybe more on the complicated side just because there's so many artifacts you can take. But it's maybe less complicated than, I don't know. I don't know, every format has its own complications. Alright, so now we got Combat Thresher versus Obliterating Bolt. Combat Thresher is a an extremely serviceable, you know, Thresher is a bit, I've, I've seen this pick before. Bolt has a better win rate. Thresher has the benefit of being playable even if you don't have it up in red, but of course Bolt's extremely splashable. Pretty sure you're just supposed to take Bolt here. Um, I think Thresher is sweet, but it's maybe underperformed a little bit relative to where I thought I what where I thought it would be. Okay, here we've got a strong gold card in Falaji Vanguard, but it's also a Carstone Fracture. Not trying to force Black Red by any means, but one of the reasons Black Red is very good is there are lots of strong commons like Power Stone Fracture. Um, Acrol Smear, yeah. Uh, quick art, quick overview of the format, which other uh, other people could probably do a better job. But roughly speaking, it's a an, a very aggressive format, which means it looked at first like it was going to lean Prince because there are a lot of very strong rares. But it's more it's more in the middle, maybe even leaning a bit Popper because aggressive assertive decks matter so much. This is not draft number two in the open yet. We are not allowed to do that draft until noon. Otherwise, I would be doing that draft right now. Anyway, it's Power Stone Fracture, I think, over the Vanguard. Just stay open. Don't commit yourself to a gold card. I would understand Ruskoliath, too. I've, I've been pretty impressed by Ruskoliath. Just the Mammoth Spider mode is quite solid in an aggressive format. Okay, I think we're just taking second Power Stone Fracture here over Sibling Rivalry. Sibling Rivalry you can get much later. Power Stone Fracture is just excellent removal. And... Now we've got a few reasonable options. Arbalest Engineers is powerful, but it's not like superb. It's like slightly better than Argothian Opportunist. And it is two colors and we're not one of those colors yet. There is Satanial Stalwart, which again is a green card, but is a card I really like in the Power Stone Fracture decks. You're just like making a lot of cardboard and it's just a very powerful mana dork if you always have random stuff to tap. There's a Clay Revenant, but I'm not super interested in that one yet because you can always pick one up late and you don't really want more than one. There's also Stern Lesson, which is pretty good Power Stone Fracture, but I think our deck... I just don't think we're in Stern Lesson mode. There's also Blitz Automaton, which is like a playable creature. I could imagine a lot of options here. I almost don't hate Stern Lesson. 
All right, let's take engineers. I think there's like nothing here that's like irreplaceable, and I think I like engineers a bit more than the Satanial guy. Okay, so it looks like green is pretty open. There's Bushwhack and Argothian Sprite, two of the best green commons. There's also Sardian Cliff Stomper, which is powerful, but hard to get enough red to make it really consistent, unless you're almost mono red, and I just don't want to necessarily commit in that direction yet. So I think it's between Bushwhack and Sprite. I don't think you're supposed to take Moment of Defiance here. I think in the given the chance that we end up in a three color deck, I lean Bushwhack here. It can be a little bit tough to find creatures that are big enough to fight successfully with this, but the fact that it has like an easy fail fail mode of just being, you know, land makes it pretty good. And now I'm gonna grab Golem over Goliath and Flask. This is just ladder because we're not allowed to play in the next round yet. There's also Thraxodemon. I don't know. I'm kind of leaning toward leaning toward Golem here. Green looks really open. Black also looks pretty open. Like it's a pretty late Thraxity, but an Elsewhere Flask you can just play in any deck and it's fine. It's like very good with Power Stone Fracture. But I think green is quite open. I'm, I'm following an instinct here. I don't know if this is right at all. Epic Confrontation. Yeah. I'll take Epic Confrontation. Over emergency weld easily. Yeah, taking green and being open to take like mana fixing also matters a lot when we've just got a bunch of good splash pool removal. Uh Porting Recluse is one of those cards that looks like it should be good, but I've just been so unimpressed with it every time I've seen it. It's like a small obstacle, but it just trades with everything and it usually trades down in mana. I'm more interested in Haywire Might, especially because we're sorting I'm trying to like sort of pretend that this is our our upcoming draft for best of three. And in best of three, I definitely want Haywire Might because it's a good answer to a range of bombs. Yeah, a lot of lessons coming around late, but I just don't think I'm interested in blue cards at this point. Reckless Giant Growth, Reckless Giant Growth, Reckless Giant Growth. Yeah, we could easily be Gruel. The question is just, you know, Sometimes we're going to end up with enough. Uh, sometimes we'll end up with enough sack fodder that we can play the fracture the fractures anyway. Sometimes you won't. And we also have enough black cards to be open some kind of insane black rare. We can move into it. Open visions of Phyrexia, which is pretty pro hit, pretty clearly the pick. Um, yep, easy visions of Phyrexia. Card is extremely powerful. Really, really good with Power Stone Fracture as well, just gives you a ton of raw material. So we're looking gruel. We do have to pay attention to actually taking playable creatures so we can use our fight spells correctly. And with that in mind, I think I might be in for Boulder Branch Golem over Epic Confrontation and Evolving Wilds. There's also Hall of Tagsin. Speaking of cards that are good with Power Stone Fracture. It's tricky. You always end up with like a few too many playables in this format, and Hall of Tagsin actually is a pretty meaningful effect. I'm just on Boulder Branch here. But I definitely think there are like four playable cards in this pack and wouldn't blame anybody for their choices in any direction. Fade from History, this is a weird one. What is Fade from History's win rate like? It like, yeah, it's not very good. I didn't, like there are so many artifacts in this format and sometimes you will get to wipe someone's board, but it's just, it's hard to play this such that you're not also wiping your own board. And sometimes it just doesn't do that much. I'm surprised its win rate is as low as it is, but it is quite low. I think this is just Foundry Inspector, which is just a perfectly serviceable creature with a lot of upside. Interested in that one over... Power Plant Worker is also okay. I've seen a surprising number of like good decks that just play this without any synergies at all. Because it is just beefy and you can cast off Power Stones, but Foundry Inspector is just a great card. Monastery Swift Sphere is like sort of close. It's like a very cheap card that works well with fight spells. Actually, that might have been Swift Spear. I don't know, chat. What do you think? Was that Swift Spear? Spec on Cruelty. 
is cruelty. I have no idea what cruelty is. That does not seem to be the name of a card in the set. Anyway, this is our Ballista Engineers. Scrapwork Mutt. Perfect. Close me a Mutt. Gift. Gix's Cruelty. Oh, that one. Oh, you're thinking of Gix's Caress. Yeah, Gix's Caress. Uh, that card that card is barely main deckable, depending on what you're doing in the format. Um, I don't think you want to spec on it. Or like maybe splashing power stone fractures, we may not play black at all. Uh this pack is pretty bad. I could take Alter, we have a Revenant. Maybe we end up setting up an engine. It's like very unlikely, but it's also very unlikely we're doing this other stuff. We could take sibling rivalry. We have double power stone fracture. I should take sibling rivalry just in case we end up being in a position to splash them. You're definitely having some trouble just picking up playable creatures. Really gonna want to look out for that in pack three. Like stuff like Boulder Ranch Golem has to come over pretty much anything. Um Yep, yeah, Rivalry in its proper shell is great. This is not really its proper shell, but we might end up doing it. I think this is just Springleaf Drum. Yes, using any of the rest of the stuff. Uh 17 lands.com, VP Modia. Permanent Patrol, yes, love me a 3 mana 3 3. And thanks for the link, Carl Samir. Okay, is this Scrapsmith or Energy Refractor? Scrapsmith is. We have a decent number of hits for this. We, have... we actually have enough hits for Scrapsmith to be fine. Take this. Actually, a Refractor helps us with the Power Stone Refractors a lot, though. Oh, I think it's supposed to be Refractor. Uh, I think it's okay sometimes, but this is a deck where it's just barely okay. I don't think we want another giant growth. I think I just take Power Plant Worker. It looks a little weird. This card is not good, and I'm hoping I don't have to play it, but we have a bunch of Power Stone Makers, and maybe we end up being just that desperate. Okay, just take a two-drop. Not a good two-drop, but it's a two-drop. Okay, so anything we're looking for is just to solidify our creature base. National Odd Flesh Merchant's real good, but I don't think we're in the... Uh, Turkish developer, I don't think so. Unless you're almost monogreen. If you're almost monogreen, then I could see it. I've, I've had decks where I've considered playing it before, but... Format has quite a bit of removal and quite a lot of random token chump blockers. Yeah, I agree that black is looking more open than red. Yeah, maybe we could switch to being more in black. I could see I could see grabbing Flesh Merchant or Remorse. Or maybe just Harvester. I think it's probably just Harvester. Yeah, it's really close though. I could definitely I don't know what Flesh Merchant's wins are like. It hasn't seemed like overwhelmingly great. It's clearly good, but Or Mechanist, not Merchant. Mechanist. Yeah. That was probably supposed to be Ashnod there. Huh. Alloy Animist isn't great, but this could be a good Alloy Animist deck. I think this looks like a good Alloy Animist deck. Spirit Guard. We're definitely not Blast Running. I think we're Scrap Smithing. It's like this versus Burrowing Razor Maw, and this card just has so much more upside. Yeah, Giraffe, that's a good way of putting it. Okay. Granial Behemoth always looks like fun, but we don't have very much self-mill, and the card just is not as good as it looks. Battery Bearer is fun, but we're not in those colors. I'm just going to take Scrapwork Mud again. Scrap feels like kind of a pile. I'm not, like, incredibly excited by the cards that I'm playing, but... I mean, this one's good. Okay, time to grab a Rust Goliath. I think it's time to grab a Rust Goliath. Assembly Worker can fetch Power Plant Worker, but I'm trying not to play this anyway, which means I definitely don't want to be playing this just so I, you know, can get this. It's Rush Goliath. Boulder Branch Golem. Anything that beats Boulder Branch Golem here. 
No, Gaia's Courser, I've really not seen this card do much of anything. It's like definitely fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but I think Old Ranch Golem just doing something immediately makes it worthwhile. Yeah, Courser's, Courser's numbers look a lot worse than Boulder Branch. Okay, Perimeter Patrol looking pretty good. Like a card we might play, we might not at this point. We've we've shored up the creatures quite a bit. Our Guyvian Adventure is interesting. Yeah, Clarim, that's a uh, that's certainly one of the things. Avenger is not great. I think I'm just on Perimeter Patrol. Another Goliath? Sweet, Goliath online. And this looks like Refractor to me, just... I don't think we want a third Power Stone Fracture. I don't think we want a third Power Stone Fracture, although maybe we're supposed to take it. Like, we can't really be sacking our Power Stones willy-nilly if I'm trying to, like, play all this stuff, because there's a real benefit to keeping mana around. Looks like blue is very open. Congratulations to blue drafters. Ooh, found a piece of candy. Love second stalwart for this deck. Okay, this one up being like pretty pretty reasonable. It'll be an interesting build, like, Trapwork Mud is definitely not at its best in the Boulder Branch Golem Rust Goliath deck. Oh, uh, do I wish I'd taken Hall of Tagson over... I'm trying to remember what I took over Hall of Tagson. I think I took Boulder Branch? Yeah, I I think... I think I would rather have Hall of Tagson than a third Boulder Branch, but I still think it was correct not knowing that it was going to pick up two more Boulder Branches to take my first Boulder Branch there. Uh, no, I th my, my impression is that Hall is quite a playable land. Alright, so this has way too many playables, so I'm going to do the thing I typically do, for those of you who haven't seen it. Something I recommend a lot is to just, like, think about building your draft decks like sealed decks. I sometimes see people with, like, 50 cards in their draft deck, and they'll try to, like, pick out which 10 cuts they want. I think it's much more important if you have a giant draft pool that you first think to yourself, what are the cards I know for sure I'm going to play? What are the best cards in my pool? And then what cards complement those? It's just like a much easier way to build a deck that makes sense at the end. But I love all of these. I love these. Super down for all of the Chalky Boys. Super down for Arbalest Engineers. Super down for Bushwhack. Super down for Maze Mind Tome, Foundry Inspector. And not in for these guys. So... Six more cards to put in the deck if we look we at the cards we're really happy with. Aaron Gertler tonight, Chet. That's the goal. Hey, Turkles, thanks for the follow. So, what do we got going on here? So, a thing I'm immediately noticing is that my curve is pretty high. We don't have a lot of cheaper cards. Um, oh, Epic we Confrontation I should be playing Aaron as well, I guess. Tonight, Chet. That's the goal. So, Ashland's Harvester, also, we're going to play that. We got this awkwardness, right? I think there's a decent argument just to be pure red-green here. I could play the Fractures. But if I'm playing Fractures, then I probably have to play the Energy Reflect Refractors as well. And that's kind of taken up, like, my whole deck here, more or less. And the question is, how much better is this package than just playing a bunch of, like, real cards? The Refractors are still decent, because I do need something to tap with the Stalwarts. But I don't necessarily need to play both of them. And with no Evolving Wilds... I don't know. I'm pretty down to, like, try... Like, if I weren't playing these, what I could do is I could play Shoot Down. I could play some Perimeter Patrols. I could play, like, Gaia's Gift and Giant Growth or something like that. Or Atomical Honor Guard. I just think I don't want to be spending turn two just around with that. We also need removal less when you have like a bunch of large creatures that can actually stop creatures, opposing creatures. 
So we could instead go with something like, all right, shoot down, perimeter patrol. I think one Tomical Honor Guard over perimeter patrol. It's a little tough because we have multiple fight spells, and this is worse with fight spells, but having two drops is very good. Gaia's Gift is all what you should always play. I don't think there's ever any reason to cut a copy of Gaia's Gift from your green decks unless the circumstances are quite exceptional. We could consider trimming a Rust Goliath, but I think with Arbalest Engineers ramping into it, I'm like pretty okay with Rust Goliath. But let's see. So this is also looking like a 16 land deck, probably. We've got a lot of mana sources just kind of sitting around. Is this a Springleaf Drum deck? Creature count's not super high. We've got six creatures that cost two or less, which is like what you want to look at with Springleaf Drum, because it lets you go drum into creature into four mana. Yeah, I don't think we're Springleafing. I got the double stalwart, which kind of accomplishes the same thing. So alternates for options for last card would be like Alloy Animist, Giant Growth, Perimeter Patrol. Those are the three that stand out because I don't really want to take an expensive card. Uh, Turkish Developer, I've probably run draft decks with like seven before. It depends on the format, and it depends on... I mean, the ultimate format for asking that question is Strixhaven, because Strixhaven was a format that was all the about spells. That's the goal. It was super common to run less than 10 creatures in your Strixhaven draft decks, if you're in specific archetypes that work well with that. In this format, I'd probably want more like, you know, 13 or something. One Cody, yes. That was also an option that you had. Also, Gilix, thanks for the follow. All right, so this is one of those cases where the last card doesn't matter that much, and I'm down to just, like, pick something and move on with my life. Let's cut a mountain... And add... Do, 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 do. I think I'm just going to add Perimeter Patrol. Just one more solid creature that can fight and stuff. And play like this. Exactly. So that's, yeah. Still play just a bunch of token makers and stuff. Yeah, glad we just have the perimeter patrols. It's just nice to curve out when people are doing stuff like this. Is there any obvious flash creature that could eat my stalwart on three or less? Just the Zephyr guy, which I don't think about too much. That's fine. So opponents on the back foot. Got the scatter ray there? They got the scatter ray. They have recovered nicely with this double spell turn. Nope. Uh-oh. Hmm, alright, that's good. Kill that one. Or do I? Maybe I just cast Rust Goliath? Eh. What do we think, chat? Goliath or just Bold Iconoclast? If I cast Goliath and they... have anything, it's kind of a disaster. They have like machine over matter, the bolt turns kind of awkward. I think we just make them have well make them have what, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what make them have it is make them have it cast Rust Goliath. I don't think they have Scatter Raid. I think they would have Scatter Raid last turn. How about us just attacking first? Well we lose. I mean, you mean just attack it with all three creatures and casting nothing this turn? That seems very bad to me. That doesn't seem good at all. I don't think I want to let them untap with this and just have this on board. 
I, I hate I hate that plan. I think we go with Goliath here. It's still just mana efficient. If they had the scatter ray, then well done opponent, you tricked me. Yay. Okay, not surprised to see that, but pretty glad they felt compelled to use that on the three drop instead of the five drop. That's going to make my next turn look much better. Ah, oh, yeah, Mistress Juggernaut, you'll love to see it. No problem, friendo. All right, we have. Whoops, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I. Th Back with these guys and make their blocking choices before they know that Iconoclast is going away. Great. Ah. Uh. Yeah, burn the 5-3 was an option as well. I don't know. I think I think the easiest way for me to lose this game in my mind is if my opponent just like keeps Iconoclast on the board and makes like three tokens next turn. Like if they start by playing Chromatic Star, for example. Just Boulder Branch or Visions of Phyrexia. Branch, let's just keep the tempo going. Like the... We don't really need to exile the 5-3 because it's no real threat coming out of the graveyard because it's just... You know, our opponent's extremely on the defensive here. Oh, I should have unearthed a Harvester that turn. That was, that was bad. I think we just attack with Patrol here. If my opponent has like a removal spell and they trade with Stalwart and kill one of my patrols, I guess there are two cards in hand. Yeah, whatever. I have plenty of mountains. I was like a little bit nervous about not being able to cast Visions for Axie next turn, but I think we just put them under. Oh. Alright, I guess that's also an option. Oh, good. They feel compelled to... Yeah, 1-1s one can matter. I don't know. It's... It's close. The one ones also let them do things like, I mean, they can power stone. If they have power stone fracture, they can incur wellspring it, so it doesn't matter that much. Ooh, all right. That's that's good. Well, I'm really glad we got rid of third path iconoclast now. That would have been horrendous. Okay, well we're under the under the gun here. We are a lot of spells we could draw that'd be great here. Could get, I mean. Wow, that's the worst draw on the deck. I mean, we get to kill Teferi, hopefully. If we can just, we're, we're probably going to be okay, I think. I think this was just like, just not quite in time. But, uh, yeah, not. Okay. The, oh, right. This thing just gets counters regardless. Oh, God, that's terrifying. All right, we're going to keep this for Scrapwork Mutt. It's really not doing anything for me. Okay, Thraxodemon's pretty bad. Really need to draw a mountain or okay, Arbalist Engineers is Yeah, that one's reasonable, right? Assuming they have nothing in hand, which it appears they don't. We should just pump the engineers, right? Alright, we pump the engineers, we hit them to one, they're forced to lose Thraxodemon. If I pump like Boulder Branch Golem attack with both creatures, they can trade with Golem and go to one off patrol. Or they just scoop, which seems premature. I don't think I had a lethal line. But Alright. We'll, uh, that was that was close. Uh, glad glad they just scooped that one because that did not feel at all like a one game. But you know, pretty pretty good considering how a few mountains we had for all that game. We're also an hour away from getting to do our second round draft now. Looks good.
Yeah, I think we go Mutt, discard Mutt. We definitely need to hit land drops. Nice. God, he's such a good boy. That's a bad boy. Oh, whatever. Are we attacking here? Yeah, we're pretty... We're pretty... I think on the play, we definitely just make this attack. Wow. Love seeing that block. It's like some angle where we don't attack and just try to play a grindier game with Visions of Phyrexia, but the rest of our hand is so aggressive. Ah, oh, yeah. There's always... It is, it is definitely fun playing a deck that doesn't have to take time off to cast Energy Refractor. Huh. So options here are Engineers make a Power Stone attack for four, and then we have Boulder Branch Golem next turn. Eh, yeah, you might be right at Coral Spear. The thing is, if I miss a land, I can just unearth the Mutt there. And I still get to like take a turn and I haven't lost like a better a better card, but there is there is some consideration for it. I maybe didn't think enough. Alright, anyway, so it's engineers make a power stone or it's just perimeter patrol again. I kinda think I'm just on perimeter patrol again. Like it's more power for if I make a power stone next turn. And if I draw, like, a mountain next turn, we're, like, much less likely to want to make a power stone with this. And this being able to kill something could still be valuable. If our opponent plays, like, a scrapwork cohort, for example, we're going to be incredibly happy that we held the engineers. Honor guard. Okay, so now I think I'm into... The Engineer's Power Stone here. There's also Engineer's as Haster, but the Power Stone adds a point of damage anyway. I do want to guarantee a play for next turn. That is good. That. Ah, oh, Klarm. We can watch that one later. All right. That's pretty good. Pretty darn good. But surely we will eventually grind through all their stuff with my... Uh... Hmm. Do I build a branch here or just Honor Guard? We're two away from Honor Guard? From Golem being large? I think we're just on Honor Guard here. Now we're just going to sit here and try to play a more defensive game. Our offense has been stalled out pretty thoroughly. I don't think so. What am I discarding them at? I mean, I guess I could discard Shoot Down. Maybe I'm supposed to discard Shoot Down and look for a mountain so I can get Visions of Phyrexian to play sooner. Discarding the land to Mutt? I don't like that at all. I've got Boulder Branch Golem. Wow, all right. Opponent just set up kind of a monster board and I can't shoot down any of the stuff on their board? That's bad. I mean, I want lands. Of course, this, this turn means we're probably dying regardless. It's kind of horrific. All right, maybe if I can draw... Maybe if I can draw a, another Engineers to take out the Dissident, we might be okay. But uh, this is a hor horrifically scary set of things. Yeah, we are just bad at drawing mountains today. I think we're going to lose the game in a couple turns here. At this rate. Definitely at a stark disadvantage against the good engine decks. That one's fine. Okay. A little flooded right now. Would really, really, really love to draw a mountain, though. 
Uh, do I mutt to discard the forest just try and hit a mountain, or do I just play the forest and chill? I think I mutt. I think we're going to draw plenty of lands this game. I guess I could just start shoot down also, because like they have absolutely nothing. They're probably not going to play a big flyer. Huh. All right, chat. What do we think? Shoot down or the forest? One for forest. One for shoot down. Two for shoot down. Two for forest. All right. We've at least at least it's a hard decision. I'm glad that I'm not pondering something that's very obvious. Okay. I think it's shoot down. God damn, give me some mountains. Alright, maybe we're supposed to go eight and eight with this deck. I'm on like seven nine. Feels bad. I maybe should have attacked just to see if they would risk the steel seeker, because there's a good chance they don't. I should have attacked, it was free. All right, well, we were stalling. Now I get to cast Big Boulder, Big Boulderino. Hmm. I think I'm attacking with Honor Guard. I should have been attacking with Honor Guard this whole time. Like, I'm perfectly happy to trade it off for any of their creatures, including that one. I guess it didn't really matter what my timing was on that. All right, I've got... Six mountains in the deck. Uh, I picked an evolving wilds. It's it is worth noting that I don't think I have any double greed cards. I guess I have the uh I have the type the Goliaths and I have two of them. Yeah, I'm just I mean if my opponent can't if my opponent's just like playing a bunch of small ball stuff and they don't put a million artifacts into play. We may just be able to beat them with Rust Goliaths eventually. Okay, sure. Okay. Damn it! <laughs> Alright. Well, maybe I should have seen that coming, but Two Hero of the Dunes is a lot to see coming. All right, I'm I'm kind of off it, frankly. Knowing that they have a spell on top, I'm just I'm just done with this. We're not even necessarily dead, but the the seventh forest of the game was was a lot of forests. We had they had more Hero of the Dunes than we had mountains. Yeah, we are on seven nine, which still seems correct to me. Like I'm not gonna struggle like that every game. Ugh. That's alright. I'll get the bad games out of the way here. And we drew Maze Mind Tome, which is the card we really needed that game. Nah, pretty sure you want seven. You do want to mount in every game. You want to be able to cast Arbalist Engineers consistently on turn three. And the best or second best card in the deck is double red. Reasonable thing to speculate on. Harvester over Tome Scry for land. We say I want lands, but we can Tome Scry for them later. It was close just because they have the Revenant, so Harvester is not like a meaningful attacker at the moment, but it is a meaningful blocker. Now I'm pretty sure we're Tome Scrying for land. If I hit land pretty soon, we are going to be in trouble. And our hand is full of large cards that can overcome the loss of cards if we aren't drawing with Tome. Oh, please don't kill my Maze Mind Tome. 
We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. All right, that's, that's acceptable. Good Mermations, thanks for the follow. All right, nope. Okay, I get to cast Honor Guard this turn if I whiff on Tome. Does that mean I draw? Or do I still scry? We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. I think we still scry. I think it's a little bit too bad to whip. Yep. All right, land. There we go. There we go. Hard. All right. Um, Honor Guard versus Inspector is interesting. I th it's Inspector. It's like I'm going to trade whatever I cast for Gixian Infiltrator this turn anyway, more likely than not, but I can double spell. I can go like Honor Guard into Maze Mind Tome next turn, for example. All right, we can sit in the Stalward and Maze Mind Tome, which is fine. Drawing now. Uh, I don't think so, Curl Smear. I think I think we're just casting Boulder Branch for as a four drop, and I don't think having a discount on it matters that much. I don't know. I could try and like sequence out all the various ways this could have gone. Anyway, really hoping this is just the kind of game where is there like a good instant speed sack effect that I have to be aware of here? I think so. Hey Kamal, thanks. Uh Um, it's at noon, Pacific, so we're just a, just uh, the second draft, and I guess day two. I assume what's being referred to. All right, they use Power Stone Fracture. They appear to have been successfully slowed. Worth knowing that if I kill Stone Seeker, the sacrifice effect does take place, so the uh, Gixie Infiltrator goes. Infl interesting. Uh, our last card first, see what happens. Life gain's beautiful, the Perimeter Patrol is also beautiful. All right, nice and stable. Hopefully they don't have too many sibling rivalries. Oh, all right, glad I saved my epic confrontation. That card is frightening. <laughs> I actually just noticed it too. That is cute. Um, early Stone Seeker gets flying, right? I'm glad they already used an emergency weld, so I don't, hopefully don't have to kill this thing too many times. We have a lot of ways to kill it. Okay, so I could fight the Stone Seeker with Bushwhack. I don't think it's that important to a good life total. This thing is gonna stop being able to get through our board at some point. I'd much rather save Bushwhack for something like a Thraxodemon. And even with Boulder Branch Golem being a big get, being 7 drop, I think we still mud away a land here. Play Revenants are very annoying. Not really a meaningful way for me to get past those. I think we just kind of just chill for a while. We got a bushwhack for a Thraxodemon. We've got another Rusk Goliath in the deck. My plan is just to kind of sit here and eventually cast enough 6-5s and 10-10s ten to beat them. Although we are behind on milling, which is, I guess, something. Problem is, we're in a lot of trouble if they just play an altar. Okay, acceptable.
see them use the removal spell on a 3-5 instead of a 10-10 later. More mutts. Uh, Is it possible the best play here is just to do nothing? I kind of think best play here is just to do nothing. It's going to be a long, grindy game. I want to save these mutts to get rid of excess lands. I don't want to bushwhack any of their stuff. Cool. All right. Opponents in the same boat. I think now I mud away the stalwart. Ooh, bushwhack for land seven. You are actually sick. I'm not gonna, not gonna sit here and listen to that sort of thing. All right, now we've got land number seven. All right, Thraxodemon. Real, real, real glad we saved bushwhack. Oh, and an obliterating bolt. That's nice if they get back Steel Seraph. I literally think I'm supposed to bushwhack Thraxodemon over casting Boulder Ranch Goal on this turn. That might look insane, but. This thing getting like a single sack trigger is just like a whole free card for them. So Bushwhack basically reads draw a card. Really, really good to have access to that. Could bolt the Infiltrator, don't think we have to. They can grow it again, we at least get to bolt it when it's a 5-4. Alright. Still fine. Every time they draw a spell and it doesn't, like, win the game, I'm pretty happy. Get some attacks this turn, but it's not very significant. Yeah, this is one of those interesting games where so many little micro-decisions. You know, little, little decisions you're making many turns from the end of the game that, like, let your opponent draw one card or not could be huge. Yeah, Kamal's interesting. Can't think of why they wouldn't do that exactly. All right. Real glad we have Obolt now. That's two emergency welds down. Hopefully they don't have too many more. I think I'm just supposed to still be looting Axis lands to scrap work mutt and not trying to save them all for us Goliath. We'll get to 10 lands eventually. Plus this can tilt my opponent by making them think I just drew the obliterating bolt. Wow, we're actually getting rid of real tokens for this? Super excited by that. Now... Right. In seven lands and 22 cards, so hopefully the lands are starting to start cluttering up in their hand at some point. Meanwhile, we've filtered away a couple of my lands. Juggernaut's fine. Is Juggernaut fine? It's not the most fine. Fine adjacent. I can cast Goliath if I have to. Gaia's Gift is great, though. Love that one. Do I just attack with Boulder Branch here? It just, it just bounces off Revenant. I don't think I do. I think we just chill with Gaia's Gift. What I'm really worried about is Sibling Rivalry. That's going to be a card that will be not easy to beat. Okay, so some decision between do I put Gaia's Gift on Tomical Honor Guard, just in case our opponent has removal, or do I just put it on Boulder Branch Goal and not take the Trample Damage? I think we just don't take Trample Damage here. I don't think they have anything.
All right, this is starting to look better and better. It's playing out just as I hoped it would. We filtered all the lands out of the deck. We are slowly grinding through them by having higher average card quality. Very slowly. Although, real shame that the top two-thirds of our deck did not include Visions of Phyrexia. Visions of Phyrexia would have been a pretty nice one. Alright, just unearthing Juggernaut to just attack. Have a sack effect to use with it, that's great. Interesting pause. What was that pause? You got Whirling Strike? I think we're just bringing the beats to them here. Because I would like to kill them as quickly as possible with Goliath before giving them a chance to draw Sibling Rivalry. Nice. All right. Starting to feel the heat. And this soldier being gone makes easier attack with maybe the three ones later. I wonder how many times people have cast Goliath in this format with literally zero power stones. I'm sure a lot of times it's a common, but it still feels like we accomplished a little bit of something something. Also, Icon UK, if you're here, I think I missed your follow earlier. Sorry about that, but thank you for following. Belatedly. Boom. Okay. Not dead to sibling rivalry. And opponent finally, finally stalled out. Really, really glad we saved Bushwhack for Thraxodemon. Would have been a very difficult game, I think, if they had gotten to keep Thraxodemon alive. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Hey, Aminidon, Amidian, thanks for the follow. Playing with this one. This deck is a little, is a little boring. It's possible that if I like win a couple more games with it, I might just scoop and do one more practice draft before we hit the real drafts. Uh, I guess so. I did, Senor Gaja. That's what we're waiting for. I tried to adjust the stream title to make that clear, but I don't know. It's a long qualifier for day two draft two. I guess it's close enough. All right, so we're just going to discard Honor Guard here because it's worse than all the cards in my hand. If I get Forest, I can play anyway. Oh, no. Oh, no. Maybe seven mountains was too many mountains. Those will work. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, not this. Anything but this. All right. If I draw Visions of Phyrexian External, is forgiven, though. I just want to cast Visions of Phyrexia at some point. <laughs> my opponents always have Takeshi's Welcome on turn 3, so I don't know why I don't get to have Visions of Phyrexia in my opening hand every time. Yeah. Alright, I would accept a Molten whatever. Alright, that works. Um. Alright, should I attack with Scrapwork Mutt because then I can use Arbalist Engineers to kill Coastal Bulwark? I don't think that's correct. I think I just want to Bushwhack Urza. Implies I should just cast this as a 3 3. And which implies I should just cast Perimeter Patrol this turn, in fact. There we go. I made my way around to the right play eventually. Or is it not actually that scary? Card's win rate is very low, and I kind of see why. But to the extent that it implies a rampant, a very large thing strategy, I don't love it because I don't do well against large things. Urza is just kind of a looter, and it's just kind of a mildly expensive looter. Because you really don't want to be discarding spells to put power stones into play very often, is my impression. 
Like, it's great for unclogging your hand if you have a bunch of expensive stuff and not enough lands, but... Yeah, that's that's just random randomness happening. All right, well, they got rid of Swiftfoot Boots, so at least they, I guess, won't have Swiftfoot Boots Platinum Angel. Okay, and we get to nuke a Combat Courier with Arbalist Engineers, which I will do. I'm about to take a card away from my opponent. I think it's just going to be Nuke Courier and Bushwhack Urza. Because we can't really beat big things with Bushwhack, so I might as well cut my opponent's uh, cut off my opponent's ability to like. Huh. I shouldn't play Arbalist Engineers pre-combat. That wasn't great. Help me for that. We might have been able to get like extra damage in or something. Well, they traded the Coastal Bulwark anyway, so I guess that's fine. But it looks to be mono blue, which is an interesting approach. I actually had some success with mono blue in a what was the format where blue wasn't good at all? Not like mono blue, but in the uh in the last Dungeons and Dragons set that came out for drafting, the modified one, I played a lot of decks that were like very heavy blue and found that actually just being very heavy blue was quite eee, eee, no. That's not good. Alright, well we can bolt it. I guess we uh are gonna do that. Good draw. It's not over yet, but the Pristine Talisman's very annoying. Pull the land and discard to Mutt. Yeah, our deck is definitely a little bit lacking on the... Alright, I mean, I love what the opponent's doing. This is very cool. And Coastal Bulwark's an amazing card. Like, Coastal Bulwark is like Sigiled Starfish, but with stats, and that is something really pretty impressive. Need to find something sooner rather than later, so the only the only world where I win this game is one where I draw, like, Visions of Phyrexia quite quickly, I think, or, like, Maze Mind Tome or something. We're going to angle for that. All right, Boulder Branch Golem means we are at least not scooping, so we could cast that next turn. It's bigger than Spotter Thopter. Yeah, presumably has some like flow of ideas type stuff as well in this deck, which is a scary prospect. All right, Foundry Inspector is kind of like land. There it is. All right. Um. I'll be done now. Anyway, Mono Blue and AFR was pretty fun. I want to try Mono Blue in this format sometime too. Do something like what my opponent was doing there. Hard to get into that deck, but, you know, some someday make it happen. All right, maybe play like one more match with this deck, and I think I'm just going to say win or lose, I probably just give up the deck after this. It's just kind of a boring deck to play, and I would like to get some draft practice in. I think it's a fine deck. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But it's, uh, it's not teaching me much. Yeah, I like the HPG format quite a bit. Need to I never even played it post-balance. All right, Drew Maze Mind Tome. Already, already feeling better about these games. We need to Lakshmana and Physicist UY. Way. Thank you both That's for following. Maybe we can get to 6,000 day if we get a big audience for the game for the next draft. Was it 6,000 that I took a long time off from drafting? Or from streaming? Okay, opponent knows to mill themselves with the Nottingham Room. They are already ahead of the game. That's the goal. Jeff MTL, thanks for the follow too. Alright, is this a turn two Maze Mind Tome game? Right. Ooh, extremely dedicated self mill. Ooh, tutored for their Argoth. That's not bad. Yeah, I kind of think it's supposed to be Tome here. 
Not sure there's any real benefit to doing this over playing Harvester, but... Huh! I don't know, Lakshmana seems like a pretty straightforward name to me. Alright, taking some chip, we can hit that thing with a shoot down if we have to. We have life gain off the tome, if need be. If they kill patrol and attack, I think I might scry with tome just to get to life gain a little bit faster. I'll have to think about it. Exactly what they do. Love Arbalist Engineers here. That is a fantastic draw. Attack first. See if we can get this gnawing vermin off the battlefield. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think we're just going to Engineers kill the Locust. Good use of a turn. Yeah, what I said before about our engineers not being that much better than um, opportunist, I was wrong. Engineers is much better than opportunist. I'm sorry, engineers. Deal. That is incredible. Uh, I mean, I guess they had a reason to do it, but I love to see it. Interesting ideas here about who's the beat down. Ow. Okay. Well, I'm gonna pressure you to unearth that one right away if you want to use it. Oh, I should have played this first actually. That was that was dumb. Literally just forgot what perimeter patrol does. Good draw of tome. Right. Draw a land and play it, or I could hold up Gaia's gift. Actually, hold up Gaia's gift. only matters to get the land now if there are like multiple lands on the top three cards in my deck. I'm gonna play a big artifact opponent, big artifact that I can shoot down. Please do that. Please don't play like the 5-5. Five, five. Play the 5-5 five, five today. I guess guys get plus pushback and kill the 5-5. Five, five. Ugh. Ugh. That's very annoying. I just told you not to do that. Here you are doing it. Alright, so we could Guy's Gift to kill the Prowler. That doesn't seem correct at all, though. Guy's Gift to get through the 5-5, five five, even if we end up 2 for running ourselves. Wow. Oh, it does not even care about the possibility of Whirling Strike. Not one little bit. Very interesting. I think we're mutton here. We're gonna need to filter every land we can this game. Against, against Argoth. Going down to 21 cards, which in a game where they're trying to use Argoth a bunch is not nothing. Wow, opponent just keeps two for themselves these fight spells, and I am here for it. Extremely here for it. Well, this is going to be where I discard Mountain and instantly draw Visions to Phyrexia. You ready, chat? Hey, it didn't happen. I feared it would. And I might as well just deck with Harvester. Not really getting anything done by not doing this. Got the Gnarl Root in case they have Emergency Weld or something. I 
I think post combat we're gonna draw with Tome. If we draw a land, I'll play Mutt discarding Stalwart. If I don't draw a land, we can just play Stalwart. seems good but we get to boulder ranch so see if they can actually punch through that with something this other comes tapped thing it is not okay. very careful with that <sighs> hopefully they have at least like one boulder ranch golem or something so i can shoot it down this game we have seen zero artifacts from them that possibly yep yeah, one scrapper crater oh they're milling oh they milled a flyer good news also there's a good chance we're just going to kill them now i guess uh i guess i should start with tome we're gonna do that this turn anyway cool that's good too Happy to trade Mutt for Bear, just because it gives him one less chump blocker for Golem or one less opportunity to like gang block the Golem. Hmm. Maybe he was not supposed to play that mountain actually. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to play the mountain this turn, I think. Oh. Alright, well I'm glad we uh were very aggressive in getting their creatures off the board, because holy crap, that's a good card. Um can we kill them? I think we can kill them with like stalwart stuff. We can bring back Mutt. They're forced to block Boulder Branch Golem with at least one bear. We bring back Mutt and then play Visions of Phyrexia. Actually, we bring back Mutt and we see if they just leave themselves dead to a uh... nice little scrub shoot down, right? No targets at all. Let's just attack with everybody and see if they leave themselves dead to Excavation Explosion, which actually they do guaranteed. Never mind, it's over. Glad they drew the Titanius command really late in the game there. Okay, we should have just enough time to do one practice draft for the real one. So I think we'll just do that. We need to become Aaron. Hey Wompy, thanks for the follow. That's the goal. Alright, so. As I said before, like we could keep playing with this deck, we'll really get another winner too, but I just am not excited about it at all. Eh. I just want to do rank drafting all the time. I want to hit Mythic Top 250 this this month, because I've already drafted a bunch, so I just want to dedicate all the time I can spend to doing ranked games. Boy, I hope you get gems in the arena opening if you miss the money. More gems. I want to at least break even on gems this weekend. Oh goody. Alright, so I want to keep an eye out for maybe looking at blue cards a little harder this draft. I don't really know how to play blue. Ideally, I don't have to play blue too much, but I want to keep an eye out for it. And, alright, well it's not happening this time. Okay, Fauna Shaman. How good is Fauna Shaman? It seems very very good in this format with so much unearth and clay revenant being a combo seventeen minutes go how does seventeen minutes tab there you go. what is fauna shaman what are fauna shaman's numbers fauna shaman's numbers are fine it's weirdly makes your deck worse when you draw it which is not ideal uh so other options we've got I don't really want to first pick our blessed engineers I could see Golem over Shaman. Uh, this is not the second draft yet. That one doesn't start till for 24 minutes. Or Disfigure. Huh. 
I just take disfigure. It's like so hard for disfigure to ever be bad. I don't know. Oh, Shaman is sweet though. Oh. Didn't see any. Ooh, I have not. I've literally not seen this card in a pack yet. I mean, very impactful. That's on board. What else is in the pack? Yoshin Dissident, Energy Refractor, Rapper Greater Epic Confrontation. Games in hand win rate is, is my favorite number to look at in a generic sense. Okay. Uh, yeah, Yoshi and Dissident was very good in that last in the draft deck I had before the last one. Is it really Dissident over Epic Confrontation? Though, like, Fauna Shaman makes me want to lean a little bit toward playing black because it's so insane with Clay Revenant. On the other hand, Fauna Shaman, a deck with Yoshi and Dissident, lets you set up, like, sweet combos. I mean, I'm gonna take Dissident and just try to get some practice drafting the green-white deck. I know if it were a real draft, I would take out Epic Confrontation. Oh, let's try Dissident. Huh, all right. Now, are you supposed to go like Psycho Mode Kayla's Reconstruction in this deck? I can't imagine you are. Kayla's Reconstruction seems really awful. All right, now if we had taken the Epic Confrontation, I could consider Junkyard Genius. As it is, we're just going to take Sprite. Oh man, we could have had Thraxo Demon also. But imagine if you never have to cast the Revenant, you can just keep bringing it back and discarding it. We'll take Sprite here. Good morning, Fluffy Face. I don't think it's Genius Hard Pivot. I think third pick Junkyard Genius is not necessarily like a crazy sign. Um. On the other hand, there sure are a lot of red and black cards in this pack. Do I get to take Loran's Escape? Or should I just take Thraxodium? I might just take Thraxodium in here. Stay open. Strongbull. I don't think it's Strongbull. I don't know. I've been I've been slightly underwhelmed by Strongbull recently. Like, it's still obviously good. But I feel like it's gotten a little bit harder to have like a super high density of like nothing artifacts that you can just sack. Stronghold over demon. And then like is Stronghold even that good in green red specifically? I guess it's fine. Let's take Lauren's Escape and just stay in, stay in like the kind of white direction, see how that feels. Alright, this is more like it. We have a pack with a lot of cards we want. A lot of Strongbulls around, but this has got to be Power Stone Engineer, right? Over no, it's Power Stone Engineer or Disenchant. Yeah, it's definitely a good card. I don't know. I had a I had a deck that went two and three the other day with six copies of the Sacrifice Goblin and four copies of Strongbull. Obviously Strongbull gets a little worse in multiples, but I was still just like, huh, I'm just sitting here and I can like use Strongbull's ability a couple times, but it's not like getting close to winning me the game. Alright, someone says disenchant over engineer. I guess I can believe it. We already have a bunch of two drops. Let's take the interaction first. Engineer is also like sometimes wheel. Now is it engineer or drum? I think it's drum. The drum's numbers like obviously they're not gonna be like yeah. drum is as good as the cards in your deck kind of, but yeah, drum's numbers are pretty bad actually. This is a random draft. I'm, I'm deliberately trying to test out drafting a deck I haven't drafted as much of as opposed to an archetype I've drafted more. Grab Engineer. Uh, research Desk or Sprite? Uh, without red necessarily being in the deck, I'm pretty sure it's Sprite. Desk is really good in the Distant deck, but Sprite's also just a great creature. I think there are a bunch of two drops I would take Desk over, but not that one. Uh, okay. Liquid Metal Coating plus Distant Chance is kind of funny. Liquid Metal Coating plus Argothian Sprite's also kind of funny. Like, I'm like 99.8% not to play this, but am I really better than that to play Thanos' Tinkering? Hey, Mirror's Cow Slayer. Uh, I, the way I got this shirt was that I emailed Givewell asking for one after I won DreamHack and shouted them out in my DreamHack interview. So at that point, they were very happy to send me a shirt. Uh... Probably if you just like donated some money and just asked, they would give you one too. I don't know how many they have left. 
But yeah, GiveWell is wonderful. It's been an incredibly influential force in my life. All right, Energy Refractor or Evolving Wilds? What are we on here, chat? I'm thinking E-Wilds. I don't think we need the filler artifacts that much. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna take Wilds. I just feel like we're gonna end up with 30 playables like we always do. Wow, all right. Okay, Thraxodemon, okay. Uh, I don't actually think we're playing black. I think even if we do play black, I'm probably not playing Gixian Infiltrator. I guess, I guess in a world where we do play black, I'm gonna need all the black playables I can. So maybe I do take Infiltrator over Supply Drop. Supply Drop seems like pretty good in this exact deck. All right, uh, reads are wrong. Yeah, Fauna Shaman does seem like much more of a green black card than anything else. One thing that's nice about, well, I guess Evolving Wilds and Refractor both help with splashing, so it's kind of a moot point. I was going to say, in general, splashing, once you have a Fauna Shaman, is a little better because Fauna Shaman gives you more chances to find whatever bomb creature you, you hit. Speaking of bomb creatures. Huh. Heavy Computer, when you say you're a trust, are you like a... You're also you're welcome not to answer this personal question in chat. I'm curious if you're a person who has like a personal trust like it's associated with your family or something or whether it's like you work for a you work for a trust the way that i kind of do yeah i'm kind of sad we didn't try to pick up takasia and make that work but this is probably the higher win rate play what are, what are takasia's numbers by the way urza lord protector combat thresher hmm huh gage numbers are quite good and you can cast her i guess Anyway, uh, what do we think, chat? Combat Thresher or Obstinate Bayloth? What's the move? I'm I'm pretty into Thresher. Partly because I feel like if we take Thresher, there's a better chance we wheel one of the green cards. Of course, I think somebody will definitely take Thresher if we don't. Thresher for draw. That is that is what Thresher does. It says it right on the card. Yeah, this is also like a slightly nicer Fauna Shaman target if I just need to find something huge late. Cool, having a computer. I guess uh, congratulations on being the one who's responsible enough to end up with, with that responsibility. Huh, a lot of interesting strong packs here. So, um, yeah, it's just Mask. Terran Spider a little tempting in the Ocean Dissident deck, or not really Ocean Dissident deck, and also Mask is amazing anyway. We're not, we're not black, I don't think. All right, second is, Jesus. All right, well, red, black was insanely open. Note that, like, people in the draft queues have, have not really figured out the red, black thing yet, but I will take Disenchant here. It's fine. This deck is perfectly fine. Sprite over Talisman. Just going to keep taking Sprites. I like Sprite. Yeah, I don't know. The Ocean Dissident's, like... Maybe not doing a lot in our deck. I think this is giant growth. I think we're just like green-white aggro and the ocean distance kind of like a random card we're playing as opposed to something we're trying to work around. I just, I already have five, six two drops. I don't think we need Blanchwood particularly. Make sure we have enough combat tricks to punch through everybody. Yeah, it's like, if it's open, it's very open because so many of the cards don't fit well in other decks. Ooh, all right, well. I think it's Prospector. Obviously, Argothian Sprite the fourth is a great card, but you already have three of them. In multiples, they're not as exciting. And Desert Prospector seems like an amazing card to have one copy of for Fauna Shaman purposes, or just, you know, you draw it, you get a million Power Stones, you put a million counters on your, fauna, on your sprites. It's all good. Okay, I don't think this deck wants to play Takeja's Dig site. I don't think we're two colors. I think it's just Soul Guide Lantern, especially if we think about, you know, drafting as though we're best of three. Lantern's also perfectly playable, just in the main, in the main deck. I don't know that we're going to play it, but it definitely deserves to at least sit out here and, and be a card we think about. 
I've been, I've been, I've been whelmed by it. Uh, Pala Curling. I mean, if you're in a draft like this one, it's black-red. I think there are enough good color combinations that you should just be taking what's open, but black-red is, I think, the early front runner. I don't have anything particularly Aaron notable Gunn to United. say on that it's front. The yeah, I think you, think you always, or almost always play Lantern sounds right. Uh, Survivor of Corliss. It's kind of fun with Fauna Shaman, but it's terrible also. Like Scrapwork Rager, just in case. Maybe I'm supposed to have a Tinkering in this deck. Yeah, I found Golgari to be good. Green Red's been fine. Uh, what was the blue enchantment? Was it like the was it just the Weldstone or Weak Stones, whatever? All right, do I take five sprites or is this like a Scrapwork Mutt? I just take five sprites, so I just always have one in the late game. Yeah, we have one Lorenz Escape. We can. Pick up another one I'd be. I'd definitely play two in this deck for Siege Veteran protection purposes. Hmm. Yeah, I think with... I'm hopefully not going to have to play too many Razor Maws, but... Um, we can pick up some, like, reanimation type spells. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. I get it. I get it. Black was open. I need to, I need to rub it in. Flutter Dev, thanks for the follow. We need to become Aaron oh the Gun blue oh flight of whatever. I don't think so. We are we are not a deck that has the easiest time splashing. We have nothing to enable that besides one evolving wilds. But I think it's better just to stay on target. Although, if there was actually nothing in the pack for us, it was fine to take it. All right. Uh, so I think this comes down to Ambush Paratrooper versus Giant Growth? Or maybe Perimeter Patrol? We really don't have a three slot, but we don't really need a three slot. I think I think I take my first Paratrooper here. It seems it's a good Fauna Shaman target. I think it's less replaceable than Giant Growth. Well, I know it's less replaceable than Giant Growth. Huh. Blast Zone, Stalwart, Evolving Wilds, Power Stone Engineer. Uh, it's not Power Stone Engineer. Blast Zone's a little interesting. They're like pretty solidly two colors. This card has been impressive when I've seen it. And we have a very focused, like, almost all of our cards cost two mana, which means that, like, using Blast Zone on three could be quite good. The more concentrated your deck is, the better Blast Zone is. The less likely is you're killing your own stuff with your opponents. What's our playable count right now? We're at 22 playables. I spec on Blast Zone here. I don't think we really want Satanial Stalwart. Ooh, Black Blade Reform. But I think this is recommissioned just because we have Siege Veteran. Hmm. Ah, this card is a lot of fun, but we unfortunately, I don't, I think it's a little bit too mana intensive. Like, with the mana that we spend equipping this, we could just be pumping up our Grothian sprites, and we're not having to play a whole card to do it, and we're not risking a blowout. Obviously, this is a lot more power than our Grothian sprite manages, but I don't think we have the mana. There's also Airlift Chaplain versus Recommission. Well, maybe it's just Airlift Chaplain. I think it's close. Broadly supposed to be Chaplain. Uh, I think there are just a lot of good ways to block one Toughness Creatures XQC. I don't really think you want Survivor of Corliss too often. Uh, Draft 2 Hap starts in 9 minutes, so we're pretty much going to jump right in. Alright, so we got Crusher, Confrontation, Second Paratrooper, Staff of Domination. Unfortunately, this is not a Staff of Domination deck, even though Staff is very fun. A little surprised it made it this long, but it is hard to use unless you have a million Power Stones. I like Epic Confrontation. I think I agree that just having more interaction seems good. Ooh, Mass Production. Uh, but this has to just be Scrapwork Cohort, right? This is just a perfect Scrapwork Cohort deck. But I would just take this pack and call it a day. 
Oh, it's great. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Hey, 3C Open and Bob Bobbin. You both for following since the last time I looked. Third disenchant or an astronaut's harvester I'm not gonna be able to unearth. Uh yeah, literally no way to unearth this. I guess I could end up with a stalwart later. I think I'm just on third disenchant for the board at this point. Harvester's not good if you can't unearth it, I don't think. 3-1 just trades down with too much stuff. Uh, now I think it's Goliath. Don't know if we main deck it, but it's definitely a sideboardable card. Ooh, second Prospector. Love second Prospector, actually, now that we have uh, an Ambush Paratrooper as well. Perimeter Patrol. Fill out the curve a little bit. And Power Stone Engineer, great. Alright. Alright, so we end up being kind of Power Stone themed. I know I wish I had the second Ambush Paratrooper, although I'm... Eh. I think I'm still happy having taken Epic Confrontation over it. This deck looks really fun. <sighs> and yet, probably not going to play it before we jump into the, the real draft here. Ugh. Just prepare by looking at 7 win decks and 17 lands queues for a bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. Happy enough that I didn't go in the black direction, although I think the black version of this deck could have been sweet too. I wonder if we get to hardcast Rust Goliath at all this draft. Hmm. Not sure if that's supposed to be Discipline or Firebomb for the sideboard. Both have their place in different matchups. Probably Firebomb, actually. Probably Firebomb. <sighs> Certain types of permits we can't really remove at all. All right. Um, well, if I had to build this deck, let's see. Just cut Burring Razor Maw. We cut. A land. And on 16 lands, I think I just have to cut Blast Zone. Interesting question, Bike Dog. Yeah, probably the Trad Draft decks are a little bit better to look at. And represent the metagame a little bit better. Yeah, Supply Drop's not very good. That's like a pretty easy one. Four more cuts. What time is Draft 2? Five minutes. Five minutes from now. We obviously don't have to join exactly at 12, but... Will be available starting in five minutes. Probably one of the big guys leaves. Our curve is really low. Of the big guys, it's probably still just Rust Goliath. I think if we if we resolve a Great Desert Prospector and make like four Power Stones, it's probably a game we can find some way to win with our five Argothian sprites, and we don't need Rust Goliath for it. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern is a potential cut. Oh, we get to cut a land. This is a 16 land deck for sure, which leaves us with two more cuts, which I think, so possibilities are like, maybe one of the five sprites. Maybe we just don't need five sprites. Yeah, Chaplin being able to get Reach is nice. We have, or Fauna-Shan being able to get Reach is nice. We have Chaplin, we have Paratrooper, we have other flying creatures we can grab, although they're smaller. But I think, you know, I'm either gonna cut the, um, the Goliath or the Golem there, I think being able to get life gain and being able to get a cheaper creature matters a little more. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Chad. Anyway, that's the goal. Kind of, so options we could be cut fifth or, fifth sprite, cut perimeter patrol. We need to become Aaron Gertler Growler. tonight, Chad. That's the goal. Ooh, more follows. Thank you, Hayes Schweppes and Onaskau. All right, people are loving the sprites. We can keep the sprites. Okay. Keeping the sprites, I definitely want to we keep all the Power Stone Engineers. DGen Gaming, next thanks for the follow. Goal. All right, next draft starts imminently. Hmm. All right, I can make this decision. I don't think I want to cut Power Stone Engineer. I think our deck is has a lot of mana we sinks. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Chad. That's the goal. Um, I don't think Prowler is, like, annoying. Like, you mill, if you mill a good card, whatever, you also have an equal chance of drawing closer to that card. 
I'm just not sure that like become one one get a land is like a card I'm that interested in. I mean, we do like critical mass of just stuff with great diver prospectors. But yeah, I think G would, I, I'm kind of on green white dinosaurs' side of this, where I don't think we need five sprites. I think that like the rest of our two drops are all adding a little bit more to what we've got. I might just cut lantern too. Lantern's fine, but like I kind of just want to be casting cards that affect the board. And I think Lantern's better in defensive decks where you're worried about your opponent um, hitting you with unearth creatures. And this deck is not defensive at all. We need to become Aaron Gertz. All right, so that's, that's what that's we would play. And now we have a few minutes until the next draft starts. So let's go ahead and spend a bit of time looking at good draft decks on 17 lands. So this is this is what I was doing this morning before I played my initial draft. Uh, Grim with Dinosaurs, that's a good call. Um, I probably do. My deck is like 500 two drops. So I think I probably cut the land anyway, but it's, uh, it's maybe a harder choice. Um, someone wants us to look at a thing. Congratulations, those are indeed three trophies. Well done. Red looks good. All right, anyway. So let's just look at recent trophy decks. Recent trophy decks in Bro Trad Draft. Let's just see. I'm especially looking for decks in color combinations that I haven't played much of. So I can see what the best decks in those colors look like. So really interested in seeing good blue-black decks, good blue-red decks. I haven't had a blue-red deck yet. Good black-white deck. Let's see what we learn from these. All right. So we're looking especially for cards that, like... We're looking for decks that look weak on the surface, but are maybe good because they won. So this deck has a Siege Veteran. We're playing Quiet as Spike, which is interesting. I haven't seen that one enter the battlefield yet in the format. But they pretty much just look like they are Siege Veteran dot deck. Oh, there's a mono green deck in there. Let's see the mono green deck. I'm curious now. Mono green with a light blue splash. Four take flight. Cool. This looks neat. Play this. Two bushwhacks for removal. And what else we got? Yeah, blue black with triple combat courier. Painful. Qu All right, this card is bad. Don't care if I'm seeing the trophy deck, that card is bad. We're also playing Corrupt with like seven swamps and no Elsewhere Flask. All right, I'm not gonna take any lessons from this deck. Um, all right, this deck is blue-white with Harbin, Ramos Dragon Engine. Pretty good. Digital Valor is one I should watch out for in the aggro decks, especially the aggro decks with a lot of flyers. I should filter by rank. Oh, yeah, that's right. I wasn't filtering by rank before. Yeah, definitely want to filter by rank. Oh, trophy decks. Turn right after. Uh, yeah, filtering by rank. Let's see who is winning in Mythic. All right. Mythic. Oh, this is back to Trad Draft. Whatever. A little bit more inspiration. Lots of creatures. Wow. Double written, double desk with a mountain just to splash flashback on desk. Interesting. Triple Gaia's Gift. Yes, Gaia's Gift is good. Blue black. Okay, what, the, what does the early curve look like in the good blue black decks? Halaji Archaeologist. That's a card I never even like. I don't even think about that card when I see it, but it is a offensive card. Person had Titanium's command. Person had Keening Stone. There's a chance I just take Keening Stone if I see it in these drafts. My Keening Stone deck that I drafted on stream the other day did get seven wins, and Keening Stone was very good. Mishra, double third path, Iconoclast, and trips. All right, well, that wasn't all that educational. Whatever. Time to jump into this next draft. All right, let's go. Waiting for players 22 of 24. Huh. Uh, Slaxic. I don't know. I don't know if I would first pick Harbin. Um, I would take Prison Sentence over Urza, though. Urza is not an aggressive soldier card. 
And it's also just not a very good card most of the time. Like, fine in blue-black, but it's it's easily prison sentence for an aggressive soldier deck. All right, what do we have here? A first pack with, uh, well, no bombs. The best card here is Scrapwork Cohort. Yeah. I think I'm just on Scrapwork Cohort over anything else. Older Branch and Sprite are fine, but I think they're a bit worse. They're, they're in a slightly better color than Cohort, but they're both a bit worse as cards. Uh, definitely Cohort over here. I don't want to open on a, on a two-color card here. And yeah, Cohort will make my deck pretty... Like, it's literally I, I, hard to imagine a deck in this format that Scrapwork Cohort would not go in. I am not taking Cliff Stomper. We are not going to try and force Mono Red. Going to take a 60% win rate common here. Okay, I see Giant Cinder Maw. I see Third Path Iconoclast. A little interesting. Giant Cinder Maw is also very good, though. I think its win rate is pretty close to that of Iconoclast. It goes better with our first pick. Yep, Cinder Maw's win rate's actually better than that of Iconoclast. I think I'm just on Cinder. Iconoclast is excellent and gives direction, but I'm not sure how much I need that direction. Yeah, Cinder Maw has just been incredible every time I've cast or seen a cast. Yeah, I see where you're coming from, Mirror Broker, but it's also notable that I have not drafted the blue-red deck at all. And this is not the time to, like, try and do something super new. Okay. Well, now we're seeing a bunch of... All right, I'm seeing Overwhelming Remorse is the best card in the pack, so I think I'm just going to take Overwhelming Remorse. There's nothing here that's, like, good enough to take me off of that. Just stay open. See where the colors are taking you. Drafting the hard way. Okay, cards that stand out. Emergency Weld, Ix's Crest, Power Stone Engineer, Last Runner, Cave Guard. Yeah, I think Weld is my favorite of the cards in this pack. Um, so, yep, it's a good format. You know, when people are arguing over the picks this much, it's a good format. I'm pretty sure it's just Weld. I think Blast Runner's good, but if the Blast Runner deck is open, we're going to see a bunch of them because no one else is going to take them. And Weld is just good in every black deck. It's very good in every black deck. Okay, what do we have here? We've got Phalanx, Vanguard, Whirling Strike, Trench Stalker, Mishra's Juggernaut. Trench Stalker keeps us, keeps us closer to just being in black, but it's not the easiest card to activate when you're in the black, the like, Mardu color combinations. <clears throat> Phalanx Vanguard is a fine two drop. We'd obviously rather be in red than white. I don't think it's Phalanx Vanguard. Jugs or Strike, Mishra's Juggernaut. Yeah, I think I lean Juggernaut over Strike here to start with. Now, Trench Stalker is close. I think I actually take Trench Stalker. Actually, I actually kind of like Trench Stalker there. All right, we got Killzone Acrobat. Looks like the pick over Rock Hunter. All right. Yeah, this is... You can tell that this is like a... A lot of serious drafters in this pod. You're not seeing like a lot of crazy cards coming around late. People are taking the good cards first. So, but given that people are taking the good cards first, I'm happy to be in the deepest color. Yeah, I'm gonna, definitely going to lean in the direction of, you know, being black with as little commitment to other colors as possible, so I can pivot. Hence Stalker over Juggernaut, that helped to inform that pick. Yeah, Pro Tour quality garbage. I mean, the people who make Arena Open Day 2 are, you know, probably about as good at drafting on average as the people who are, you know, drafting at a Pro Tour. I think that's a comparable class. Or people who make the second draft on Day 2 especially. Ooh, I'm just a bundle of nerves here. It's 
it's weird like i don't i'm i'm fine if i just like lose round one it's all right i'm fine with that i'm just happy we had the experience together but my body doesn't know that my body is hella nervous Ooh, just figure which figure all right that's great that's an excellent signal also indicates that a bunch of people got great cards out of that pack uh pallet curling um if, it'd be more about the other cards in the pack than the power level of the card i was taking uh burninator wasn't planning on it i don't think it's worth it i don't need the money i'd much rather have a good experience with viewers especially because you know i'm not a guy who always has 450 people watching Fear Thraxodemon over Skull, Skull Flare, Love Thraxodemon. Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Yep, we are getting to be basically monocolor, which is exciting. All right, so is Carrion best of three drafting? Is it Carrion Locust or Dreams of Steel and Oil? Leaning Dreams, I think. Well, I don't, Burninator. I actually have like a hundred, so. The rare chance. Ancient Hangover, thanks for the follow. I think we'll take Dreams to the sideboard over Locust. And <laughs> Flow of Knowledge. All right, we'll take Third Path Savant. There's definitely an angle where we could end up in blue black. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Cardiac Good, thanks for the follow. Yeah, we got our Dreams crushed by Dreams of Steel yesterday. They took my. My errors of the turn before I was going to meld it. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Jeff. Ooh, Rock Creakings. Cool. All right. What a stream. That follows everyone. Okay. All right. Clay Revenant over Coastal Bulwark. Seems correct. This is definitely looking like a Clay Revenant deck. We need late to become juggernaut. Aaron okay. Gertler tonight, Jeff. I don't Let's think Juggernaut's go. great, but that was still a very late Juggernaut. Ooh, all right. Well, does that cement it for us? I guess that's probably supposed to cement it for us. We have we have not seen a lot of red. Red seems like it's... We haven't seen a lot of red, but we also haven't passed a lot of red. And Visions of Phyrexia is a bomb, and none of this other stuff even necessarily makes my main deck besides Energy Refractor. Aw, thanks, Ref Punk. Glad you did. Kind of sad that uh, Story of Brawl hit the snag that it did, but I'm looking forward to playing the Informal Worlds Tournament in a couple of weeks. Alright, well, we'll take Visions. It's massive upside if we end up playing it. And we lose very little if we take something else. We need to become we Aaron Gertler. By not taking Niger. something else that That's is. The goal. Whew. Roth Boy, thank you very much. Alright, Mishra's Research Desk or Peregrine's Strong Bowl? I'm kind of... I kind of think it's... I kind of think it's death. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight. We do not have a lot goal. of strong bullish cards yet. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Uh J Lute, Silentist Silenti Star, thank you so much. Yeah, I think this is a desk deck. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Chad. No, I do. Go. Thanks so much for the follow. Ooh, Scrap Charler. Ooh, Evangel of Synthesis. All right. Well, we have the opportunity to stay open by taking this guy. Or we could take Scrap Charler. Scrap Charler plus Mishra's Research Desk is insane. That could be a very powerful engine to set up. Evangel is not amazing. Really. Oh, I've heard. But I guess I believe it. Yeah, I think we just take Scrap Charler. Oh, desk is bog. It keeps us open. Yeah. Okay, looks like another disfigure over gruesome realization. Yeah, I still, I mean, we're probably in red, but I still think we take disfigure over the blast runner here. Yeah, we're doing Mistress Bobble goes up in value once you have Scrap Trawler. Like, I think we have plenty of ways to kill our opponent. We're not necessarily looking all that fast. Okay, this looks like Moment of Defiance over nothing. 
Blitz Automaton? I don't think so. Oh, this wasn't a Gnawing Vermin. I'm never sure how I'm supposed to value Gnawing Vermin. I guess it's fine. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, what do we think? Gnawing Vermin or Moment of Defiance? Vermin's filler. I mean, Defiance is also kind of filler, but I think it's better filler. But still vibrating. Yeah, Moment's also good with Trench Stalker. Not that worried about aggro decks with what we've got so far. Okay, Gixian Infiltrator is a two drop. I think I'm in for just taking a two drop here over the Skull Flayer. Definitely don't need a second Revenant. There's also a Blast Runner. We could start taking Blast Runners now, I guess. Maybe it's Blast Runner over. Maybe we are red, right? We are just playing red. Yeah, I think we just take Blast Runner. It's happening. We're doing this deck. The most basic of basic decks. All right. Now, what do we think about Skull Flare versus Dwarven Forge Chanter? Yeah, Infiltrator's pretty bad. Agreed. I've I've been pretty impressed by Forge Chanter when I've seen it played against me. I think I was gonna say I just like two drops. I do love how hard these decisions are that people just disagree on every every time. And I think I like the one that costs two. Kind of a close call, especially since we are still technically not completely committed to red. Okay, this looks like Dragon Engine, I guess, over Third Path Savant. It's fine. Probably not gonna. We're gonna hope not to play it, but like this is a tough draft. We're gonna need every playable we can get. Okay, I think it's another Forge Chanter over Swiftfoot Boots. Swiftfoot Boots does not seem like it's worth a card. And now I think it's Locust over Firebomb. We just need to have playable creatures. Yeah, this deck is... It's definitely weak, but it's... Like, I'm keeping in mind that this deck feels weak partly because everyone's deck is going to be weak in this particular draft. Whew, I am. Still shaking like leaf. I think we're playing Dig, so I'll take Machine Over Matter just in case we open some kind of insane blue bomb. I don't know what it would be. Take a Colossus away from somebody who might want it. Okay. Um, is that a pivot? Is that a pivot? We lose Visions of Phyrexia. We lose a lot. We lose a lot of stuff to take that. We are down to 16 playables if we take it, but it's also just going to win the game the vast majority of the time we cast it. I think we take the card that just wins us the game the vast majority of the time we cast it. We're also not giving up that much. Like, the best card for our deck in this pack is a sibling rivalry. I think we speculate on the best rare in the set. All right, I mean... Yeah. Speaking of messed up magical cards. All right, 500 people are watching now. I hope this is what you came to see. Suddenly commands. Now let's hope we don't get past Mishra's command, because if we get past Mishra's command, I'm going to have to sit there and think again. I don't think we're cutting red yet. We got we to see how this pack plays out. Chromatic Star looks very good. Yeah, we could definitely end up splashing. I don't think we know splash. I don't know what the... I think it's Star Over Refractor. It's a little tough. There's like a world, I don't know. 
I think star is just a slightly better card. Ow. A lot of stars. Oh, or is it Scrapwork Mutt here? Scrapwork Mutt if we're not playing red. Just keep taking stars. I've got Scrap Trawler. Scrap Trawler makes me like star a lot. But... People seem to love Mutt. We're not necessarily playing red, but we might be playing red. But we're not necessarily playing red. I guess we have star already. Um, Mutt's definitely not very good if you're not playing red. You would definitely rather have star. I mean, you'll play Mutt. It's fine. It's a two-drop. I guess we'll take it. And I guess we'll take it again. Uh, we have... Hmm... I think this is it. Taking two drops. Ultra spicy, but I think we're... I don't feel like we're doing that. Yeah, I think we're probably not going to end up playing green in the end. Yeah, we could have tried to take a couple green cards this pack, but it looks like green's just not that open. I mean, nothing's that open. Yeah, I don't think I think we're playing one revenue. I don't think we're playing two. Holding it in the deck for now. Is Dredging Claw ever playable? Probably not. Take... Actually, maybe it's just no one left behind. This card's fine, actually. Okay, and all right, I'll just grab the Blast Runner here. I think we're just not going to play green. I think it was worth the risk to try taking Titania's command, but I don't think we're going to end up playing it. There's also Wings. I think it's just Blast Runner. All right, now I want... S wow, everything wheeled. That's good. I think we take Sibling Rivaler here. We've got Killzone Acrobat. We have no Strong Bulls. We do have Acrobat. We've got a Thraxodemon. But that's it, actually? Hmm. Actually, never mind. We just take Warplow. Emergency Weld's great. Oh, Emergency Weld or Scrapwork Rager? It's got to be Emergency Weld, right? Was there a Power Stone Fracture that I missed? It's... Alright, we took Weld. I think it was close. Our creature count's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a sack out. That's true. That's true. Alright, Skull Flare. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. All right. Perfectly serviceable, perfectly serviceable red black sack deck. We are a little bit light on sack outlets, which could be rough. We are probably not going to play all three of the goblins. All right, Titania's command. All right, let's build this thing from the ground up. But visions, Gix's command, fine curve. I'm I'm happy enough with this. It's like given how strong the given how strong the pod was, like I'm just satisfied to end up in a serviceable position. Nope, not you. Maybe not you. Definitely you. Definitely you. Definitely you. You and you. 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 Uncertain, probably, but uncertain. We only have the one star to uh, actually give us mana. Definitely you. Okay, so actual sack stuff, we've got... Desk, Star, Thraxodemon, Power Stone, Fracture, and that's kind of it. We don't even have other sack stuff to bring in. I'm not sure. Oh, we have Killzone Acrobat. We should probably play Stalker. Yeah, I don't actually think I like the Goblins that much. I think we're just more of a controlling version of this deck. Because if you're not sacking regularly, the goblins are really bad. Definitely down for at least one revenant. Probably just exactly one revenant. 
Moment of Defiance is just a good card, agreed. Current creature count is eight. We're gonna want more than eight creatures. Play Trench Stalker. Play Killzone Acrobat. It's kind of annoying how Visions of Phyrexia is a double red card in our very light red deck. I wonder... Huh. Yeah, with the Scrapport Mutts and the Research Desk, I just don't think we can play Titania's Command. We just gotta play red. Dragon Engine really sucks as a 3-drop. I think we can play Dragon Engine. Does it? It looks bad. I have not played it. I have rarely played against it. A Ramos Dragon Engine is good. Falaji Dragon Engine is not so good. Saw some big numbers and got surprised for a second. Alright. Um, I guess we'll want at least one Forge Chanter. And then we've got Channelers. Uh, Chanters? Yeah, I think I want one. The question is, all right, so like cards we could play, we got Chanters. I think this is a 17 land deck, by the way, with um, a reasonably high curve and double scrap work mutt. We got, oops, we got, all right, let's add some lands to the deck so we can separate things more clearly. Swamps, we'll see. Yeah, maybe Blast Runner is better than Forge Chanter. We have a lot of non creature spells. I mean, we just saw how bad our creature count was. <clears throat> Alright, so anyway, cards we could play in these last couple slots would include Forge Chanters, any number of Forge Chanters. Include Juggernaut, which is maybe a little bit more aggressive than we want to be. There's no one left behind. Kind of a creature, indeed. There's Skull Flayer, Carrion Locust, Scrapwork Cohort. I think that's about all as far as cards I'd be wanting to main deck. Uh, no, Bad Bastoni. I'm pretty sure that's wrong. Keep in mind that Titanus Command is double green, so we need to hit two forests to play it. And we only have one Chromatic Star, and if we're relying on one Chromatic Star to do all of our Desky and some mudding, that just does not seem good enough at all. Maybe we'll run into some deck that's so good that we feel like we need to draw and resolve Titanium's Command to beat it, and I would maybe consider it then, but... I think you lose far too much, and you're just going to have, you know, games where you draw Titanium's Command and can't cast it. Yeah, Supply Drop does have good synergy with Trawler, that's true. You know, Dreams of Steel and Oil also playable, Supply Drop also playable. It's like a lot of options here. I mean, I think we need at least one Forge Chanter just so we have creatures in our deck. Like, creatures are important. But it may be that Chanter is worse than, like, the three drops. I think Gixie and Skull Flare doesn't work. I don't think we have enough creatures to make Skull Flare reasonable. Yeah, Titanus Command is the best card in the set. It's better than all of our red cards individually. And if we could make playables and play Titanus Command, I think I would, but I don't think you can make playables. Yeah, not having a Strongbull. And now I wish I had a Strongbull, of course. It was hard to tell we were going to end up. This would be a good deck to have a Strongbull in. Uh, all right, what else? Creatures, we got how many of them over here? We got six of them sitting over here, so we only have ten creatures in the main right now. Um, I don't love Acrobat. I think it's playable. I mean, I just want a three mana three two. We're we're not in a position where we have a lot of playables. It's a three mana three two that once in a while you can get in some chip damage that's we wouldn't be able to get in otherwise. I think that's enough. Yeah, cohort is two creatures. That that's true. Cohort's just a lot of raw material. I think I'm kind of into playing it, and it's also good with scrap trawler. Like, Scrap Draw is actually maybe going to be kind of a big part of our deck. But I like playing to try and raise the impact of that one. Okay, so for playing Scrapper Cohort, we got 
two more cards we can add at most, although I think I'm 17 lands over 16. I think Locust, I, I agree Locust seems okay. Just like a two power flyer for three mana is, is better than Forge Chanter on raid, I think. I'm just trying to imagine what my curves with Forge Chanter look like. Forge Chanter's good with Moment of Defiance. It's good with, like, Disfigures. It's good with, like, Desk and Star Cycling. But when I say good, it, like, attacks for two, which is still not very exciting. I think I'm kind of off of the Forge Chanters. Which leaves me with one more card to choose out of this. I guess Dreams is going to hit basically every time. We have Emergency Will, which makes it a little bit easier to get creatures back, although we do need to have a creature in the graveyard in the first place for Emergency Will to be functional. I don't think we need no one left behind with double Emergency Will. I think it's a little bit too risky that we have, like, a bunch of regen with no creatures that we want to bring back. So I think it's down to one of these two, and I think between those two I just like the Locust, just like a solid game one card. And I think we cut a Mountain for a Swamp and make it that. This is supposed to be 11, 6, or 10, 7. I think with Visions of Rexy, I'm nervous to go lower than about 7 mountains. I think this looks like a good place to be. Alright, I'm going to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. We'll just start up with this deck. If you have strong opinions about the number of swamps you should play, uh, you know, put them in the chat. I'm hearing an argument for Jug's Overkill Zone. Juggernaut Overkill Zone. Eh, I could see it. I could see it. Anyone else have strong opinions on Juggernaut versus Kill Zone? And what do the win rates say? Let's just look at the win rates for these cards. Juggernaut is 55.1% game in hand win rate. Kill Zone is 53.5. Huh. Like, I think that Kill Zone's a little better in our deck than it looks because it is an early creature and we don't have a ton of those, but I could buy I could buy this being out and Juggernaut being in. It's definitely one of those things. This deck is going to be doing quite a bit of sideboarding, I think. It seems like no one is super into changing the number of swamps. Yeah. All right. Okay. So two wins were in the money. We do not have a loss to give. Looks good. Yeah, I think that Gex's, I mean, it helps to have Gex's command. Gex's command is one hell of a magic card. Ooh, recruitment officer. Disfigure? Would have been a great time to draw Disfigure. Aleatory. I don't know who this is. Presumably they're good. All right. Gix's Command Against the Soldier Duck is a card I love having, though. Are you an encounter? Or do you have a the Flash Flyer? Wow. Deal. Love to see. Love to see that. 
Don't mind seeing that either. All right, so what are we looking to do now? Could play Cinderma. I think we want to save command for a bit. I think Cinderma plus Moment of Defiance looks like a good thing to be setting up for. I want to save Goring Warplow for post command. I'm definitely down to trade off a bunch of stuff at some point because we've got um, Gix's commands mode to bring you back two things, but we'll just chill for now. See if they deploy a bunch of stuff this turn. Yep, Cinderma does stop my own life gain, so using the lifelink mode on Gizgook's command is less appealing than it would normally be. Okay, many, many scrapper cohorts. Alright, I'm kind of down to attack with Cinderma and see if they bite and just block with a cohort. Seems like a reasonable way to start things off. Gix's command, we end up with two three ones against their three one four three against their three ones. Doesn't seem that impressive. I think we can get more value for it. Pretty plausible they just don't block, but then I can just play Goring Warplow. Have a pretty good creature for them. Cool. No life gain, but kind of a one and a half for one. And do I play Goring Warplow here? I'm down to wow, a little tough, a little tough. <sighs> Should I play Goring Warplow out or not? Save Plow dies to command. I think it's meh. I, I think I agree. Definitely don't want to trade Cohort, that would be very suspicious, but Airlift Chaplain makes it feel like this could be a very good time to command, especially if they cast Combat Courier here. If they cast Combat Courier, we're definitely commanding. Picked up a, oh, they had a Planes too, okay. All right, a little floody. I'm thinking this is just plow. I think I want to try and bait them for one more turn. At some point they're going to start activating a recruiting officer, but I think it seems like they, they missed a land drop. They missed a couple land drops. I could also attack with Cinder Maul. If they block with Cohort, we just emergency weld it back and cast it again. Seems like kind of a waste of emergency weld. I'm a little bit worried about the counter, but I guess if they do counter this, okay, get it back. Attacks for now. Get Cinder Maul as a blocker. A little bit nervous about Harbin, but they're fortunately on only four soldiers because Chaplin's not a soldier. Do you like commanding that turn just to Cinder Maul them down? I don't know. If they have removal for Cinder Maul, it feels like they just have a lot of ways to get back in the game. So many of the creatures die to command. I feel like we can maybe get one more. At least, you know, take a turn and see if we can get one more. If they just use Officer, I wouldn't be totally surprised. Warlord's Elite. Okay. Alright, so that gives me the option of just using Command to make them sack the Elite. I think I'm pretty into that, because then we get a free attack with Warplow. And that just seems huge. I think it's now Command time. Because they can block Warplow with Elite, and I don't want them to do that. So, uh, command command sacks the highest power among creatures they control, so it's going to sack their elite. 
Just read the card to make sure I know what it does. Yeah, that's going to kill the elite. Command and attack all. I mean, yeah, I'm probably command and attack all. I don't think I'm just stacking four plow. I think we just hit them. We are very flooded, but good tempo. And well means they need two blockers. Cohort is one blocker. Okay, that's another blocker. Doesn't stop Warplow at least. All right. Ah, about time we drew a spell. Okay, bomb rare wins the game. That's that's limited. All right, uh, sideboarding against the pretty aggressive blue white soldier deck. They have a ton of unearth. Dreams of Steel and Oil looking maybe pretty good. Mishra's Juggernaut looking very bad on the draw. I don't like Mishra's Juggernaut. Options to bring in would be like Killzone, Acrobat, or Dreams. I think it's Dreams. I think being getting in early on them seems good. Falaji Dragon Engine also kind of plausible, just as like a 1 3 flyer. Seems pretty good against like Air Marshal and random 2 1s, but I think it's Dreams or Dragon. I think between them I like the dreams. Just getting rid of like a scrapwork cohort sounds so good. Now is there anything else I might want to cut for dragon? I guess carrion locust might be worse than dragon. It's again, it's good to have random exile against them. Force chanter blocks pretty well, but I don't know what I'm cutting for force chanter. Like I love all this, love this. Cut land in the draw maybe? I guess we're dragging our yeah, maybe the lifelink tricks a little out of sync on the draw. And they'll be playing around it too. I can see, I can see cut moment to bring in like a just a random 1-3 blocker. Do I cut a land? Is Visions of Phyrexia good enough? I feel like Visions of Phyrexia should pretty much always be good enough. This is still limited. People just miss on stuff. Games go long. I could see going down to six mountain here and adding another I don't want another force channel. Let's add kill zone acrobat, I think. Just bodies that can block and fine. Alright, try this. I'm not sure about the 16 lands, but oh the one through flyer. That should be the one through flyer, yeah. Alright. We go back on the play, we'll consider that a little. We'll probably just go back to 17 lands. I think that was supposed to be Dragon Engine. All right, turn one dreams. That's exactly where you want it. Ah, oh, good. Not through an officer. We've also got the sicko desk scrap trawler combo. Oh. I think we still just dreams them. If I take their two drop, I'm like quite happy. Ah, if I take my roll shield of Argive, I'm also quite happy. Right. Yeah. So many flyers, but at the same time, that's a Myrel. I don't have an answer to right now. I think we just gotta take Myrel. Count on Scrap Trawler plus Emergency Weld plus Desk giving me enough material to w work through their other stuff. Oh, they hit an island off the top? That's cool. Okay, Warplow's nice though. Definitely just Warplow here. And worth noting that, you know, Trench Stalker can turn things around if the game goes long enough. Of two disfigures. There's one of them right now, in fact. Alright, so is this scrap trawler or is this just disfigure the commando? And play desk. Like desk and disfigure here, I think. I 
think I want to sack desk this turn. I want to have the option to use desk to hit a land. I think I sack it end of my... Oh, I guess it doesn't really matter when I sack it, so I could sack it now. There's a chance I hit disfigure anyway. I give my opponent a little bit of information, but that doesn't seem very important. Yeah, I guess we might as well desk now. Okay, and we'll just take the Swamp or the Cinder Maw. I think I just want the Swamp. I've got Trench Stalker. I think Trench Stalker is like a big part of my game plan. Oh god. Slightly rough chaplain, though. I guess a 2 2 flyer is not the end of the world either. They get to start hitting me for 4 with Air Marshal at the very least. Now I get to cast Trench Stalker. Trench Stalker's a good card. I guess I'll also start attacking with Scrap Trawler. Oh, never mind. We're not going to be attacking with Scrap Trawler. Let's just cast. Trench Stalker here. Actually, I guess I can attack with Scrap Trawler if I'm going to cast Trench Stalker. Yeah, we need to we need to actually apply some pressure because they do have flying and I currently can't get rid of their flying source. So good cards or anything that draws cards is amazing. Gix's command is of course amazing. Wow, I don't have nothing to do here but just hit me for five. Seems Pretty good. Desk can draw me toward a lot of stuff. Air Marshal again. All right. So Disfigure doesn't really do it, but Chromatic Star. Chromatic Star. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's very good indeed. That's very good indeed. Oh, that's also very good. Oh, that's also very good. How good all these cards are. Look at how good they are. <laughs> my deck is so good. I love my deck. Trawler still coming, I think. Trawler's still coming in. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, we can well back star. We're just gets artifacts. It's a great card. Kills an acrobat notably would be better as Falaji Dragon Engine here. Point of point of order. Mm, all right. I'm just going to go for saving as much life as possible. Yep, that looked like a desperation attack to me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Scrap Trawler. Ah. They can sack draw this time, it's true. I was hoping to find some removal for their stuff, but I think we'll be okay. I can jam Mutt, discard Mountain, hold up Emergency Weld. Seems fine. Can we just discard Acrobat? Hmm. It's Mountain. I could just draw land. I could also draw something cheap. All right, drew the land. I'm gonna swing with Trawler. I think with Anointer and Mutt back, I can just swing with Stalker and force the sack on their end. And yet, Mutt Bunny gets back the star again. It's all true. Gotta keep in mind they do have a Scrapper Cohort in the graveyard there. Oh, 
Oh, are we really doing this, opponent? <laughs> hey, that's fine. That's fine. You know what it is. Okay, if they remove Gurgly Anointer, they shouldn't be able to put me lower than five, and then Trench Stalker just gains life for sure. So I think, I think we've got him in the Vortex. All right, that's cheap. That does something. And they also stop Trench Stalker. I mean, even if they do hit Trench Stalker, I can emergency weld it back after sacking it with Killzone Acrobat. Eventually. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. I mean, maybe if they have another machine over matter? I would trade them up for this. Life total matters. I mean, worst case, absolute worst case scenario is they have another machine over matter. If they have another machine over matter. I have Gurgly and Lantern to block, so I guess I'm not dead. I still think I'm supposed to. I just have so much card advantage that I think I'm supposed to. Take the life for card trade there. They also have Unearth on this thing. All right, well. Anointer? Star? Chanter, sure. Um, let's cast that over Mutt here. Yep, this is looking good. Looking real good. Um, save the swamp to discard. Hmm. Once again, just one mountain. That's fine though. Another weld. Right. We can actually just weld back Scrap Trawler. Kind of funny. Alright, so this doesn't die, right? It just gets exiled. So it doesn't actually die, so Scrap Trawler is not going to be a thing. I don't know. Is it Trench Stalker or Scrap Trawler MVP? I guess it's Trench Stalker. Nah, it's not World Star, it's World Stalker. Maybe we can just do both. We can just do both. Hmm. Do I will maybe I just World Trawler here just so I can cast I, I should World Trawler just so I can cast it. This is also just I think I mean everything's demoralizing, but this is especially demoralizing. Alright, well thanks to whoever is making sure I took a took a trench stalker there. Gosh. Uh Lakshmana. I don't know. I'm being overly defensive. There was no real reason not to do that. I probably should just be trying to get the game over with in case they have Worm Quill Engine. Um, I think Trench Stalker is pretty good stats. Consensus seems to be that it's a good card. Alright, Remorse, never mind. Torn Quill Engine taken care of. We should be fine. Um, should I be desking? Should weld back Trench Stalker. I guess I want to weld back at the beginning here because it turns on Forge Chanter. Yeah, let's do that. Also weld Star. But Star can come back with Scrap Trawl. I'm just going to weld Stalker. Still a mana, even if they had a land right next turn, they can't Silex me. Alright, that's cute. Can't, I mean, I could, I could remorse the chaplain. Do I care, though? I think I care enough. I think I just let this happen. Because Worm Quill Engine's the, you know, card that's the nightmare. Gets Star back again. Get back Scrap Trawler again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
After damage would have been better, yeah, but I don't think they it mattered, and I think they realized that. Alright. Hope they had a loss to give. Well that was that was quite an engine. Good old scrap trawler. Okay, we got a mastery orb, that's fun. And now uh yeah. I think jumping back in here feels feels fine. Yeah. I think that game made me think this deck has enough grind that I don't actually need the Juggernaut and I would prefer just to have a cheap creature. Like I think I am going to cut Juggernaut for like four enter or something. I think it's just like the easiest way for me to die is just going to be not having blockers early. I think I like Forge Chanter more than Dragon. I mean, the artifact thing matters a little bit, but. I think I'm worried about like three ones for two. Let's try this. All right, got to win one more. I've been one win away from money probably three times in the Arena Open by now, but have never earned a cent. I've never clicked those dollar signs, so let's see if we get it this time. I think we have good odds, but anything can happen. It's limited. All right, keepable hand. Glad that Forge Chanter is not Juggernaut. I'd feel a little bit more worried if this were Juggernaut. I guess it's close. Close enough. Next, all right. Okay. Um, I think Mutt discard Mountain over Chanter here. We don't have any non-creature spells. Mutt's a slightly better attacker. It's a little bit worse against specifically Arbalest Engineers, but we can also discard Revenant. I guess we're just supposed to discard Revenant to scrap work Mutt every time. Yeah. Good old Clay Revenant. Good old Clay Revenant. Okay. We're getting, all right, not getting another color. Looks like they just wanted to find something to do. All right, really, really glad we played Mutt. Sounds great. Okay, I think it's just Locust this turn for pure mana efficiency. We also want to save Scrap Work Mutts until uh, our opponent, we have the Trench Stalker out, ideally. Oh! I don't know. I thought Carry and Locust had Flash chat. I really thought Carry and Locust had, had Flash. I was just so sure it had Flash. Is there... I think there have been, like, Flash 2-1 flyers in, like, every every other set. Oh, I forgot the Revenant also. Uh, I'll just call it all one punt. Call it all one punt, should have returned the Revenant. Damn. All right, this card is worse than I thought it was. I'm fine, I'm fine. I was so sure it had flash. And we are, we are doing fine. Hmm. All right, they don't have enough creatures for that yet, and Carrion Locust can help keep them off of the creatures for that. All great. Gonna chill, it's gonna be fine. Ouch. Got emergency hold for that, that's fine. They swing, that's fine. I did trade four damage for four damage, given what I know about my hand. Moment of Defiance is kinda neat. Forge and Forge Chanter plus Moment of Defiance does not actually stop Gaia's Corsair. We just go Forge Chanter Locust this turn. Womps are very good draws. Okay, I can punch through a Thran Spider, maybe. That's not bad. Swamp's nice. Do I try and Moment of Defiance my way through their Spider here? Do 
boost attack all and try to disfigure the spider, and then if they have Gaia's whatever, I can moment of defiance. Yeah, I wanted the second swamp very badly. I'm not sure I was supposed to play the land, but I think it was fine. We just go in here. Have a pump spell. Give a Gaia's Gift. All right, so Gaia's Gift means that Moment of Defiance doesn't save the cohort. That's fine, though. I will allow it. We could Moment of Defiance the Forge Chanter right now. I think I actually like Moment of Defiance the Forge Chanter, just to, just to gain a huge chunk of life here. Power Stone Fracture is pretty good. Back to 15 and just cast Mutt not discarding. I think with a Mutt in the graveyard, it's worth to cast Mutt not discard just to have more material on the battlefield for if I Power Stone Fracture them next turn. Get all my stuff onto the battlefield. It needs to leave up two blockers, but they don't necessarily know that. Swiftfoot Boots. Okay, Swiftfoot Boots is very annoying. But like, I still got just a lot of stuff going on. Okay. No aggression, overwhelming remorse is nice. This the swift of boots is insanely annoying, actually, but I'm the one with the clay revenant and the scrapwork mutt. Kind of doing stuff here. Do I just kill Courser now? I think we bring Black Revenant and then just kill Courser. With the Power Stone Fracture main phase, what are my other options? We've got Mutt. Doesn't excite me. We could bring back Revenant and then bring back Mutt to draw a card. Um, yeah, and then we can sack Mutt to Power Stone. I think I like that, actually. Yes, Manthos, I know. Don't worry. I'm, I'm extremely aware. You don't need to tell me about punts from five turns ago. Our opponent should be at four life now. Instead of what they're at. It would open up a bunch more options for me. Unfortunately, it's not how things went. Okay, star is nice. Let's go with fracture on cursor. But... So what are my win cons here? We've got two emergency well to get back Trench Stalker, which is a creature they can't currently stop. Good evening, Guardians. Back X's command, which just makes them sack the spider. Seems to be just playing to activate spider. God, the Swiftfoot boots are so annoying. All right, what do I want to do now? I guess we start with Star. I can find anything worthwhile. We can actually cast enough. Sp I mean, we can't cast enough spells to make Forge Chanter into like a real thing. Oh, we can star cohort attack all. Actually, yeah, we definitely make white mana. The question, wh whether we get cohort back, is going to depend on what we draw. I think the scrapwork cohort might just be good enough. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll go cohort here. Then we can bring back Clay Revenant and cast it here as well. Hooray for Unearth. Wow. 
Wow, hooray for our opponent taking two damage to do this. And not being able to use Spider this turn, that's all great. Uh, we can't save Forge Chantry even if we cast Disfigure, so let this go. Down to two. We now have. I mean, we're gonna definitely put Clay Revenant into play now because it's lethal. So the only thing that really gets me would be like Hasty Lifelinker. Any Lifelinker with Swiftfoot Boots, I guess, is awkward. Boulder Branch Golem. Yeah, what was the card that was exactly like Locust, but with Flash? Probably just like conflating like uh, whatever that bat was from Endicar with the 2-3 from Ravnica, which was not flashy. Manticore. I'm probably conflating with Manticore. That's something. One's going to regret not moving over those boots. I guess it didn't really matter. The emergency world's also sick. Well... Right here. Okay, Narut Pallbearer. They went with Mishra over that one this turn. Reasoning. Yay! All right. Got him to negative negative four. So big red green deck. Sky Dancer, Nimana Sky Dancer, that's the one I was thinking of. You you hit me. That, that is correct. Manticore, Sky Dancer, just a lot of things. Some of the flash of them don't. Who knows? Alright, Mishra's Juggernaut looks pretty good in this matchup. They have biggish creatures. I am into taking those down. Carrion Locust actually seems okay. They had exactly the spider which has reach, but Locust makes their Nimana's Courser worse. There's also Dreams of Steel and Oil as a consideration. I wonder how good Disfigure is. I feel like you just always play two Disfigure. It's just a combat trick in addition to being rules. Well, you should always play Disfigure. Uh, Supply Drop is a little bit interesting. There's a lot of stuff I'm kind of interested in bringing in. I'm trying to think what comes out. Forge Chanter, possibly. I think two drops are less important against their deck, and Forge Chanter just has a hard time attacking through stuff. I'm sure Disfigure has plenty of targets in their deck, realistically. Especially because of anything, they're probably going to be trimming down a little bit here. Alright, so this looks fine. On the draw, we could cut a land like we did before. We did bring our curve up a little bit. But I think I'd be fine cutting a land to bring in Dreams of Steel and Oil. We need to become uh, We don't have any removal like spells for it's boots. But I don't think the boots are that annoying all, all in all. I mean, we can dream it if they don't cast it by the time we've dreamed, but... Let's do this, I think. Boots aren't a big deal. The creatures that boots are attached to are a big deal, so we're going to want to get rid of those. Fracture fracture can't kill artifacts. It just kills creatures and planeswalkers. Jim Bone, thanks for the follow. Mm, all right, can we keep Desk one land on the draw? We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Chad. That's the goal. I think our curve is low enough that we're going to keep this. A known grinder. I just love that expression. Okay, cool. No need to dip into anything. We can just mutt, discard, revenant. Love this play. Love this play. Just love clay revenant so much. Okay, opponent does a little pause there. Is that guy's gift or something else? Crowler? Sure. Okay, I think here's where I crack desk to look for that third land. If I don't hit third land, but still hit disfigure, I at least get to do something.
Okay, lose Visions of Phyrexia, but that's fine. That was going to be hard to cast this game anyway. I think we just attack with Mutt. Are we doing it for now? Attack with Mutt. And then I think it's just War Plow over Emergency Weld. Welding back the Mutt's not that appealing. Welding back War Plow multiple times might be super appealing if we're trying to deal with their big creatures. Hmm, Cornucopia. That one hit the battlefield. Gurgly and Ointer. Um, I think it's just supposed to carry in Locust this turn. A lot of grind for sure. Carry on my wayward son. And we do have an answer to the first big thing they play, which is nice. I guess Goring Warplow is kind of like an answer to the first big thing they play. Oh, yikes. Welp, uh, that is a good disfigure target. Giant growthing it to keep it alive here. Yes, we are. Okay. Um, do I overwhelming remorse it here, or do I just let this happen? I we were more set. Like it's, yeah, we were more set. There are other big creatures presumably can't attack through Goring Warplow very easily, or else a double striker can't attack through Goring Warplow. Plus we get to exile, which is good. Yep, all, all of the above. Oh, wow, wow, opponent. They were just gonna combo us, chat. <laughs> all right, well. Let's hope we beat them here because I don't want to see them. I don't want to see them ever again. Oof. 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 Don't. I don't like it. I am on the whole opposed to what I'm seeing. Uh, but it does just trade with Roaring War Plow, so for now it's not an emergency card I have to remove. I mean, they could have Guy's Gift to protect it, but that's fine. We can bring back War Plow any number of times. I don't think we fracture it. I mean, it's annoying. It's going to gain them some life, but we got to got to use our cards carefully game and every game you should always use your cards carefully chat all right so we can mutt to pump the anointer mm, i think we just got to weld back the uh and cast the goring warplow this turn and make them keep killing it over and over again I think I'm down to play a land here. With Clay Revenant, it's just so good to have mana. Nope, we we're not. To become Aaron but look at this creature. This is a 3-5. It has an ability. The ability is pretty good, but presumably they don't have another Phyrexian Dragon we need Engine. To become Aaron as long as they don't have another Phyrexian Dragon goal. Engine, our Goring Warplow can just block this Mishra, and it's fine. We want to save Power Stone Fracture for something that can get around Goring Warplow. Whatever that may be. Okay, so we got Desk this turn. Pretty down to just Desk. There's nothing I want to weld back at the moment, right? There's nothing I want to weld back at the moment. We just Desk and see what we can find. Play Ribbon if we hit nothing off of Desk. Demon looks pretty good. Definitely a strong reason to keep playing lands. All right, opponent's got an extremely clear plan here. I mean, I'm very annoyed by this. Do I block the Mishra? I think I block the Mishra. I think it's worth saving. Well, with Raxodemon, losing this token is kind of a pain in the ass. Maybe I do just kill the Mishra this turn. Doesn't play an arrow, but I think quite this much removal. I think it's no blocks. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll just get rid of Mishra this turn. Little sad that it had to happen this way, but I think it does have to happen this way. Okay, and we attack for... I think I... So I could either attack... I could attack for seven, then kill Mishra and emergency weld back the Warplow. And then our opponent's facing a lot of damage. Or we could attack with Locust Mutt, then Fracture the Mishra, and then I can sack the token to Thraxo Demon end of turn. Or just get back Clay Revenant. Um, we could also attack for 6 instead of 7, hold the token back, that's true. Hmm. Yeah, Gift is a card to think about. I think we I think we hit them and kill Mishra and try to have them dead next turn. I think that's what I like doing. We've seen Boots, we've seen Gift, but Boots plus a creature plus haste the creature seems hard to do. So the thing I can weld back is going to be Warplow. Cast it. We could also weld back the um, Play Revenant and cast it, but I think it's better just to have Revenant in hand in case something happens to make the game go longer. Let's see, let me do the math here. We weld back Revenant, we cast it. Opponent presumably goes to two off the Locust, and then we've got... Man, four attackers versus five is a big difference, actually. I think I'm supposed to weld back the Revenant and cast it over the plow. There are huge haste creatures in this set, but I can I have a blocker. I mean, giant, giant growth into Gaia's gift kills us. They would need both. We know they have a lot of big clunky creatures that don't help them here, like the 4-5 and the 5-5. Five, five. I think their deck is scary and I would like to force the win here. Another Unleashed Shell doesn't kill us. We just don't give them time. I think, you know, my Thraxa Demon Engine might be just less powerful than them casting whatever good spells they have. I mean, I think we beat Demolisher. No, I guess we don't beat Demolisher. Okay, that doesn't beat us. And this figure is pretty helpful too. All right. Um, actually, that does slow us down a lot, huh? I can't get through with Locust. I mean, you could just kill it. And I guess I just attack with Locust and kill the Recluse. I think I want to throw any of my stuff into the Maw of Forge Chanter. If I attack with these three, we get through one extra damage, but I lose a Thraxodemon trigger. They could have Gaia's Gift for the Recluse, though. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling like Gift is a thing. I can put them to one, then we die to Gaia's Gift on the backswing. Well, we don't die to Gaia's Gift on the backswing because I can disfigure something. There's also attack all and use demon to sack what they block. Also sack Revenant and recast it. Yeah, what if we just attack all, put them to two, they block and eat two creatures, but then I sack one of them and I draw a card? Huh. I think I just used Thraxodemon this turn. I don't think we can... Yeah, we can't attack all in sack, that is true. We just draw our card here. I want to hold up Disfigure, so we're not going to bring it back and cast it this turn. I'm going to hold it up. Trench Stalker's nice. Love Trench Stalker. One mana short of being able to do that, but I can chill, and if they go for like a... 
a big win with Gaia's Gift, we can get them. We don't kill the Recluse if they have Gaia's Gift, it gets Hexproof and Indestructible and many other things. Okay. Definitely have the read on them for Gift. What else do they have? They have like the 5-5 five, five tree. They can't cast that and hold up green for gift. Their mana doesn't work. Yeah, I guess, I mean, they, there was a point in the game at which they didn't have Gaia's Gift. The question is, have they drawn it in the turn since that was happening? But the fact that they're thinking about attacking now makes me think they have Gift and they're maybe just trying to force a kill. I also, the fact they've cast two Unleashed Shells just makes me think it's unlikely they have a third one. They could have a third one. You can always have three of copies of the five dam five mana removal spell. Uh Lakshmana, there was absolutely a point in second on our turn. Like we could draw a spell that we want to cast. Right? We have many spells in our deck that we can cast for mana on our turn. As we learned in the last game, not of our spells in flash. Also, I've been missing a bunch of followers while this video on a cougar in VIP mode. Thanks so much. I mean, who dra whoever draws spells, maybe not us, but I think it's possible. I dream. Right, this is the opponent who has Guy's Gift, thinking if I attack and they block wrong, I can kill them. And they're worried because they don't have other action going on. Okay. Here they come. <laughs> it was the third Unleashed Shell. Look at that. Am I dead? All right, well, um, all right, so, I mean, it's GG if they have Gift. I can't win if they have Gift. I block two creatures. If they just Gift the Forge Chanter, I can't disfigure the Forge Chanter because I have to pay the life to, to do that. And it's too big anyway. If I double block the Forge Chanter, does that work? They gift it, it goes down to, it's still a three power trampler, no, it's down to one. If I double lock the Forge Chanter, they just don't have, the problem is if I double lock the Forge Chanter, Jeff, they don't have to gift. I guess I just cast Trench Stalker though, and then Trench Stalker kind of just holds them off, which is something. Do I just do I just hope they don't have it? So tough. All right, I think I'm gonna rely on Trench Stalker to get me through this one. Oh no, I die. I can't double block. I die. They hit me for two, and then I take two trying to wart hit the thing. So we gotta just block this thing. I think. See if they had it. Okay, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I can't just figure the spider if they don't have gift, it's true. Well, if they get the chanter, I still die to trample, right? Do I? Maybe I was doing the math wrong. Oh, scrapwork cohort's good, but I think I just cast trench stalker. Right, I think this is just trench stalker attack with Thraxodemon. Right. I'll have to go back and review that. I was I ran out of time trying to think through things. And there's no way I can kill them. I can't like discard Scrapport Cohort and then unearth it. No, I don't have white mana anyway. It's not a thing. Alright, I think this is 
Trench Stalker and hit them with Thraxodemon. And we've got Disfigure to deal with a Haster. I can beat Gaia's Gift on the Recluse because I have Disfigure. And being able to gain life seems really good in this scenario. All right. Note to self, they have three Unleashed Shells that they are all playing against me. Mishra Excavation Prodigy, all right. Well, they didn't have Gift last turn, so let's hope they don't have it again. Oh, why not play Revenant? Oh, no reason. I just was distracted. Okay, I don't think I have anything. Woo, all right. Clumsy, 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 clumsy game. <laughs> Jesus Christ, gotta get my head in order. Uh, all right, I think I made the the most important decisions I made correctly. Uh, maybe a bre uh, break to breathe a little bit. 500? Wait, it was 500, 1,000, 2,000? Oh, they took away the 2,500 award. Now I feel all cheated for some reason. Yeah, you might be right, Mistastic. I mean, it's it's always given what we saw with their deck game one, Mistastic. What we saw was a four five that drew cards when it attacked. We saw the five five trampler. What we didn't see was three copies of Unleashed Shell. So it was very hard to predict they were just gonna keep killing the thing. But I guess we saw Gaia's gift. Eh, Mishra's pretty good. You're you're probably right. You're probably right. If I promise if you see a Mishra again in a similar situation, we'll kill it. It gained a lot of life, but yeah, hard, hard to predict that their hand is all removal and not creatures as opposed to the other way around. But I may have zoomed in a little bit too much on my game plan. I was also worried about them just playing a big reach creature, at which point I lose my we only consistent source of damage. Aaron Gertler tonight, Chet. That's the goal. Dark Lord, thanks for the follow. I mean, uh, Exile first in the Dragon Engine. I don't know. I was pretty happy just killing it. At the time, my tempo was insane. I didn't think they were going to have time to bring unearth the Dragon Engine and spend an entire turn not adding to their board. Sneep, Gix's Command, baby. There's a card we didn't have at all last game. Yes, play the damn Revenant, it's true. Play the damn Revenant. Head in the game. Get your, get your, get your, get your head in the game. All right, do I use Mr. Reacher's Dust just to try and hit a 2-drop or a 3-drop? I think I do. Hmm, or do I... Do I wait on Dusk? I never know how to use Dusk, man. I guess I can, like, wait until the end of their turn to decide whether to use the Dusk. Sure. Thopter Mechanic. All right, that sounds like a good reason to use Dusk. Um, we have a lot of twos and threes. Our deck is largely twos and threes. Okay, I guess it's emergency weld. Run it back. Note to self, we don't have access to Mojo Defiance anymore. I mean, it's a pretty good trade. I'm happy with that against Thopter Mechanic. Let's see if they can draw some cards. Hmm. Pretty good. All right. I think I'm trading this for six life. Yeah, I think we desk again. We just look for stuff to do. One, like, little scrapwork mutt would be so good right now. Really, Nurture's not bad either. I guess I'll try that. Really, Nurture's not great exactly. But it's a fundamentally strong card. Helpful. Yeesh. All right, well, um, crap. That's quite the curve. Good thing we can kill that. Hmm. That's a lot of lands. A lot of lands. 
Uh, all right, do we desk and all right, so we got two options. We can desk, sack it, dig for like a scrap work mud or something. See if we can maybe get a counter on anointer. Or we can just bring back desk and kill Urza with it. I think I'm kind of just into bring back desk, kill Urza with it. I think it's a little bit too risky if we just like whiff on desk again, that we're just like far too, too far behind. Also, opponent's curve of this game has been crazy. Get this command. I don't think command there is at all right. They just sack a they sack a token. They get to keep Urza Prince of Krug. I mean, we can kill Urza Prince of Krug later, but I don't know. I would like to try and use command to do more than like one for one my opponent, really. Yeah, power not mana value. Get like an overall mirror morse, I guess I'm fine too. Blah. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> All right, what's my plan? I guess we've got to I guess we got to do Gix's command now, huh? Got to hope they are out of gas now with combat career. But yeah, sometimes you hit a, sometimes you hit nine lands in your top. Ugh, tax cards. That's okay. We already won our money. We get mana screwed, mana flooded. Now it's it's whatever it is. Opponent's deck also looks intensely, insanely good. And we should just attack them now. We're going to gain three life guaranteed by attacking them, and at most we gain... Actually, no. no. They might just not be able to attack. I think we can't attack them. That was silly. Oh, don't let them attack as well. Yeah, I think we I think we should line up okay with an average draw. I mean, our opponent's deck looks very, very good, but, you know, these cards are all ridiculously high picks. I'm sure that they pick them all up. Yeah, those are a bunch of their early picks represented. And one scrapwork mutt, and we can turn it all around. I don't think so, CW. I don't think we're that doomed yet. The fact that we end up with a 3-5 and our opponent's board, as we see it, can't get through a 3-5. Like, totally possible their hand is full of cards like Air Marshal and Phalanx, whatever. And that they don't quite have the, the juice to punch through this. They're looking at it like they're going to kill it. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Draft Punk. Also, Dark Lord, I think I thanked you for a follow yet, but thank you. All right, uh, they are in. Let's need a 2 2. I'm glad that worked. Only with more bland creatures and trying to run me over with them. But it probably gets that I don't have much going on in my hand given how many times I desked. What's good now? Trench Stalker's good. Crapwork Mud is very good. Keep looking, opponent. I have nothing in my graveyard. You've you've seen all you've seen all my spells. All right, sure. Not great. Giant Cinder Maw. All right, that's serviceable. That keeps us alive. That was a pause like they might have military discipline? No, we're beating military discipline. Ew. Yikes. Although I guess they don't have that many soldiers, huh? Maybe Lauren's Escape as well. Lauren's Escape is also, I mean, I don't think I'm beating spells here. <laughs> Not spells that affect the board this turn. Ugh.
Also, we're definitely boarding in Dreams of Steel and Oil again, which strongly implies we should just be main decking Dreams of Steel and Oil. Alright, well, let's see what the trick is. Um, do I care more about trading with Tactician or trading with Onulet, assuming they have nothing? Uh, gotta keep Onulet on the board because we don't want them nerfing it, so it's gotta be this. And what's the trick? No tricks? Alright. Oh, all right. They run nothing, and I am still... Oh, I'm not dead. Coastal Bulwark can't attack. All right. Stabilizing? Technically, they've got Combat Courier, so... It looks dangerous, but... We'll see. It's not over yet. We at least get to see more of their deck. And a single Chromatic Star, and we could be right back in this. Yeah, moment would be really good right now. It's too bad. All I just need is one scrapwork mutt. Just one little scrapwork mutt, please, opponent. Yeah. It's a tough choice whether you sack the courier or not. <clears throat> I think I agree with it though. I imagine there's just like a ton of draws in their deck that are incredibly relevant here. Okay, they kept whatever that was. <laughs> oh, yikes. This is not looking easy. This is not looking easy. All right, opponent was apparently in a different draft pod than my draft pod. Oh, damn. All right, so what do we need now? Gotta be like Mutt. Now we're dead. Huh. All right. Um. Yeah. Dreams of steel and oil. Yep. Uh. Hmm. It's definitely winnable. It's just. It's just hard. So our record command is not at all updated. El Camisado, we're at five hundred dollars, fighting for more against uh somebody who's probably going to win two thousand dollars. That. That deck looked really good. I don't know uh, what to do about sideboarding. Probably, I mean, Forge Chanter is a good candidate for my weakest card. I'm down to cut Forge Chanter. I think it just does the least of all my cards. Yeah, Chad, I know. I know. Don't need to, you don't need to tell me not to draw lands, I'll try. At least the opponent doesn't have much sideboard. Don't you dare, Mez. Don't you dare. No, Lakshma, I don't want the 1-3 flyer. I don't think it's very good here. Like, What, what cards did you see that you like the 1-3 flyer against? We, we didn't see a lot of the random 2-1 soldiers. We just saw incredibly impactful cards. I mean, the 1-3 flyer can be a 5-5, five, five, which maybe is relevant, but I think it's not as good as I think the 3-mana version is worse than all the cards in my deck. Yeah, I guess this figure could be big. Assuming they don't have a Soldier Lord in play when they play their Siege Veteran. Yeah, I think we're, we're probably like, I don't know, 15% to win the next two games, but... We'll try it anyway. Yeah, just drawing spells, really, right? We we draw spells that can function pretty well. Our opponent's deck looks like an A plus plus plus. Probably the strongest deck I've encountered in this format so far. And I mean, impressive of them to hit it with a you know a tough draft pod. Hmm. 
Okay. Visions of Phyrexia. Visions of Phyrexia is like a real magic card, man. All right. This card can do some work. I guess that was supposed to be Dusk over Star there. I don't know why I started Star. Mattering very much, I think. Okay, that's a normal card. I think we do crack desk here. Do we? Maybe not, actually. I think we need to be a little bit more selective than that. That's a good draw. We need them not to have a disenchant, mostly. Okay, you want planes or medic? Medic without lifelink turned on at the moment. They appear to have no blue mana. But yeah, getting to actually we cast Visions is a big deal. Tonight, the yeah. shiny Let's one, thanks go. for the follow. It's funny, we've drafted this in two consecutive draft decks, and I think this will be the first time we've cast it today. I guess we maybe cast it one other time, but the game was already over by then. Oh, maybe this is... All right, they get the planes anyway. Interesting. Crunch. Wow, just... Lock, no hesitation. Love it. Love it. Okay. Me against a seven card hand. Oh my god, they are just whiffing on blue here. I, mean, I th think we play this mountain and hold future mountains. We play this mountain at least. We're going to be seeing a lot of cards. Helps to have mana in play for them. I don't think we crack desk though. There may be turns when we don't play lands off of visions because we'd rather have a power stone we can sack to Thraxidamon or something. So I'll think about that. Alright, opponents. Opponent now has spells available to them. We'll see. This will at least be a good fight. I hope. Sure. Alright, do I crack desk now? I think I crack it yet. Yeah, we have tons of mana. We want to see what we get here first. Gix's command, okay. Um, all right, so uh, we got a Gix's command this turn. The only question is, do we go lifelink on Thraxodemon and two counters, or do we go get back giant Cindermaw? I think we start by cracking star to see what we find off of that. Because we might, if we draw like a swamp, and I can play like swamp plus dreams of steel and oil, that'll help me make my decision. Alas. Okay. I think we just get back the 4-3 here and just try not to put all my eggs in one basket. And I'll we'll keep playing lands. As long as I have a spare mountain in hand to discard, we can keep playing lands. I really wanted that swamp, but it's fine. Dreams of Steel and Oil, I'm sure, is going to find something good to hit. Sure. It's fine. Don't want to crack dust yet. We'll hold it. So we know more about what we want. That's great. That's really good. Okay. Start here. So pause. Uh, Stern Lesson, Machine Over Matter. Good cards to know that. We'll take Urza and we'll take Cavalry. Uh, let's go for it. 
And I guess we just cast Cinder Maw. I don't think anything that punishes me is for casting Cinder Maw here. So here comes the squad. Not going to swing with Thraxo Demon. It's a little bit tempting just so that Cinder Maw, if they block with Thopter Mechanic, they don't have a good blocker for Cinder Maw, whereas, nope, they're just giving up. Cool! All right. Given their card quality, I didn't know that was over, but it was, it was probably over. All right. Well, we just need them to stumble one more time. Am I cutting a land on the draw? What do we think? Cutting a land on the draw here? We can bring in, I guess, the Stupid Dragon or the Forge Chanter. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight. We had one game of Flood and one game of, you know, draw one later in Mulligan, so it's, it's very hard to tell. You just got to go on fundamentals and not what's just happened to you. Hmm. Yeah, I think I believe in our ability to finally draw some scrap work mutts this time. Bravo, thanks for the follow. Yeah, competitive limited is extremely sick. There we go. A mutt and a dream. Oh, a mutt and a dream. Easy Thopter Mechanic, right? Thopter Mechanic's just better than Airlift Chaplain. It seems just better than Airlift Chaplain, yeah. That's the Hit the pause of someone who didn't draw land? We're both on no timeouts. No, they did hit the land. Okay. Sure. I mean, we saw the scariest version of the deck, but they do have all those cards in their deck. All right. They milled one of the one of the tacticians. Let's start. Yeah, no, their deck. Their deck is not as scary as it looked in game one. And most of the time. And also we drew, you know, nine lands while that was all happening, which didn't help at all. There's a, I think our deck getting a normal draw might have been competitive. Would love to trade with Power Stone Engineer if you let me. Didn't think you were going to let me. Sure. I don't think we attack with Mutt. I think with Command and Stalker. Okay, so Stalker's going to get hit by this. I attack them. Trading two damage for three damage, but I have a Disfigure. I know, Jofu. I know. I can count them. In general, would prefer slightly fewer comments along the lines of, wow, look at all your flooding. It's all right. It's a natural reaction, but I'm sitting here, you know, watching all the cards I have. I know, Mistastic, you wouldn't think so, but I've been trying to learn. Here it's important for your pro magic career. Yeah, it'd be nice if Command had a mode that was just like, draw two cards, but it's kind of nice that it doesn't, right? It shouldn't all just be that insane by default. Okay, not going to disfigure this Chaplain. They've got a Siege Veteran. We're going to try to hold on to our hats here. Scrap Trawler. Scrappy T. Scrappy T. All right, and now I'm down to start attacking with Scrappy M. I have five card of my opponent's three. This also makes it a little bit more tempting for them to weak stone subjugation the Scrap Trawler. Gives me free reign to run out Trench Stalker. Okay. Um, I don't think so, Lakshma. I mean, they had my machine over matter in hand that turn. We knew about that one. Yeah, our hand is extremely scrappy. I'll give it that. All right, and I mean, I'm going to cast Trench Stalker. They can subjugate it if they want to. That's going to take their whole turn. I'm still, you know, ahead on board. Oilless Rock. Okay, that changes the math a little bit. We can hit it with Gix's command, though. 
probably just going to go for kill the Coilos Rock, do a big lifelink swing if they go for a... Uh... Although the Machine Over Matter makes it pretty annoying to do that mode of Gix's Command, so maybe that's not what we're going to do. Okay. They can also save the Rock with Machine Over Matter. We can also just hit them, though. There's nothing saying we can't just hit them. Emergency Weld. Interesting. We don't have any way to sack the Stalker. Uh, hmm. Interesting. I mean, I think we are supposed to Gix's Command. The question is just what we do that makes, that matters with Gix's Command. I think that we just put the counters on Scrapwork Mutt. We could also just like wipe the so if we if we if we pick um destroy creatures and opponent sacks a creature, they can just machine over matter the Coilos rock. And then we're left with a scrap trawler and a lockdown trench stalker. It's not so bad, I guess. They get a power stone. We can weld our we mutt need back. To become Aaron Gertler tonight, yeah, I think That's this is goal. just wrath. I think we're just gonna wrath them here. Over trying to do the lifelink thing and then they just bounce our mutt. Yeah, it's not that bad if they have to bounce their own rock. It's a good tempo. Oh, but this was a... Uh, this was... We just missed two damage. Yeah, there's no reason not to attack first. We just missed two damage. Well, surely that won't matter. Yes, we were supposed to attack first. We, we just missed two damage. I'll say it again. Two damage? We missed. How much damage do you miss? Two damage. We got Mutt in the graveyard, we can weld it back, we can unearth it. We can unearth it and disfigure there. Ooh, okay, well now I can do this. Yeah, no, easy mistake to make, but still not a mistake I should be making when I'm playing Magic for $500 this game. All right, having a 2-4 blocker is pretty good. Having a carry and Lucas just not so bad. Curious to see if they trade with Scrap Trawler or just block the mud. I'm assuming they're just going to block the mud, but now we have a 2 4 flyer. Okay. So, Siege Veteran would be pretty awkward. We'll make the rock big, but we can still just figure it, and then we're still ahead tempo wise. Oh, I make plenty of mistakes on my own, Broth Boy. <laughs> But I appreciate your confidence. Also, Quad Pockets, thanks for the follow. Wow, okay. Opponent's getting frisky here. They realize that with me having four cards in hand, they've just got to get me dead. Okay, that's a good top deck. I'm not going to say it's not a good top deck, because it is a very good top deck. Um... All right, well... We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Um, I think we're just taking. We definitely got to take Tactician if they have any way to get something back from the yard. We don't want them pumping all their soldiers. Do I attack with Scrap Trawler here? I don't think I attack with Scrap Trawler. Well, I have Emergency Weld. I actually should attack with Scrap Trawler. I guess I should have done it pre-combat. Yeah, I should have done pre-combat again. I gotta be precise on these things. This could change your decisions. I really think they are gonna block here. I would highly expect them to block, because they going to three when I have three power flying in play and they've seen you know removal spells feels incredibly shaky. Now hush, Inbreaker, don't don't just summon it up for no reason. No need to be no need to be doing that. Okay, Thopter Mechanic is perfectly acceptable, doesn't kill me, doesn't let the rock attack through my guys. Scrap Weld on the Locust. Or what that... Huh? Not really following.
Hmm. Ooh, power stone fracture. Okay. Um, that seems good. But I think we just kill the rock and weld back the stalker now. I should be thinking more than this. Hey, Jason. Now I can get stalker back. We have disfigure in hand. I am pretty into all of this. Yeah, better than Trawler, for sure. And swing for three. I guess it was wiser of them to block Trawler. Wow, congrats, Jason. Nice. I'm playing for 1k in this game. If they can't top deck an answer to my stuff, we do win this. Kind of funny how I'm like much more nervous in this than I am in like job interviews. Even when job interviews, you know, talking about it in hugely more money on the line. Uh, I'm sorry, Oweezy. We uh we almost played ourselves out of a couple of games here. They've been extremely tight every time, and we need to become Aaron Gertler. Decisions have not been the best. Daytime diamonds. Thank you so much for the follow. Okay. All right. I don't think I trade for a token. I think I just hold up the ability to deal them one more damage if they can stop an winter. Hmm. Eh, Flood's not in my control. It's I'm going to get more mad about things I can control. I think we do this block. If they have a ground blocker, it doesn't matter. If they have a flying blocker, they can block the Locust. I'm still just taking them the one. If their flying blocker is bigger than my stuff. Nice umbrella, do take that break. Get your nerves ready. Money, money, money. All right. Good, this is good. It's been too long since somebody paid me money to play this children's card game. All right, so Dreams of Steel and Oil should be coming in. We I think it's become Dreams Aaron over Gertler Forge Chanter. That's the goal. That's the substitution I've been making most often. And I've been pretty happy with Locust. I don't really think I want the Dragon Engine more than I want the Locust. Thanks, Brett, and thanks for the follow, Jimmy. And, uh... Oh, that was your deck. Okay, normally people come in and say good game after they didn't play me, and I'm just, like, confused about it, but yeah. Good games, good luck, your deck looks insane. Hope you can draw your, uh, your Siege better on turn three next time. All right, in we go for, for all the money this time. Literally, for all the money. Yeah, I should just be main decking. It turns out it's just really good. It turns out that I don't think you're supposed to main deck it every time in draft, but our deck has a lot of kind of iffy cards in it, and Steel and Oil, I think, actually is better than an iffy card. Yeah, I mean, I'm down to main deck. I I'm certainly don't know enough about the format to say it's not main deckable. Cards like that tend to be kind of iffy, but the fact that it hits a wider range of things than, you know, uh, Ostracize? I think Ostracize is the one that's one black hit a creature. I didn't even hate the one black discard a creature scry one if you miss card from Kaladesh, and this one's better. One moles, that's a good start. Playing for a thousand bucks, you can mull every time. Left to light. I don't know. I haven't chosen my charities for the the year yet. Good question, though. All right. I think we might discard a mountain here. Don't want to plow yet. Um. Obviously, lands are nice, but we have plenty of lands. Like mud is kind of here, almost explicitly to discard lands. If they attack with revenant, I think I block and locust it. Okay, if they attack with Revenant, I'm definitely going to block and Locust it. All right. 
steal. When it activated my trap card, I mean, it would have been nice to cast Giant Cindermon this turn, but I think I just want to get rid of the Revenant when Thraxa Demons are afoot. Uh, I want to block right. Hmm. 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 I was in the play. I have Gix's command. I actually think I'm no block here. We're hitting, we're trading, trading two damage for two damage when I've got giant cinder maw. Seems very good. Like my hand is very grindy, so it's like unclear, but they have Thraxodemon and they also have Hall of Tags in, which is grindish, I guess. Alright, scrapwork razor, sure. Yeah, we're actually clocking them pretty well here. Let's just uh Bonk him. Hey Carl, we're in the middle of part two. Alright, I am liking star into just Let's see if we can hit that fourth land drop. No, oh, title needs to be updated. Whoops. Sure. Um, and we'll just we'll just weld back the mutt here. I think I just wanna Keep material flowing. We could weld back the star also. Mm. Hmm. A 2 1 does work on this board. Let me get back Mutt. Alright, time to update the stream title while our opponent does their turn over here. board looking very Gix's commandable. Be a little sad if they have Guy's Gift. But we can still handle it. War Plow and Mutt. This also turns on Overwhelming Remorse. But I think we just want to War Plow and Mutt. They milled Bayloth and Corsair. All right, so they're doing true blue, green, black stuff. But also weld back Cinderma. How aggressively do I want to using these welds? Cinderma's, I guess Cinderma's a good size. Hmm. I've got Gixu's command. I think we want to get pretty aggressive. Back Cinderma. And we'll just cast Mutt as a 2-1. And yeah, Cinderbot coming down before they can cast a, a Golem is pretty meaningful too. All right, let's see more of your deck. What's up? Ooh, Fancy Land. Elsewhere Flask. All right, got to think about Corrupt. And yeah, if I can win the game without Gixing them, that is still pretty good. I don't think I want to discard Warplow there. Warplow trades very well with large green creatures. Hmm. All right, I guess Overwhelming Remorse was turned off. Ah, well. Hmm. Okay, that card's pretty good. Opponent has certainly stabilized for now. Uh, down to block Rager. They can just turn this into a card with Thraxodemon anyway. I think I'm down to block. 
Yeah, information doesn't matter that much. This is all correct. Yep, you exile the spider, it doesn't give life. That is a thing I would like to do eventually. Block here, I think. Yeah. It's tough. They've recovered pretty well. Thought we were way ahead, and I'm slightly regretting how aggressive I was with the uh Actually, I think we exile the spider now so they can't thrax a demon it, huh? The more I think about it, the more that does sound correct. We could just scrap work mutt, discard a land. You know, we definitely want to remorse the spider. I mean, yeah, in Breaker they might have a second gift, but if they have a second gift, I don't think our overall remorse is going to do a ton this game. An opponent getting to sack the spider to gain 6 life could easily swing the game completely. Yeah. Yeah, mutt before remorse anyway, but we're not going to mutt this turn. All right, Scrap Trawler. Oh, does Scrap Trawler change my mind? Scrap Trawler is amazing. Okay, I think Scrap Trawler might change my mind about what my plan is here. The Scrap Trawler is amazing. Have I mentioned that Scrap Trawler is amazing? Oh, we can just play it next turn. Right, we don't even have to wait. We can just take it and do it later. All right, have you got the other guy as gift opponent? They've got something. It was not other guy as gift, that I can tell. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I forget the desk is literally just you can do a whole turn and wait. No attacks. Is there any consideration for playing Warplow? 1-1 one, one death touch here. With Gix's command, my deck has a ton of lands in it at this point. A little awkward. Got 11 lands left in there. I'm going to need to get value out of creatures where I can. But it's a great tempo play. Actually, I think I do Warplow, because when I play Scrap Trawler next turn, I can attack pretty freely with Warplow, and then if they block it, I get back desk. This says 2 CMC if you play it as a 2-drop. As a Alright, Warplow So, I mean, every point of chip damage we're getting off of Warplow is incredible here. Oh, that's great. If that's the best thing you have to do this turn, I am super into you going to 5. Maybe even sacking this to Thraxodium opponent? What do you think? You want to tap Thraxodium to do that? Scrap Trawler cannot bring back the Warplow. I mean... It's lethal if they don't do anything, Mez. It is no longer lethal, but that's fine. Cohort's oh, nice. All right, let's um. We just scrappy T here. So we Gix's command. We can put them to one, but we lose Scrap Trawler forever. I'm not sure I want to lose Scrap Trawler forever here. Our opponents. Last turn was pretty unimpressive. Like, imagine they spend their next turn just casting a large creature. If we just cast Gix's Command, we can still make them sack their biggest creature, make Scrap Trawler a 5 4, force them to chump with Thraxodemon. Like, all pretty good. Okay. I that may be exactly what's happening now. Yep, Mistress Foundry is on the board. All right. In dreams, but then we can't Gix's command. We could dreams and then Gix's command. There's a good chance they just have nothing though. Alright, so we see Weld, Caress, those are all good cards to know about. Alright, so if we command, we go counters on Trawler plus forced sack. They don't have anything. We get them. I think I think this is the turn we command. I think this is a good turn for it. In the worst case scenario, they kill Scrap Trawler. That would be very bad if they killed Scrap Trawler. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, Chad. That's the goal. But what are the odds they actually have instant speed removal for Scrap Trawler? I guess we could put counters on a token as well. Maybe that's what I do, actually. Let's just do this.
Um, nothing's wrong with it. The question is just like, when is our best turn going to be for Gix's command? And I feel like there's a chance Dreams of Steel and Oil just doesn't actually do anything. Oh, this gives them Gigamole as a blocker if they just lose that, huh? Nonetheless, I think we just put them to one with Scrapwork Mutt in the graveyard and Scrapwork Cohort in my hand. I guess this play loses hard to Moment of Defiance. But they've got Foundry as well, right? They have Foundry. It's okay, putting him to two still seems good. Hmm, that was actually a really ugly turn. Never mind, that went very poorly. They didn't even have anything besides what they, they literally had on board. Uh, that was definitely Dream's cohort. That was so bad. That was so bad. I mean, we might still get them. They are two. But I've used all my welds and my things, so I can't get back Locust very easily. There are two. I've got a bunch of unearthed stuff. But that would have been a great turn to use Dream's. That was so. That was an awful play. It very easily just lose me the game. It's been a long stream. My brain is starting to go, okay, that doesn't kill me. And they can't attack because I've got Scrapwork Mutt, so they're just going to kind of sit there. All right, well. All right, Blazing Soda, you're banned. All right. We I think need we just to dream some cohort here. Redler tonight, Chad. That's the goal. All right, we would have hit the Power Barrier last turn, presumably. Power Stone Fracture, right? Well, at least Power Stone we Fracture need isn't to doing become anything. Aaron Gertler tonight, Chad. That's Getting rid the of goal. Obstinate Bailoff. That's the card I really don't want you bringing back. I think we want the land up because we've got double red in the graveyard here. Yeah, it's pretty. As Pretty is done streaming permanently, that would be very sad. They can sack Foundry to Power Stone Fracture. Playing Vermin, okay. Who's getting milled? Bones also, how many cards are in their deck at the moment? They've got 11 cards in library? But surely milling the Unearth player is like a horrible idea. I'm trying to think what my win conditions are at this point. We've used, we've got Trench Stalker in the deck still. We need to become They're milling me and they hit Clay Revenant. That's the goal. Sure. That works. They can sack Vermin and take out two creatures with Power Stone Fracture. Oh, they can also use the land. Ooh, Moment of Defiance. They got four blockers though. So Moment of Defiance isn't quite lethal, but we could get to a point where it is lethal. Damn, really screwed this, really screwed this one up. All right. Is this desk time? I'm trying to think what we're looking for off of desk versus if I just put Clay Revenant into play, which puts us back into a position where we can potentially lethal them. I think I just put Revenant into play. Uh, We do have at least one Fracture in the deck. Yeah, Cohort Dying is fine. We get some stuff back. Nothing great, though. Like, we don't want stuff dying for free. Oh, did we just mill it? We just milled our Power Stone Fracture. Is that both of them? No, we still have one more. We still have one more. Revenant comes down. We're adding one thing to the board. Now that any unblocked thing is, uh, is lethal. Opponent's down to 11 cards. I don't have Excavation Explosion or any other form of, like, direct damage. Our deck contains 10 lands still. Nope, Posey Master, they've got a land that turns into a creature, so we weren't going to have an unblocked creature. If they don't have another creature this turn, then we can win. We missed this before, and it kind of threw off our math very badly, so I'm paying extra attention to it now. They can sack Power Stone for Fracture. They've got a removal spell. But that's fine. It means they're not sacking Vermin for Fracture. Hmm. 
Not on the delay here. Not worth it. Okay, so it looks like they're trying to sack Vermin here. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Seems appropriate. All right, Scrap Trawler's dead. I get back a thing. Let's go Scrap Work Mutt. I think I like the... Yeah, I definitely want the body over just the card. French Stalker, that's the card. We'll play that, I guess. Definitely drawing a very dense collection of spells here. Opponent also has no idea what's in our deck. They don't know that we're... I guess just in case there's an idea, I won't say which cards they don't know we don't have, but there's a lot of stuff they have to play around, suffice to say. Um, they wanted to sack the rat because they can kill another one of my creatures by sacking the rat. I'm not sure it was right. I mean, the power stones are free and the rat's a blocker. But at the time, it was basically neutral. Okay. Um, is this just attack stalker? This is just attack with stalker here. If they trade pal bearer, that's fine. We can also try in moment of defiance to kill the pal bearer, although they're in a lot of trouble if they have any kind of trick. Gaia's Gift? Like Giant Growth or something? I'd be ecstatic if that were the plan. I mean, Gaia's Gift doesn't work, so I don't know what they're planning. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Um, they go to 5 power, I go to 6 toughness. Deal. It's not attack all there. They have a, they have a creature land. This is a creature. They have 3 blockers for my 3 attackers. All right, that was pretty picante. Um, I am going to play the land here. This next turn could get pretty mana intensive. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. All right, well, we're at four attackers to their two blockers. Three blockers. Four blockers. Fauna Shaman. Well, they're down to seven cards in library. I think this might be a mill win. Okay, most of the cards in my deck are lands, but some are not, and we're just going to try and find one of those now. We're still ahead on cards, we're not going to mill before they do. This figure, okay. Well, that kills Fauna Shaman, but it's not quite lethal. Of all the things to kill, I guess it's Fauna Shaman. For anyone just tuning in, that's a creature, we do not have lethal. I think we're basically on the mill plan here. We've also got we've also got our one three flyer still. Um, there is no time thing. It's a it's a timeout match, right? Oh wait, no, there are clocks. Okay, there are clocks. Never mind, there are clocks. Making these power stones. Wonder what they can do with the power stones. Flyers are very good. Ashnod doesn't. Okay, Ashnod can make a lot of zombies, but I'm at 20. I don't think Ashnod's making enough zombies. We can also force an Ashnod jump block. I think we just hit them with an Ointer. If I do this, they activate Foundry. These makes tapped zombies. We force Ashnod to block. I don't think that's it. I think we just hold back as many creatures as possible to block their stuff. 
Okay, let's keep an eye on on the clock here, but I think we'll be fine. This has to be longer than the average game we're going to play against them, and we can play a little bit of attention to expedients. Um. Well, we, oh wait, they're at, wait. Did they just get it? Where, where did they gain all that life from? Wait. Oh, moment of defiance. Never mind, chat. I was clocking their life total at being. Oh, we might be in trouble. I forgot about moment of defiance. We we might be in a lot of trouble. I'm trying to think what's left in my deck. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. Do I have star? I don't have star. Um, I can't actually afford to do that. I think we do... Yeah, I think it's Mutt Cohort block here. And see if we can hold them off with Trench Stalker Life Gain or something. Draxa Demons may only draw left. We still have a Fracture, but Fracture doesn't really help at this point. Ugh. Alright, well, we know about that card now. Okay, we got Disfigure... Visions of Phyrexia. Of course we have Visions of Phyrexia in the deck still. Why would we not have Visions of Phyrexia in the deck? <laughs> All right, this looks tough. Um, we are going to lose to Ashnod, it looks like, and that's my fault. We we should have won with... We, should, we had a way to win this game, I'm sure, if we hadn't had that disastrous turn. A lot of phone stuff going on, too. I'm very distracted. Well, you've seen their whole deck. That's something. We know about Overwhelming Remorse. We know about Fighter, I guess. We know about Moment of Defiance. We know about Gaia's Gift. Um, we hit the Disfigure. Yeah, okay, right. Um, I don't know. I mean, we disfigured the Shaman off of a desk. If we let them untap with Shaman, they can use Shaman. And for all we know, they would just have that Ashnod. I mean, they would have Ashnod turns early, they wouldn't even make so many zombies, but... Like, if the last card of their deck is Obstinate Bayloth, that could definitely make the difference. Good news is they've used more time than I have, so we're going to let them tick down a little bit more. We dead? Oh, we're dead. Uh, yes, this is very lethal. Okay. All right. Well, I probably punted that game. I'd have to look back and see. It was. It's unclear what they had in hand at what time. But what do we want against their deck? Flying seems very good. They did not seem to have many flying answers. But as always, the question is, is this thing better than anything else? Yeah, if we had just steal an oil, then they wouldn't have had the 5-5 five -five and we would have won the game. That's the thing. We could have... It's not about the command, although the command was bad. It's more about what we could have done that turn instead. Yeah, no. Many ways to win that. Mishra's Juggernaut looks pretty good here. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. I could see Mishra's Juggernaut, but over what is the question? Aaron Locust actually looks amazing. Gurgle and looks amazing. Flyers look amazing. Is there anything I want to cut for the dragon? Maybe Scrapwork Cohort? Is that insane? Like, this is a good card, but it's not it's not great. Good with Scrap Trawler. But the Dragon Engine, I think, can just like win games, especially if they go super long. Not that they're always gonna go super long, but Yeah, the two missed damage with Mutt was a previous game. But we we you know. However you look at it, we we screwed that up. Okay, I'm down to try the Dragon Engine. Let's finally, let's finally get it in there. Oh, Nickel, thanks for the follow. Right, their deck looks pretty good, but we can certainly beat it. It'll help a lot if we can just draw our enchantment. All I want to do is not to... I, I think... Uh, I think that card has been, like, one of the last cards in our deck many, 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 many times now. A little frustrating. We don't have a mass lodge to give notes. It's now or never. Yeah. Yep. 
But yeah, there were a lot. There was a lot of weird stuff in that game. Like we we, we played our emergency welds very aggressively, and then of course ended up in a situation where emergency weld could have won the game, but we didn't have it. Well, I mean, Dusk is just an awesome card. All right, we're going to be very careful at how we deploy this Mutt. I think I'm down to attack with Cindermon and weld it back. After all that stuff I was just saying about weld, I would like to do something this turn. And milling their deck is great information for me. It gives them access to stuff off emergency weld and whatnot, but it's great information for me. Land, 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 Gix's Caress. Seen that one. Okay. Yeah, I think I should just cast the Mutt for, for damage. Damage matters. Any ways to get stuff back later. I mean, they're on the draw. We don't know. They missed a land drop yet. Oop. Rager, sure. Probably a Mutt equivalent. Okay, lands pretty nice, means I can desk very safely with access to any card I might want to cast. I will just be casting Cindermont this turn and desking end of their turn, I think. Hopefully this turn's just a big blocker that we can remorse so it can't stop Cinderma. That'd be nice. Hmm, sure. Still forces a double block. Okay, they milled the Power Stone Fracture. Fauna Shaman, okay. How bad is Fauna Shaman? Do I care about Fauna Shaman being in play? I'm not sure. Let's desk. Okay, Trench Stalker. Looks like a pretty good play this turn. I'm going to Cindermaw. I am down to trade Cindermaw and Token for two of their creatures here. It's Ashnod and Spider, but it takes a lot of time to do that stuff. I don't know, I think I'd rather save Remorse for an actual creature than for whatever Fauna Shaman's doing. Fauna Shaman also like, forces them to discard spells, which is not meaningless. I don't know. Well, there's Ashnod. Bayloth, sure. None of this stuff stops Trench Stalker. Although now the question is, ooh, well that looks very good, okay. Uh, decision made, we're just gonna wipe their board. Right, not be too hasty, but wipe their board looks incredible right now. <laughs> but I think I'm down to just wipe their board. Plague Wind, goodbye. No need for tough decisions. It's a very silly card. Cool. All right, so we'll just mutt here. Get our lifelink on. Mountain, out of my hand. Would love to find. Okay, just figures fine. Really, really, really want to find a. Uh, My enchantment one of these days. It's a really good enchantment. It's really powerful to have in play. Oh, look at that, Palver. Cute. All right, do I want to weld anything back from my graveyard? Giant Cinder Ball? Seems good. Do this first, because if we weld the Cinder Ball, we can't do that anymore. That would be very sad. Oops. Definitely a world where you consider attacking and then um, disfiguring, but I would rather get the 4 damage in, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the fling, the fling is 4 mana. It would have been very funny to have it. I think this... Is it a sorcery or a... I can't even remember. Okay, flask. And... All right, you alive. 
There's a boulder branch golem. I don't think we'd seen the boulder branch yet. Maybe we had, and they had milled it before. I don't even know. Let me get out of my game. They have Gaia's Gift? They did have Gaia's Gift, okay. I think we attack. Happy bringing them to one. We didn't see a corrupt last game. It seemed like they are going to be going for one this game either. Okay, I think we just try and power stone fraction them out of the game here. Take out this Bayloth guy. Uh, yeah, probably noob noob, probably. Hmm. Man, do I just hit them? Maybe it's just better to save the Fracture, honestly. Yeah, on the other hand, hitting them works badly in a moment of defiance. We just go for this. All right. All right, well, punted the first game, won the second one. Let's see what we can do in the third. On the draw, does that change anything? I still think I like being on 17 lands. Anything I saw in that game that changed my mind about anything? And Juggernaut does look pretty good. Juggernaut over Dragon Engine. The Flyer still looks good too, though. Juggernaut better than Clay Revenant, you say? I could see that. I could see it. I don't know. Revenant's been Revenant's been pretty good. Visions is underperformed. <laughs> Still not better than Revenant. If this ends up in my yard. Yeah, I could see it. I think I'm I think I'm actually down to make that switch with what I've seen. Alright. It is it is impressive. I think this is the game to find it, right? This is the game to just jam it. Or not. Or not. We'll see. All right, gnawing vermin turn one. That helps me make decisions about what I'm doing with goring warplow. Mill two swamps, sure. Deal. Won't be doing Fauna Shaman nonsense, Jimmy. Yeah, the one game we had visions, our opponent just gave up instantly. Which is certainly something. All right, I think we're just going to sack Desk on my turn here. Yeah, it's an awkward, an awkward start for sure. Yeah, I'm just going to hit the enchantment here, aren't I? Oh, I'm afraid. I'm worried and afraid. Afraid and worried. I just want a mutt. Do we hit dreams or disfigure? Clearly dreams here. Care about either of their creatures. Hopefully this uh, keeps their clock slow. Oh, God. You're kidding me. <laughs> I mean, at least they have no clock. And the desk, the desk is like a two for one. The one for one at least prepared me for stuff they had. Any thought to welding the desk? I don't think so. I think, I mean, I don't know they have nothing in their hand, right? I think I'm supposed to I'm supposed to hit them with my card. Alright, Thraxodemon it is. We chill. This is going to be a grindy game. We're clearly not going to be aggroing them out here. Am I down to trade Thraxodemon for Gnawing Vermin? I don't think so. 
Ranch Golem, sure. I sure did, Brizzle, and I remember you very well. Welcome to the stream. We need to become right. Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Now I think we weld the desk. And I'm going to play Death Touch Warplow just so I can not take infinite damage off the Boulder Branch Golem. And maybe we can maybe we can sneak these removal spells out of their hand before we trench stalker. We definitely want to save Power Stone Fracture for something like Ashnod or Fauna Shaman or something. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Got that out of their hand. Oh right, my Warplow. God damn it. I don't know that we had a choice. We could have played the Warplow as a 5-4, that would have been a choice. Uh gross. Alright, well we might need to uh we can fracture the golem, I guess. Interesting. Okay. Sure. Star. Okay, we can fracture the golem with star. That seems better than. Actually, maybe we desk. If I desk and hit command, I can get back two creatures. If I desk and hit dreams of steel oil, there's still time to use it. I think we desk first. It's like so many good cards I could hit here. Or not. Uh, third mountain. Didn't play a land first. All right. Uh, or use dreams. I don't remember what I said, um, but I meant the enchantment or Gex's command were the cards I was looking for there. Maybe right back desk later. For now, I think we just fracture the golem. I think it's a little bit too much of a clock. Got to fracture the golem. All right, that's a that's a start. That's definitely a card that helps. And I'm not going to block, so I might as well attack. It's a good card, and well, we have we saw Gix's caress last game. It was milled. All right, Fauna Shaman's pretty scary. I could command to get rid of it and bring back two creatures. Is that what I want to do here? Yeah, the fact that I can also play Thraxodemon at the same time, I think I'm into it. I think we just need to get rid of Fauna Shaman. I just have so much life, it's tough, but it's just like a massive play at the same time. Attack first into Fauna Shaman? Wait, why am I attacking into Fauna Shaman? Did I miss something? I mean... I lose a token. We're not we're not wrathing, guys. We're, we're getting cards back. I, I get to keep a token this way. Look. I don't I don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Huh? Come on, chat, head in the game. Get you, get you, get you, get you, get you, head in the game. Alright, well, that's one of our bombs. And the enchantment The enchantment would still be good. This would be a great time to draw it still. That really gonna need you to focus up. Alright, do they have Guy's Gift? Is the Guy's Gift play or like a mental damage play? I mean... No blocks, I think? Alright, felt like a Guy's Gift play to me. I think you can remorse the Thraxa Demon. You know I have a 5-4 in hand. Ah, Power Stone Fracture, okay. They're burning through all the removal. You love to see it. Um, okay, I like Warplow for sure here. We still haven't hit, we still haven't hit a Scrappy. Uh, Corrupt can kill it. We haven't, we saw, we've, uh, Sam, we saw basically their entire deck in game one, and we haven't seen Corrupt yet, so I'm not too scared of Corrupt. I guess I'm scared of Naru Palbearer now. 
Yeesh. All right. We're not dead to that. We're not dead to that. Doesn't literally kill us. Yeah, we had the choice to play Locust that turn or... All right, we're not dead. But we're very close to dead, unfortunately, because they have this frickin' foundry. Oh my god, the pal bearer. They just had it. They just had the guard. Uh Yeah, we're we're in trouble. Oh wait, we don't have to block the we don't have to block the revenant. We're okay. We're okay. We're technically okay. They used like all their removal. The problem is they haven't used Gaia's gift, and it really feels like they have Gaia's gift. And we are dead to Gaia's gift. But maybe they were thinking of something else? They might have been trying to I don't know what they were trying to do. Uh, it feels like we're dead to Gaia's gift. This was a, a tough game. Yep, Gift is lethal. Man, we just could not get the Trench Stalker down. We gotta, we gotta pretend they don't have Gift. But I think they do. There it is. Yep. Damn! Alright. Well, that was tough. Obviously we had some decisions we could have made differently. We could have played the Locust that one turn. We'd have to play out a land and be empty-handed at that point, at which point we can't use Trench Stalker for lifelink anymore. The play that the only play we lose to there is exactly land pallbearer. So I think we were justified we in our play. Aaron but it was tough. Thanks for the follows, follows, everybody. That helps. It was we need to become Aaron still mad at myself for punting that first game. This deck was this deck was very good. I misplayed it. We need to become but it's a good Aaron day. It's definitely a good day. That's the goal. <sighs> And this money will be donated somewhere. Well, someone will enjoy it much more than even I would. Uh, Manthos, I don't think we took free one damage per turn. That's the goal. There were there were no attacks our opponent made that we could have blocked safely. We need to become. So I'm going to ask you. That's ask you to be more specific if you're going to criticize an aspect of play there. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Wow, are you all? Everyone was just waiting to follow until they saw the we end there. Thanks, everybody. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Hmm. Huh. Well, we I mean, need as long as we have everybody here, we can just pick up this deck we drafted That's before the, the thing. And we have a huge raid, too. All right, we should we should re change the stream title. Um, we need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. So many follows. Can't... We need to uh, I'll try to name everybody. Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Ah. Yeah, no. Rough. I'll have to watch those games back we later, but I don't think I took Aaron any free damage of that game. I think That's the Locust the play was defensible. Um, with our opponent at 26 and me not trying to clock we them, really. To become Aaron Mostly just need to draw my enchantment at some point in a game. Uh, Wicked Burn, Drew.0, Arcus. No, Alex Castiel, thank you for the raid. Wicked Burn, Drew.0, Workers, Panicos, Black Company, Deathek, Lit Death Chesters. Oh, man. Falstaff, Arizal, Drunken Dane, Double Exposure, T Caster, thank you all, and we Blaze as well. Alright, anyway, it's where we left goal. off, we had this cool green white tokens deck, Double Prospector. With Dissident, we got Fauna Shaman. We need to become Aaron Gertler. We got Quad Sprite, yeah, we're gonna run goal. this one for a couple ladder games. It's been a very long stream, so probably won't be here for long, but we'll we'll go in. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Goon Balloon, Ivans, thank you so much. Oh, I don't think we're cutting Disfigure there. Disfigure's great. Um, but, yeah. Play Revenant was a consideration. Anyway, different deck, different scenario. Let's blah, get the head into the new head into the new game. Phantom Sealed for Qualifier Weekend. Well, I guess I'll be ready. Wait, am I qualified? I'm definitely not qualified, actually, so never mind. I, uh, I take it back. Uh, this is Shaman over Dissident, I think. Mm. It's tough. Shaman attacks for more. Dissident, if I draw a land, Dissident into Combat Thresher is amazing. But I'd also rather Fauna Shaman get killed than Dissident. Oh, I qualified today. Is that how that works? Cool. I'm down. Alright, um, I think we just fight the Strongbull before it can eat the uh, star here. This look, uh, reducing my opponent's pressure seems better than trying to add another creature to the board that can't block their stronghold. Sure. 
down to attack because I just drew a good blocker for the Acrobat. Ooh. All right, well, I guess I'll... Wait, I, so I qualified for the upcoming one. Does that mean, chat, that I don't have to be top X Mythic this month? Is that what that means? Deal. That is absolutely fine. Love getting my third mana. Sweet. All right. Well, see ya, suckers. I'm out of here. Nah, we'll, we'll play this one out a little bit. Okay, now with Great Desert Prospector, I we definitely want to sit down. Aaron tonight, chat. That's the goal. Hey, Redcap, thanks for the follow. Pump Shaman, got to keep Dissident in play at all costs, so really incentivized to focus their attention on Shaman. Yeah, the main thing that stands out is how tough that draft was. Really feels different playing against people who are picking all the good cards. Uh, Mask is very good, Brizzle. Yeah. Um, well, actually, come to think of it, I have had less good results with it than a lot of people have. I think even as just like endless one where you pay two mana up front, it's fine. The flashback thing I've done very seldom, but often that's just because I win the game before flashing it back. I would call it decent. Happy to have it. You do want to be able to flash it back, I think. It can be pretty good with like late game emergency weld or scrap trawler. There are a lot of little combos with it. In case for all the artifacts in the set. Perfect! Our plan worked. Chat, we focused their attention on the Fauna Shaman. And now for the Punish. Alright, really need you to hit a land for me, buddy. Can you hit a land for me, buddy, please? That's all I ask. God damn, that was terrible. What the hell? My, my creatures! All my creatures! I needed those. Oh my god. Alright, did I crack Mask? I think I cracked Mask. It helps with Great Desert Prospector in future turns, and we just need to, like... Ugh. Alright, well, it was me. It shows me what I... I mean, it's good that we milled those, because if we'd spent three more turns not drawing lands, it was going to suck anyway. But, it's still sad. I guess despite not needing to hit Mythic, I still do want to practice drafting for these qualifiers. Day two of the qualifier is going to be draft, right? Or is it also sealed? Anybody know? Our music is off. I've been off for hours. All sealed. Yeehaw. Chat, can you all actually hear the music? I realize my desktop audio does not look like it's lighting up at all. Oh, there it is. Never mind. All good. No 
attacks, huh? Okay. Lands! Please. Alright, no. I think I want to be attacking with Prowler yet. Let's just drop Chaplin in and great. Finally hit a land and two more spells, but it's fine. Uh, Barizzle, nope. I don't own Magic Online cards anymore. I sold my whole collection and got out of Magic for a while and only kind of uh, got back in when Arena came out. Wow. Carol, okay. Right, we have a Siege Veteran too. You know, I completely forgot about Siege Veteran. <laughs> oh, this deck's really good. Alright. Um, could die to removal? We do have Giant Growth to save it from Explosion. Answer this or play like Sprite this turn? I think we just Siege Veteran, make them have stuff. Probably pump the Prowler first here, because that lets me force a 2 for 1. No longer holding up Giant Growth to save Siege Veteran. If they have Disfigure or... If they had Disfigure, they would have cast it. If they have Explosion, that's fine. We are going to beat them on tempo if they try to do that, I think. Do they even have lands? What in the world do they have? Hmm. Ah. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. Hey, El Scorcho, thanks for the follow. All right. Let's say, might just close at 3 p.m. today, which gives us time for one more game. Explorer Anthology, oh my god, there's... <laughs> I guess I'm off of Teamfight Tactics until the new set, so maybe I actually have time to look at things like Explorer, but... Probably just going to focus on Limited if that's how I can qualify. Ugh. Ooh, high mythic. Let's see. An island? What are you doing with an island in your deck? You have done good authority. You can't be playing islands. Oh, never mind. There's planes. I think they repair printers in their day job. Hmm. I think I'm okay making this trade. Now that I know they're blue-white, I think I just dissident here. Or that in a cohort.
Blue and white are really bad at stopping Dissident. Let me try to make a counter cohort, but then we can just do it again. Uh oh. Mm hmm. It's a pump here. I think I just go all in on Sprite so they can't hit it with the, the three damage spell. Lots of other stuff they could do for it to it, but whatever. They bounce it, that's fine. That's also fine. Mm hmm Disenchant not having many targets here. Spicy attack. I don't really want them having a Thopter up. I like the idea of Fauna Shaman to set up Great Desert Prospector. I wonder if I'm supposed to attack with Cohort there. Yeah, Brizzle, I, I wasn't sure. I didn't have track, didn't, hadn't been keeping track of whether they had a land drop that turn or not. Beats me. Deal. Okay. It seems like they might be looking to trade for Sprite. Sure. Interesting, they're just taking this? Seems incredibly hazardous. No? Be interested in letting that happen. If I could just double sprite. Or I could chaplain and try to use Fauna Shaman, but I think now that they've done this, I'm just double sprite. A lot of creatures and I have a giant growth. I don't know why they're holding this land. Probably a reason, but I do not have the time to think about it. Well, I have the time. I don't have the inclination to think about it. I guess some kind of looting effect they were thinking of using at some point? Okay, so we should win with Giant Growth here. Yeah, there's no one white spell. The removal one's an, is sorcery. We need to become Aaron Gertler tonight, chat. That's the goal. sure it's a sorcery. Let's just be safe. We can start with Combat Thresher. Hey, five stream. Thanks for the follow. -up.
All right, and now it is three o'clock, and I think that is it for me today. I am starting to flag. I've been now streaming for seven and a half hours, which is a long time for me. And as you can tell, I'm getting kind of quiet and thoughtful and not really exuberant anymore. Good games, everybody. Let's see if anyone is still streaming their thing. I imagine that most of the drafts are over by now, but let's see who we can find. Anybody to raid? Boxy's still playing? Playing VOD Limited. Is anybody playing the... Is anyone playing the, the tournament still? Uh, now we can read the Nerdy Steve. Nerdy Steve's a friend. Alright, see you everybody.